Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Wilton Mill, day two of the NKC, the National Karting Cup All Plate Meeting. And this is perhaps one of the most, if not the most important day of perhaps the season. Apart from Championship Finals, of course, but it's all about the All Plate this weekend. And we've got a full day of kart racing ahead of us. Uh, at the moment, we're just concluding our morning warm up practice sessions. Out is the KZs. The gearbox class on track at the moment, but uh, coming up very, very quickly after the warm-up sessions are completed, we're going to be getting straight into a set of seven heats. All of our classes represented, some of them twice. And after that is a bit of a new feature. We saw a little bit of this yesterday. We'll go into our time attack sessions. We'll explain all about that. Uh, here we are in the middle of the United Kingdom. Beautiful sunny day already. Here we are at, what is it? It's 9.42 a.m. here. And already the temperatures are in the low 20s. It's going to get even warmer by lunchtime and continue to tea time. No rain is forecast. However, yeah. we did say that yesterday. <laughs> My name is Joe Bradley. Alongside me is Nick Damon. Nick. Hello, Joe. Day two. Day two. All plate. Beautiful, and sunny. What, what, sunny. What's it all about? It's all about having a good time, driving well and enjoying the day. Oh, no, hang on. It's all no, about no. winning. It's all, all about, about winning. Win. Nothing else all is important. All about the win. And why is it all about the win? Because nothing else counts. Absolutely not. If you it's don't win, you're nobody. You're nothing. If you are unfamiliar with the term all plate, it's quite a thing in karting. Pretty much every... The rest of this season, two more rounds of the NKC Championship, and then on into next year uh, until we reconvene for our 2024. <laughs> 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 Just think about the intensity and drama as we get through today towards those all important finals. And I'm not sure I know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's had some great racing so far. Um, Pretty much immediately on entering the park permit. Yeah, there, got it there. Take it. 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 Take and we had some, some drivers who were actually campaigning those that equipment back in the 1990s and early 2000s. Um, but it was great to see, you know, a lot of pleasure in just prepping the carts and getting it to run. And we saw quite a, a, a phenomenon that we are str a stranger to in modern karting, which is attrition and reliability. Yeah, you can get some of the carts again. It doesn't work much because they dipped up, they figured out the problem, they'd stopped, they'd slowed, they bogged. Yeah. Um, not because they've fallen off normally, just because it mechanically there'd be an issue. But you are dealing with, you know, 25-year-old chassis. Uh, the barrel, well, the basic um, elements of the engine are 20 years old. Obviously, you've got a new barrel, a new piston, but you know, they are still from those designs. And they are running at ridiculously high numbers of revs. And unfortunately, you know, even with the modern oils, which are even better than Castrol R, I don't smell as good, but even better than Castrol R, they, you, know, you can only push them so far. And, and racing drivers like to push them too far. So check that out, the 100 Super uh, Heats and Final that took place yesterday. Today, though, as you say, Nick, all about the heats 
and the time attacks. And then after lunch, we go straight into our finals, starting with the B finals, of course. Uh, we're going to kick things off with the fourth heat for the Rotax 177s. That's the senior Rotax class. 177s denoting how many kilograms is the minimum weight that you can carry. This is the heavier Rotax class. The um, manly class, there for was, manly men. There was talk of an outright lap record in this class yesterday. I'm waiting for that to be confirmed. But the factors are that the 177 class in NKC has effectively invo- evolved into what is a British championship. Because yeah. in the U- MSUK British championships, the 177 class has kind of disappeared. It's dissipated and it's all gravitated towards um, the NKC. So when we look out there and you see the likes of Louis Large and Phil Howarth, who were, you know, Louis Large, British champion in 2018 in the class, and he's out back out of retirement in very Frank Sinatra style. Mm. Um, Is he doing it his way? He's doing it very much his way, yes, mm. yes. He's telling people how to do it, the people who he, he's now running in LRG Motorsport. But, yeah, uh, yeah, when you ask him where he lives, he goes, North of York, North of York. <laughs> <laughs> north of York. <laughs> Shall we sing that? Uh, no, no, maybe not. But, no. you know. No, it's far too early, Nick. I have to get some of this stuff in because obviously I'm being replaced uh, for the time attacks by Gaz Bury. Who, yes, you are. Who, uh, just so you know, please be gentle on Gaz. He's got a bit of a sore head. His yeah. wife's birthday party yesterday. Yes, wife's birthday party. Bad planning on his part. Yeah, yeah. Planning a wife's birthday party at an NKC weekend of racing. Mm, um, so that's what he gets. Thick heads. Mm. And he'll have a thick tongue as yes. well for the time attacks. What's the time attacks then? Well, basically, it is, I suppose, what you would call the old-fashioned way of doing karting. It's just time qualifying. But it's rather not than qualifying. Getting a, but, not, ah, but rather than getting a position on the grid by qualifying for anything, you just take the fastest time. You don't plonk them anywhere. You just give them points. And what do points make? Uh, grid positions. No. Well, yes, and wins. <laughs> yes, grid positions. No, the answer to all the questions is win. It's all about the win. Uh, yes. It is all about the win. Um, I, it's not a qualifying session. It's a time session where points are awarded to the fastest driver down to the slowest. Now, today's time attack uh, session, yesterday was the first time the NKC have tried that, I think, certainly uh, with our involvement. Um, and I think that's, it's great. It's quite exciting. It gets, gives us a chance to cover drivers that we, we might not see because we, we have to focus on the, uh, the front end of the, of the grids in our races. Um, and it, it became quite an exciting thing. The, the, the timing screens were just a sort of a living organism, really. They were just moving around uh, right up until the chequered flag. Um, points awarded towards the grid positions, forming the grid for the finals. The time attack sessions coming up after these seven heats. There are going to be double points awarded, so it's equal. It's even more important yeah. to be towards and, the and front the of that time. It, when you've got two heats, so Rotax group one and Rotax group two, it's the, the scores in both heats are actually the fastest in the Rotax group one is going to get the hundred points. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's two as well. That's right. Amalgamate the groups. Yeah. That's right. Right. So out onto the track are our Rotax 177s. This is the fourth heat for them. Each driver getting three heats to qualify, uh, uh, gain points again for the grid position for the finals. I would have thought you got rid of that frog overnight. I mean, honestly, no, mate, it's uh, still there. It's still all this, there. It's all this dry Joe will go moment, momentarily, uh, mom, 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 <laughs> momentarily. I may have again. a frog in my throat. <laughs> Joe will go momentarily quiet every now and again because he's got a frog in his throat. <laughs> so I don't want to cough into my mic. Don't, don't cough. No, I, I should get. Those, oh, you get cough buttons, can't you? Yes, but well, can you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can. We yeah, but it, I, have you seen the amount of wiring on this desk already? I know, mate. We don't need that. Um, there on the screen is your grid form up because they're already at the boot. And if the stragglers can catch up to the rear end, you can get this way straight from the way Jack gives you. It is on the boot. It's got to be One seven seven road tax into turn one, oblivion into turn two. That's Crooks, and then on and up that hill towards Christmas. Ooh. And already Jamie Zaira absolutely on the limit of braking, but not quite enough to get round the outside of our leader, who is Alex Rowley, who hangs on to it all the way through Ashby. Now onto the infield sections, two left handers here. That's Parker. Then this one's called Chapman, and down the inside. It's a late apex for Rowley, and that left the door wide open for Jimmy Zyra, and he took it, didn't he? Who's just coming through in the second? It's 96 of Alfie Williams. Williams, yeah. Right, right, right. Carry on. 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 Carry
carrying the number two because he's the reigning vice champion in the NKC in this class and he's out of retirement he hasn't raced in the championship he's been running his race team for customer drivers so finding himself very very busy but Louis now in fourth in Louis struggling to get by Scott Smith and Arthur Williams. Scott Arthur struggling to get by them. Jamie Zyra is off. He's off and running. Already pulling a gap of almost seven tenths. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a clean, clear start. Jamie's been the, uh, the class of the field for the last three weeks, actually. He's really quick and clear. Uh, the standard round back. Um, Large and Scott Smith. Okay, Louis now mostly a team owner rather than a team runner. He's coming up the run towards Christmas. He's going to make this one quite easy. I think it'll be, it'll be a too much of a, a battle. A little bit of a, well, I don't really want to let you pass, but uh, in the end, Williams seeds Clean. to the rainy, you say, well, rainy, rainy, rain, but man, he almost won the championship. had been for a broken chain at fullback. The person, of course, who won the championship is in the event, but not in this class. And that no. is... Uh, Phil Howarth, who uh, went on a diet and has moved into the standard senior Rotax 162, which is the program. He has lost 15 kilograms. Um, he's lost some kilograms and got a lead off his car. Early morning, early Sunday morning here, and people just waking up and finding their Sunday times across their morning coffee, tuning in on this live stream bringing you the NKC all play it all live from Wilton Mill and the first three now beginning to spread out a little bit Alfie Williams has now got Callum Porter now Callum Porter is another one of those Dan Holland mechanics who have basically taken over the Dan Holland workshops here this Wilton Mill the home of Dan Holland Racing who are current UKC senior Rotax champions and other championship winners uh, Kai Hunter taking the UKC championship in fine style with a round of go and then went off and holidayed in Sardinia instead. Mm. And I'd like to say thank you to Hobenstein on the feed. He pointed out we had uh, left the volume wrong on the uh, on camera one. I had the volume for the interviews, not the volume for the ambience. So they were getting like full volume of the carts going past. Oh really? Yeah. Well, hey, music couldn't hear, us. That, couldn't hear us. No, they couldn't hear us. Oh, I see. Yeah, they couldn't that's, hear you. That's and it's all about you. It's all about the music of the carts, <laughs> isn't it? Really, the I mean, music you know. of the carts. Yeah, there he goes again. Yeah, it's an early morning sing song. Well, the musical references. So I hope that's all right now, Hobbins. I've turned it back down to its, its previous level. People say they want more ambient. You're deafer than they get upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like a little bit of ambience, don't we? We need mm. to know that we're actually at a cart track mm. and, and hearing everything. That's the number twenty of Callum Porter. There, we were talking about Callum. Callum and Jimmy Zyra, who's leading this. Callum currently fourth. Like I was saying, uh, running out of the. Dan Holland workshops or it seems Dan Holland's mechanics are all former racers and when they are mentoring I mean Jimmy Zyra is the mechanic on Timo Jungling's Dan Holland cart in the British Champs and when Jimmy Zyra is telling young Timo how to go on he's proving today that he knows what he's talking about he just he doesn't just know what to do he actually can do it and he's been quite formidable in the fourth round of the NKC, the Junction 6 NKC Championship uh, last month here at Wilton Mill and now he continues to be quite a challenge to get on terms with and here he is getting on terms with leading this race but not that far behind and closing yeah. the gap if anything Nick is Scott Smith and Louis Large. Yeah Louis Large coming back which is the interesting thing because Jamie Zara just leapt off into the lead and looked like he was going for a Sunday drive not a, a cart O plate at Wilton Mill and, but after that initial launch, effectively, once Smith and Large also got into free air, they were able to catch up. And I think it's kind of a case it's, it's easy to fall into lead. You get a little bit of bonus, of course, from the slipstream, which is more important, I think, in these larger, larger, heavier carts. You know, they're punching a bigger hole through the air. They're a little bit less accelerative because they're carrying the weight. So they, your aero is going to help you. The slipstream is going to help you more. Tire pressure as well. It's all about the tire pressure. When, when you pressure the tires for the tires to come on, so you'll, you'll see people not being as quick in those three, maybe first two or three, four laps, but then the tyres come on, and this is certainly what we're seeing here with Scott Smith now, Louis Large glued to his bumper, and likewise Scott Smith chasing down Zyra. Zyra knows he's there, Louis Large down the inside. Can he make that happen? Yes, he does at Christmas. Large through in a second. Jimmy Zyra's got a challenge now. The former British champion in this series 
in this class I should say the 177 Rotax class the 2018 British champion now carrying the number two in the NKC is now chasing down Jamie, Jamie Zyra bit of a gap pulled there and that was purely that's how on the limit these carts are because those two carts came together and went side by side they lost a little ground to Zyra and stuck a whole lap back again, to make it? that up though. now is Zyra I'm going to throw this out to you is he actually playing a canny game well and he could he, be and is he you know trying to win as Jackie Stewart says in the slowest possible time no, no he's, he's not cause, yeah because Louis, Louis really got some pay. oh he's gone yeah. defensive I'm into Christmas can we go the long way around no he can't now the problem for that is that slows them both down and plays Scott Smith back in play. more important Callum Porter who was, lot, who was cast adrift in fourth now he's joining this making this a four cart train led by Zyra Zyra is that blocking move despite him not having the ideal line, well, it cost Louis Large more time. I'd prefer to call that a defensive move than a blocking move, because that's no, all no, he did. because blocking didn't. is a bad word in America. IndyCars are blocking. blocking is ab- if, you do, if you block someone legitimately, it's a completely legitimate move. It's not a problem. Well, yeah, it's not a problem, because all he did was take the inside line there, and now we've got a four-card battle. And somebody like Callum Porter, who's an experienced carter in himself, he's going to know that he's just got to sit there and maybe, you know, think of a move. Zyra's going to defend again. He looks over his shoulder. Oh, he opens the door there. So he does take a more conventional line. But Louis, Louis knows Wilton Mill as well, oh. very well. Out of that, in towards, down the hill towards Ashby. It's a corner that sucks you in because of that downhill aspect to it. And Louis lost a little bit of ground there, having to defend from Scott There's Smith and Callum hu- Porter. Yeah, there is a huge amount of temptation for Scott Smith to throw it. You could see he was thinking about sending you, yeah. it. He was thinking yeah. about sending on two occasions there and luckily discretion got a better part of Valor. We are this race has flown by. We're down to half a minute. Yeah. Um, so we're they're good. going to get two more laps, aren't they? Yeah, two when more they go laps across Nick. the line. But Oh, Zyra so, really wide there, Nick. Did you see the car yeah. flip up there on that bumpy outside curbing? Here we go. Time ticking by and chances and opportunities running out. Large. Oh, it's going to be Smith up the middle. Oh, I thought Smith was going to be. Oh, Smith. Was <laughs> Callum Porter. Wow. That's what yeah. he's been waiting for, Nick. That's exactly what I meant. He's going to wait for these three to start tripping over one another and then take advantage. Now Callum Porter's vulnerable to Scott Smith because he's not going to take this lying down. Yeah, he got through and then he, he lost a bit of momentum and suddenly Louis Large closed up the space. There's, ma- there's a massive six car, car length gap between them. It's ridiculous. Who said Carthy was close? Now, <laughs> Zyra's having to defend and Louis Large has then been able to take the optimum line. Tries to squeeze down through the latter section of the boot. Has to conform and Callum. slot in behind. He, what, this is where Louis Large has to be very, very precise and get that throttle nailed through Crooks and all the way up the hill. He's in the slipstream. Zyra pulls to the left takes the optimum line Louis Large in his wheel tracks Callum Porter waiting like a buzzard over a corpse in the desert (laughs) waiting for that opportunity waiting for these two to trip over one another and Callum Porter right now on the bumper of Louis Large Louis just has a look he's just got momentum that he's got to go with sometimes last opportunity now into the boot for the final time Louis looks down the inside he's got to defend as well Everybody, line of stern, one, two, three, four, going to be joined by Harrison Brook across the line, and that's the win. That is a very, very high standard of karting there, Nick. That is quality, quality driving. Jamie Zara takes the win, Louis Large second, Callum Porter third, Scott Smith fourth, fifth is Harrison Crook, Ben Hitch sixth, Jamie Tyler seventh, then we've got Alfie Williams, James Yap, Joshua Gollin finished tenth, Daniel Burgess, Alex Rowley, Nick Skelton, Finley Cross, Ollie Hancock 15th, Andy Collinson 16th, Jack Taylor, Jack Goodyear, Alex Jones, Joe Pfiffner, Peter Jeans in 21st. Then we've got Matt Ogden, Adrian Smith, Seb Bulpin, Stuart Dixon and Tom Eldridge. 26 carts there for the fourth heat for Rotax 177s. You know what, Nick? That was just a heat. That was great. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when it's all about the win? The thing that surprised me was how Zara got in the lead so easily but then didn't pull away. I really thought he was going to pull away and we were going to have to be talking about no, a battle of second, third and fourth. Be- this is what I mean about a very high standard of karting, Nick, because those four drivers, those five drivers, they all started to come together. They're absolutely on the limit through every single corner, every braking zone, every application of the throttle, nailing it at the, at the apex, carrying the speed. You know, that, that is a very, very high standard of driving there from all of those four. And I'm going to put Harrison Crook in there. Five. In fact, 26. Well, uh, no, that's that is a very very. You could tell the way that they were, you know, how on the limit they were because nobody was gaining mm. through the corners into the braking area. Everybody's braking on the on the very very limit of what they can do. 
great stuff. I think and totally clean. No one's had a problem with the nose check, so all good. Terrific. So already the next heat's going on. Yeah. And, uh, and I have a job now, and I've got to pour the coffee out. Yes, you have. <laughs> While I do the grid rundown for this junior raw tax, it's the fourth heat for this class as well. They're already out and released from their caged. Louis Reese, it is on the pole position for Mitchell Mulvey alongside. Alfie Bushnell and Billy Vogt share row two. Row three is Joshua Priest and Alex Fraser. They've got Freddie Moore and Nicholas Ellis on row four. Row five, Harry Hannum and Finley Patterson. Row six, Lewis Cropper and Billy Edgecombe. Uh, Marcel Popacool and Harry Hine are on row seven with Joshua Della Carter and Jaden Hewitt on row eight. Frank Ward and Curtis Latimer are on row nine with Caius Zygmanta and Harvey Williams on row 10. We've got then got Jack Dimbleby and Byron Scott Simmons, Abdurrahman Sheikh and Presley Walker on row 12. Lewis Llewellyn, Joel Bullen are on row 13. And then rounding off 27 cart field is Joshua Withcombe. Remember, mixed grids, these cart, these heats. So it's not the, the positions on the grid here are basically where every driver gets a chance to start near the front, one in the middle and one at near the back of the grid. We are getting this underway. The 25 pops out. Louis Reese leads off the line. Mitchell Mulvey alongside. Let's see how things have panned out at Crook as they head off towards Christmas. It's the 47 of Louis Reese, the pole position driver, hanging on to that lead through Christmas clinic. Oh, we were off for there. So, so, some kerfuffle to the back of the grid. I think it was a 25 who spun off. It is a 25. Yep, Jaden Hewitt, I think he, he lost out. And the way it, it looked to me like he was helped off the track, the way he was coming off the Christmas corner in the dry. That's how, like how we were falling off in the wet during our uh, Friday night uh, karting. Extra. And the lead is about to change again. The dive the, this is a really popular first lap movie. The dive up at the inside of Chapman and straight into the lead has gone the number 155 of Mitchell yeah, Mulvey. And then, then there's been more kerfuffle there at the back. And I think that we, Louis Rees may have dropped another position. It could have been a bit more of a, a confusion further down. Let's watch them come across the line. It is indeed the 47 of Rees' second. But it was third and fourth and fifth. We had it. Yeah, big yeah. winner there. Harry Hanman. Okay, great start. And up into fourth. Alfie Bushel third. And they come through the, uh, the complex for the second time. We saw yesterday just how much speed Harry Hanum has. He's up to fourth there on lap one. Mulvey, Rees, Bushel, Hanum, Ellis, Vucht. Priest, Moore, Patterson and Edgecombe. There's your top ten. And already side-by-side -side karting oh. through Ashby. The 26 pushed off there. Alfie Bushel <laughs> finding himself Fought with no... Back. Finding himself on the grass without any grip whatsoever down the inside. Who was that who pushed him down the inside? 19, Harry Annam. I don't know. Forceful I've, driving that. I don't know. How that, was, that was kind of like they were just racing and they ran out of space. But I've been, I've, I've been seeing how he gets the quick tempo on the stewards. I'm yeah. pretty certain that Alfie Bushel is very upset about it. Yeah, that might, caught, might, might have caught the attention of the official we will and see. Our job is, though, to focus on the front of this field as, once again, we see, we see them space out. Now, whether they stay spaced out will we'll rem remain to be seen as Mulvey, Mitchell Mulvey, Louis Reese, Harry Hannum, Nicholas Ellis. Just dropping off is Billy Vogt, Freddie Moore, Alfie Bushel after that uh, off-track excursion. Gathered himself up for seventh. Finley Patterson, eighth. Billy Edgecombe now moving up to ninth. Joshua Priest, 10th. And then Caius Zygmanta, who you will see in our Ooh, panic show. Down the inside. Move. That's Harry Hannum again. Beautiful move. I've not seen that done before. Just coming up. He almost kind of... The door was lightly open. It's like he got through that like my cat opens a door. The door's <laughs> lightly open. And then the cat just nudges his nose up. Just <laughs> flicks it a little bit more. And he then slides through a, a, literally a cat's width of door being open. And that's how he got round at the boot there. Harry Hannum in like a cat. In like a cat. Like my cat opens a door. In like a cat. Harry Hannum. He's now pushing on Mitchell Mulvey. So Harry Hannum, we saw how quick this young lad can be yesterday. Yep, going well for how he did a couple of good results. I think he certainly had some, some top finishes. I don't think he actually won any of them. But... He's now right on the tail, and he's done it. He loves it. He loves it around the beginning, but he does another overtake. And in fact, he's forced poor Mitchell Mulvey so wide that the second place Nicholas Ellis has also come through. So Mulvey and Ellis went through. Hanlon and Ellis went through. Mulvey got to third all around the boot. I don't want to Hanlon and his entry into the boot and his speed around the, t the first of those right-handers. It's lethal for anyone who's trying to keep him back. So Now then the question is, Nick, can Harry Hanlon pull away? It doesn't look like he can because Nicholas Ellis... Yeah, who had some supporters uh, tuning in on the live stream yesterday, didn't they? Yeah. And Nicholas Ellis not letting Hannum get out of his sight whatsoever. He's glued to that rear bumper. They're through the left-hander of Chapman. He's got the right-hand kink there. That leads onto the 
relatively short straight and already Ellis looking down the inside there he had the momentum and uh, not quite be able to carry that into the boot and has to back off slots back in Mitchell Mulvey these two coming together has allowed Mulvey back on terms Louis Reese just dropping off the back of them Freddie Moore is crossing the line in fifth Billy Edgecombe Alfie Bushel Finley Patterson Joshua Preet Kaya Sigmanta there moving up to 11th I see and Joel Bullen dropping down the order I think he's got a problem Joel Bullen look I think he's gone missing the number 77 that was very much in the top 10 now dropping down the order well they're not going to break away if the, if, if the defensive driver Hammond carries on because notably he just took the middle line down the uh, run up to Christmas and what all that achieved was obviously it's prevented Ellis getting past but it gave Mulvey about you know four or five cart lengths of, of free time to catch up and so it's a train of three now uh, Mulvey probably is still smart in the fact that they both can open the in pass that's all oh, that's too wide by that's too wide by Mulvey there and, he, and he, it's fun to go over those rumble strips it does bring us but you get a point there where the, the wheels are bumping up the ground and I remember one of the one of our uh, oh, overtake now challenge for the lead right oh. Nicholas Ellis that was textbook wasn't it yeah gathered the momentum all the way up the hill from that very very fast right hander at Crook mm. Crooks and then made the move down yeah. the inside however Harry Hannum He's kind of just, you know, he didn't fight it. He didn't he didn't try and close the door. He let him go, and now he follows him. Yeah, he's got three minutes. Just to finish that thought about the rumble ships coming out of Pit yeah. Bend. Yes, going wide speeds you up, but they are very, very bouncy. And as our good friend John Hindoff once said when he was commentating on four-wheel drive cars, he said, if all the wheels were in the air, you've got no-wheel drive. And it's the same there. You saw the extra bounce that uh, Mulvey had, and the wheels got off the ground. Yeah. Therefore, they're not giving any forward momentum. That's right. And, of course, remember, of course, with carts, it's a solid rear axle. So you haven't got any suspension to have you know, or a diff to give you some drive. It's nothing. And that's where he lost forward momentum. But luckily, because of the scrappage in front of him, he's still right in the mix and currently in third place. That's Mulvey. And we're, we're literally measuring microseconds here around a lap here at Wilton Mill. So your rear axle being in the air for a few consecutive microseconds will cause a little slight disadvantage. However, he's recovered from that. And now we have a three-card battle for the lead with inside of two minutes remaining. Remember, our usual eight minutes and one lap now, the duration of our heats. Now, you know how it's all about me sometimes? Uh, most of the time. Harry yeah. Warby has, has put a, a chat on the Carting Live TV YouTube of, come on, Nick. I thought, oh, that's very nice to support that. Come on, me. I went, oh, no, it's the lead, <laughs> Nick does Ellis. So literally, I was confused. Why? It was very nice to say that. That's got, oh, it's not me. Is it's it? No, it's, you, it's the racer who's now currently... Uh, just dropped back down to second again. It's, it's, if you uh, want to first, but it's been challenged for first and second. Sorry. If you want to believe it's you, it can be you. It's not. It's the black. The black nose. I assume he, either he's on the weight limit or he's had to get a new uh, uh, Nassau panel, which he well, couldn't get the stickers for. And he's uh, ooh, he's, pulled a, he's pulled a whole six meters. Well done. Oh no! And then the, the the perfect little dive back up the inside again. And so I think we should have to watch that to see that again, really, because it, it, it's amazing. It wasn't there, and then suddenly, boom. In goes Hanman. Yeah, Hanum doesn't take much encouragement, does he? No. He didn't look anywhere near it, did he? No. But he's carried... He got, look, so into the left-hand bit of the boot. Look at the momentum he's got. Oh, he actually springs it off yes. the curb to get the turn. That's yes. an amazing move. He, was, he carried that speed and then through goes Mitchell Mulvey because by then Nicholas Ellis is right on the outside and losing speed. Yeah, oh, Ellis down the inside through... Oh. <laughs> through oh, Parker yeah that was he wasn't asking for invitation I am coming that, through and that is it you're not uh, no no that is a <laughs> tricky corner because it's there's very little speed difference from the straight the short straight out of Ashbury into that right hander they're already at the boot there with just on 20 seconds or so as they cross the line so it's two more laps of this very very intense Junior Rotax fourth heat it's the last of the Junior Rotax heat. So after this heat, Nick, we'll know exactly what the finals uh, are going to look like. The no, grids for the finals no, are going to look like. No, he won't. Time oh, no, we've got time <laughs> attack. Yeah, of course. Yes, of course. Time attack. Time attack 2. Come time attack soon. 2. Yeah. The sequel. John Claude Van Damme in time attack 2. <laughs> Zero time oh, on the oh. clock will mean. Oh, a little bit of a nudge there. A bit of oh, combat Molly. there. Mulvey's made up for it. This is fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic kart racing because you've actually got Mulvey isn't as quick as the other two. Oh, he's gone off. Ellis on the grass. Oh, no. He, he was taken. Oh, I don't know. Well, that's going to be hard. Let's watch that one again very quickly now before the rest of the last lap. He put what? himself where he didn't need to be. Mulvey. Mulvey's up the inside. Yeah, Mulvey's up the no inside. There's no space there. Well, he turned into Mulvey. 
yeah, Nick, but Nick Nellis turned into Mulvey. Yeah, I think I think in fairness, actually Mulvey had got alongside him by yes, more than Cartling. So yeah. I think possibly, yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be no no, no uh, result. The net effect was how far did Nick just drop down? Six. He's sixth. Yeah, he lost a lot of ground there, but he did turn into Mulvey. Mulvey was fully alongside him yeah. in the left-hander. That was a, I think, a, I don't, a I clean mean, move. I'm not sure whether he knew, but I mean, I, I suppose it, there's been quite a lot of turning in and expect the other person to give you room. That's uh, that's that's sim that racing, isn't? Yeah, and that isn't going to happen sometimes. But now Mulvey is so close. He's managed. To, yeah, he, he looked like he was the kind of the wounded little, little brother who's getting kicked by his, his, his older brothers. But this time, there we go, all over. Another cracking race. Climbing. Another one, yeah. Climbing. It's building, isn't it? It's building. Yeah, I'd like a rest now. Can we look it, at it? A couple of dull ones, please. It's building. The tension is building. Harry Hannam takes a very, very intense win there in the fourth and final heat for Junior Rotax. We, like Nick said, have got time attack coming next for more points to uh, shake up the grid if needs be. Mitchell Mulvey, a very, very intense second place. Billy Edgecombe, he earned third. He inherited third, I should say, after that incident. Uh, Freddie Moore was fourth, Louis Reese fifth, sixth was Nicholas Ellis, and then we've got um, Finley Patterson, it was, who comes through in seventh, eighth is Presley Walker, Kaya's Zygmanta was ninth, and rounding off the top ten was Joshua Withcombe. And breathe. Wow. Well, people well, are just during the stream missed a couple of crackers. Yeah, I tell you what, though, there's every chance that the next race, then the next race, and then the next race is going to be equally as intense. Yeah, and then we go up to uh, then we go up to finals. No, no, no. We then time attack. Well, then time lunch. Ta- then different. final. There's a different nature to time attack, and we'll be talking about time, time attack, attack as we get towards it because we've still got some heats. The senior rule tax 162s are coming next for their fourth and final heat. Um, it's a different mindset, isn't it? We, you, the, the last thing you want to be doing in time attack is actually racing someone. You need to be working with someone close enough to get the slipstream. Yes, and and working together to go uh, optimize the track, optimize the lap. Um, the last thing you want is to be tripping over people because with only at the time attack sessions only six minutes, and you know that time certainly ebbs away very very quickly. Uh, senior Rotax out on the track and at the front of the field, Ollie Goodyear. It is on pole position. Car one or part one one. Philip Howarth, current 177 NKC champion, moving down the order, so losing a, b- a bit of weight and moving into the 162s. He's alongside. Rory Trehorn and Dan Andrews are on row two. Alex Wannabe and Matthew Lambert are on row three. Braden Hill, Braden Hill and Michael Goodburn are on row four. We've then got Tom Patterson and Archie Lyons. Kieran Gifford, Andy Ambrose qualified in 12th. However, after that big accident yesterday, Andy went out in warm-up and found it just too painful from those... Ba- Bruise, bruises and batterings that he took yesterday. So Andy Ambrose has pulled out. So Joseph McVeigh and Mohammed bin Mahfouz are on row seven. Jake Richards, Evie Poulin, who had a great run yesterday. They're on row eight. Row nine is Alex McGee, Jake Dennis. And then we've got Alex Jackson, Hayden Phillips, Archie Elliott, Alex Moody, Tommy Lee Davis, Toby Case, Matty Herbert, Matthew Herbert, Matt Llewellyn, Scott Goldsby and Ollie Varney. 28 carts have qualified. I think we've got 27 out there with the loss of Andy Ambrose. I hope Andy's feeling Okay. And uh, off into oblivion. In Ooh. Off, <laughs> in oblivion. <laughs> off into oblivion. Off into oblivion. How are they not having accidents? All, all I ever hear from my right is... <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I'm, really? the, I'm, doing the, I'm the effects guy. <laughs> you clearly are. Yes. And you get me excited about... I like it. I, I, love that, I love that shot with the carts. I, I, know, I can't work out how they get through without at least four of them being punted off into the side. That's brilliant camera work from Carting Live TV. I know. And shot. But the cameraman, to be honest, the cameraman on that shot deserves... Oh, hang on. He does, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Don't spoil the magic. Um, <laughs> it, it really is absolutely awesome. The, 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 you really do grasp the speed through that first mm. section here at Wilton Mill. Uh, guess who's in the lead? Uh, is it... Uh, for how? No, no, it's only good yet. Oh, there we go. Card 73. Well, Phil's up to third. That's uh, t- yeah. Very second. No, no, no. no he's back up to second, yeah. Uh, Phil Howard. Oh, that was that, that, you see the, the 95 there, Matthew Lambert, went, went across by flying across the curbs of the uh, start of Oblivion. So he's now in third now, I think, is uh, Lambert, and fourth is, is Brody T- Trehorn. But this one, uh, it's not, luckily, it's taking you a little bit of a chance to breathe. Yes, this is... this. this, uh, this it's about to stop, though, because how it's going off <laughs> this year. <laughs> well, this is what I was about to say. You know, we're just... You know, we're only on lap, lap two, so tyre pressures aren't up. The... 
uh, tyre temps are not where they want to be. So, you know, we're just going to be seeing in perhaps the end of this lap and then into the next lap. That's where we're going to see where people are with regards to pressures and settle. And as we say that, Phil Howarth moving onto the rear bumper of Oli Goodyear through oblivion. Then the right-hander at Crooks, absolutely flat track. And we, we see what I mean? Tyres coming on, Nick. Four carts. Mm -hmm. Goodyear, Howarth, Trey Horn and Lambert coming together. And then not that far away is Matthew, is Dan Andrews. Dan mm. Andrews there having a bit of a lonely fifth place. Yeah. Yeah, the four. Oh, oh, just a little bit of a kind of a sneaky little have a quick look in there, that, wasn't it? That, that was very messy there, boys. That was very, very messy. And we've got side by side into the boot. The 95 of Matthew Lambert has taken advantage. Who's that? The 28. That's Kieran Gifford. We know how quick he is. Kieran Gifford trying to get alongside. Opening the flat. This is getting pretty, pretty busy now. Yeah. There's always some there appears to be some indecision about when to actually go for the move there. Oh, hang on. What's, what's the pointing about? Oh, there's a base. There's a four, four car punting going on there. Right round the outside came the 28 there of Kieran Gifford from fifth, from four, fifth into second there. Incredible. Round the outside. But, Oh. oh, down the inside has gone Gifford. Gifford Is down the inside. I'm just actually, wondering if Goodyear's lost some pace. I'm not sure or whether or not people have just found pace. Pace is coming to them. But this isn't even but the, the leader final. now. Is Lambert? Lambert's going to lead. This isn't even the final. This so isn't what. It, this is just a heat. And look at the way we are battling. We are battling over every single inch, guys. There's five minutes to go. This no. is the bit where you settle in and follow each other for the last two till the last two minutes. But not for this one, not for this weekend. No. It's all about every single inch and centimetre of real estate. What we've not seen so far, which has got to be coming, is Howarth moving forward. He's been, he's been going backwards, really, but you, you can't, that's not going to stay, stay long. Because Phil's not going to going backwards, is he? <laughs> it was tantamount. There was salt there on <laughs> Phil. The salt of his senses. <laughs> they were coming from all angles, weren't they? And there was no doubt that we, we were tripping a little bit over Ollie Goodyear, who was doing all he could. Well, because when you're in the front, I know. it's very hard to keep people behind well, when, who are equally as quick. When Gifford did the amazing well, fifth to first place or fourth to first place around the other, it's because down the straight they were arguing as they hit each other. There was a row going on in four cars at 70 miles an hour. Well, you saw Kieran Gifford there. He's, he's, what he's saying Whoa. to Matthew Lambert on the 95 is, just just go, just focus. I'm not going to overtake you. I, I want to break away from Ollie Goodyear, Philip Howarth and Brody Trey. It's working. Look at it. It's working. Yep. Change the lead coming up. Stick with the front. And let's, there we go, Gifford takes it. Let's break a lead and then I'm going to overtake you and take the lead. Yeah, yeah. that's about it. But Lambert, looking like he might even want to come back. Lambert's on the black cart, Kieran Gifford on the red and white cart. Now Gifford says, come on, let's join in through Parker. Into the left-hander at Chapman now. Just use the curb on the right. A little bit of a kink there, exiting Chapman. And then into the boot. Now then, that's the most settled we've seen all morning. First and second. Kieran Gifford, Matthew Lambert. As they cross the line, the graphic will change. And look at the gap they pulled. Mm. That was a one point, that's well, one point seven is the gap. And things beginning to settle down. Four carts in third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That's only good. You have Philip Howard, Brody Trehunt, and Archie Lyons now in the sixth. And that four card battle is perhaps something we need to maybe drop back to, Nick. Yep. because that's where the action's going to come because that is. one's not over, is Howarth it? Howarth is desperate to get past the 73 of Goodyear. Ollie Goodyear's quick. The guys behind, I fear, are slightly quicker but not quick enough to get by him. Look at how he's having to defend. And this is what this is why everybody concertinaed up and we had the, that little bit of kerfuffle there in the early stages. Mm. We keep an eye on the leader, obviously, Kieran Gifford, who's pulling away now from Matthew Lambert. But this is where the action's going to be. Ollie Goodyear having a cracking... Crack and drive. Nice brakes like that. Yeah, there. he has. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's really, really quick. And the carts behind beginning to concertina up. Yeah, there's the, 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 the 1.7 second gap between second and third. And then, of course, these are all covered by a handkerchief again. But looking at the moment, like Gucci is able to actually run at the pace enough to keep a gap. Howarth now knows he's got, you know, he's got two and a half minutes, he's got four or five laps to, to do something, but actually he's not quick down that back straight, and behind him, Brody Trahorn, I'd say, is the faster car in the straight line there. Yeah, yeah, I think you might have a point there, the 41 there, just behind, that's the 41 there of Trahorn, and as he slides wide, Archie Lyons comes right up to his bumper, he lost time there, didn't yeah, he, using all wide, that curve? too wide. You mentioned that before, using 
a lot of that exit curb at Pitts Bend as the leaders continue to circulate yeah, only two tenths between them yeah, now yeah it's not really changing that gap at the moment we'll no assume. it's not we'll no. take a risk on missing it uh, <laughs> well there they are there just in the uh, foreground the front of the shot yeah we'll keep an eye on that one because I think the action's not over yet What's inside the last 90 everyone's seconds everyone's sort of equidistantly spaced now how has got um, sorry yeah, Howarth has got uh, Trahon off his back now and, and give it a go at uh, attacking uh, Goodyear. And this is what he's doing. So the gold helmet, uh, blue and yellow. That's uh, Howarth 101, the 73 just ahead of him. That's Goodyear. As they sweep through Oblivion and Crooks. And now they're looking left, they're looking right. I'm going to go in, I'm going to go out. Are you going to take me, are going to take me, are going to take me? No, no last minute leap out from Howarth there. Middle was... It was there were more eyes than the Chinese CCTV TV camera there, wasn't there, really? The drivers are fully aware how much time's on the board. They, they can see that every time they move uh, go back across the line and look at the gantry. We've now got a few challenges. That's a major advantage from wheel cars, isn't it? You just went off and you had no idea how long to go, did you? That's right. Yeah, 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 you didn't. You sometimes got a countdown board, but mm. then sometimes the didn't. person on the countdown board would be not there because they were having a fag or something. <laughs> Oh, there's contact. Oh. Contact, there's a challenge. I mean, that, that pits bend is not an overtaking place. But sometimes you haven't got a choice. You gather momentum out of boot. And the 41 of Brody Trehorn moved down the inside of Philip Howard through pits bend. And there, coming out of the boot here, look at that. It's Trehorn who gets oh, down the inside. And a sideways smoke. Philip Howard kept his foot in, did Phil? kept his foot in and controlled the slide but I'm not <laughs> that's just an acceleration zone through pits bend out of the boot mm. zero time on the clock but one more after this here comes the leaders across the line Still in front of us two or three tenths last lap board out that's what we will see now and that little trip by Trehorn on Howarth has allowed Ollie Goodyear to be able to take a breath on, these, on this final lap He's no longer under pressure at all from Howarth and Trehorn. No, it's all kind of spread out, isn't it? Three, and four, if, and five. And if anything, Howarth has gathered up his thoughts as well. Yeah. And he's pulled away from Trehorn. Oh, there's a move from the 39. Matthew La Herbert moving down the inside of Archie Lyons just in the background there. We'll stay with this battle there with... That's Philip Howarth on the screen there. And just look at that tyre mark on his number, obscuring his number there. <laughs> as Kieran Gifford takes the chequered flag to take the final senior road tax heat. This is not the first time that uh, Phil's had a tyre mark on his side, Paul. No, he was very, he's very comfortable in that environment, isn't he? Sideways with the wheels spinning against his side pod. Uh, Kieran Gifford takes the win in quite, I would say, relatively dominant style there. Matthew Lambert. Cart 95 is in second, Ollie Goodyear third, Philip Howard fourth, Brady Trehorn is in fifth, and Archie Lyons, it was in uh, sixth place. And the complaints have started. Sorry, no. <laughs> Brody Trehorn fifth, Matthew Herbert, it was sixth, Braden Hill seventh, Archie Lyons eighth, Alex McGee ninth, Dan Andrews tenth, and then we've got Hayden Phillips, Tommy Lee Davis, Scott Goolsby, Jake Richards, Archie Elliott, Joseph McVeigh, Michael Goodburn. 18 was Toby Case, Alex Jackson, Jake Davis, Alex Moody, 21st, Matt Llewellyn was the last finisher in 22nd. We lost Mohammed bin Mahfouz on lap six. Olivani went out on lap four, and then I think we lost Did Evie Poole in. Oh, someone just has a question, which you might be able to answer, if you can. Uh, what sort of times are the senior Rotax doing here today? What was the fastest lap has it gone? It's gone, it's, it's gone. gone. It's oh, sorry gone, about that, I missed that Mango Motorsport, sorry about that, mate. Yeah, it's, you know what, it's, it's perfect conditions. We're seeing some... Uh, real fast laps here. Remember, they're on the Maxis tyre, so you can't really compare the times in the NKC with the times in the likes of the MSUK, the Vera Tools British Championship, or the UKC. They're on a, a Mojo tyre. Uh, the tyre rules is what, is, in my view, in everybody's view, I think, the reason why the NKC has become such a success. Because two sets of Maxis tyres, four front tyres, four rear tyres, have to last you the whole season. You're free to use those those sets of tyres how you wish from the very outset um, but it, uh, it certainly keeps the cost down uh, in comparison to other championships and other series we've got the Minimax out this is the smallest of our grids with nine carts, pretty standard with Minimax 
Um, Mini Max does live on in the Junction 6 NKC Championship. Uh, we've got uh, the driver who is currently second in our Junction 6 NKC Championship on the pole position, Sonny Morgan. Max Carlton is alongside him in second place. Then we've got Daniel Hartley and Lucy Lavelle. Harris Roberts and Eddie Stewart are on row three. And then row four, Daniel Parsons, Riley Thatcher. And then rounding off the nine-cart field is Andrew Dixon. So nine carts. There may only be a small amount of them, these Minimax drivers, but I tell you what, they're not short of intensity and competitiveness. We've got a couple of new people, a couple of new drivers to the series. And nicely ordered grid. Well done, Sonny Morgan, who leads through Oblivion and into Crooks for the first time and already up the hill. The bright blue and yellow cart of Sonny Morgan already in the lead from that pole position. He'll want to consolidate that and get and maximise that pole position and turn that into a heat win, knowing Sonny as I do. Now, who's that who's just come through to second? We've got the number... Oh, I just didn't quite grasp the number there. I, know, I can see the 43 of uh, Harris Roberts. He's already up to third. You're going to be the second place man, are you? Second place man is Daniel Cart Hartley. Number 63. 63 yeah. yeah, Daniel Hart, second place man there, Cart 63, being hassled somewhat by the number 43 of Harris Roberts. So Daniel Hartley, Harris Roberts, into second place. Sonny Morgan's checked out. Goodbye, says Sonny Morgan. We've got Lucy Lovell in that uh, train as well, and of course uh, our new. Star commentator Eddie Stewart just behind in sixth currently. Fifth yeah. actually, sorry. If you uh, if you watch the live stream from yesterday, we had Eddie Stewart here commentating with us. He did a cracking job. He uh, he was with us with me for the final junior raw tax heat yesterday. And uh, we've got a bit of competition there, Nick. Yeah, it's fine. That's how as long as, as, long as I got my chair, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right, yeah, there's thing. Some young whippersnapper with, with a fresh back gets to sit down. Well, that's, no. our, that's our, that's that, that's that, our future there, right there in, in Eddie Stewart's hands. Karting Life TV will live on for many, many decades <laughs> with, uh, with Eddie Stewart being able to take over the microphone. Um, that's a jolly thought. I know, I know. He's, he's just going to lift the he's mood he's now. He's going to climb over our corpses and start talking. <laughs> he's going to lift the mood now. With uh, two laps completed, Sonny Morgan's gone. He's got 1.2 seconds lead there, but behind him, this is where the battle is, side-by-side side through Christmas. And the 63 of Daniel Hartley from second place ends up in, what is that, fourth? Fourth, yeah. That, yeah. that was a little bit of an experience, I think, really. He didn't know when to go up the corner. Uh, well, he went he went around the outside and then lost the, lost the back end. It was sliding and, and not going very, forward. Very, very wide, yeah. And that allowed the number 16 of Lucy Lovell into third place. And Lucy, Lucy losing ground through Chapman there, holding people up. And coming back at her is Harris Roberts. Sorry, not Harris inside. Roberts, Daniel Hartley. Daniel Hartley down the inside. But Lucy Lovell comes back at three mm. wide. Three wide into the pitch. And the winner then. is the 25, oh, the big black card. Very, very crowded. The 25, Andrew Dixon. Dixon. Oh. oh! Wow, it's got, dear. It's got, oh, it's got carnage written all over it, hasn't it? Yeah. As they head towards Christmas. Who's that now in second? Sonny Morgan, 1.4 seconds. Harris Roberts has broken the second. Yeah, I think that's Andrew Dixon now in the 25. In third, yep. Yeah. yeah. No, isn't that Andrew Dixon in second? No, no, it there's two ahead of him. There's two ahead of him. Two isn't carts it? ahead of him. Yeah. Horace Robertson, Sonny Morgan. Ah, yeah. oh, so there is, yeah. yes. So that's third. Yes. That's how, that's how so third's third. broken away as well. So there's Lucy Lovell. In fourth. In fourth, in the pink helmet. By the way, when you point at the pictures, no one can see you pointing. No, uh, you can see me <laughs> pointing, though. <laughs> Look how crowded that is in the boot. That's Eddie Stewart there on the 45, who has just gotten round the number the number 15. 15. Max uh, Carlton, who was in second at one point, has now dropped right yeah. to the rear of the field. I, mean, I think he's obviously a bit of a, bit of a bully. He's been bullied today. Yes, he was. He was. They've strung out now. That is Right. Let's, let's just gather our thoughts here because we can try to make out numbers whilst they're swapping, literally swapping places, left, right and centre. Right, here they come, through Ashby. Sonny Morgan leads. Harris Roberts second. Andrew Dixon on the 25 is third. That's Lucy Lovell in the, on the 16. Daniel Hartley behind her in the 63. He was up there at the front a short time ago. Eddie Stewart in the 45. Eddie just dropping back off the back of them by about three tenths. So Eddie not quite being able to get on terms with that, those two carts. The 63 oh, yeah. of Daniel Hartley right on the bumper of Lucy now. 
And that's going to come up the inside. Down the inside goes Hartley. Lucy Lover will try and come back. Doing the switch back. Has to slot in though. Through Inkerman's there, that fast right hand kink using all the curb there. And there's the 63, Daniel Hartley. Having got by Lucy Lovell, she's going to come back at him though. Just got, you can kind of feel that. Three and a half mm. minutes remaining in this uh, third and final heat for Mini Max. Dixon is beginning to bridge the gap to Roberts. That may, that may evolve into something. Uh, Dixon, of course, a, a guest. Well, there's no guest at the OC. He's not a regular of the NKC. No guest at the O plate. So anyone can turn up to the O plate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's not a regular in the NKC. Um, this is the closest battle on the, uh, the track at the moment, which is the Hartley Lovell uh, kerfuffle. And Lucy happy to follow in his wheel tracks at the moment. Coming down to Ashby. He's not pulling away from her, though, is he? No, I think no. It's, it's, it's a case of once they, once they get past, the, 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 the tracking driver finds it relatively easy. With the little extra bonus you get from uh, a bit of slipstream, which is probably worth a, a tenth or two, and it's enough really to sit on the tail of the other car. Uh, the problem really is trying to get past, and what we have seen is, is an ever-growing number of attempts we made going into the boot and through this, this right-hand intersection, long right hand at the top of the boot, uh, and some um, ill-advised attempts to go round in the pit bend as well. Sonny Morgan has continued to command this lead of this Minimax heat there in the lead of this uh, race. I think second and third is where we need to be. Second and third is where we need to be. Andrew Dixon on the number 25 and Harris Roberts have come together. Sonny Morgan's gone. He's got two seconds gap. But this second place now have come together. The 25, the black cart there of Andrew Dixon now has the number 43 of Harris Roberts right with him through Chapman and off on that short back straight towards the boot. And just look at that. Andrew Dixon knows he's being chased down, isn't he? Mm. Andrew Dixon, of course, down the straights, needs to lean down to be aerodynamic. Um, Harris has got an ace up his level, being so short, he's already aerodynamic. So he's got yeah, yeah, lower. Yeah, he's still The weird, weird thing about Minimax, of course, is it's, a, it's an age range, but the size of the kids is completely different because they're completely different parts of their growth spurts. <laughs> so you've got, yeah, yeah Sonny Morgan's really tall. Yeah, there could be seven or eight inches difference between the, right. uh, the two drivers. It's, uh, it's, not, it's really interesting. and you, Therefore, they look very different in the carts. Yeah. You look at um, Andrew, he's, he looks like a, like a junior Rotax guy. You look at uh, Harris, he looks like someone coming out of cadets. He's tiny. Yeah, and there, number 25, Andrew Dixon, beginning to pull out a little bit of a cushion to Harris Roberts. Now, it's not like the concept of Phil's having a moment. Yeah, behind. Phil's tiny behind us. Take your headset off and have a listen uh, while I do this. So, Andrew Dixon, he was being challenged by Harris Roberts, but he's kind of responded to the challenge. And he pulls out a bit of a cushion. So we've, we're inside the final, well, 45 seconds almost. As we tick by, the leader, Sonny Morgan, just getting a grip of where Sonny is on the track. He's just coming through Inkerman's and on the downhill sweep towards Ashby. Let's, have a, let's try and pick up the leader, Paul, if we can. That's him there. Well done. You read my mind. Sonny Morgan, who's kind of went off from pole position there on the number 27. And he's dominated this heat and while everybody behind him was squabbling and tripping over one another Sonny Morgan's gone on with the job and did exactly what the plan is and you can see there the tall youngster beginning to add grow mini max we'll probably see him in juniors next season comes through oh and there's six seconds on the clock four seconds three seconds on the official clock there two more to go so two more to go for Sonny Morgan it's been a very lonely race it has for Sonny he looks over his shoulder there's nobody there Sonny just crack on, mate. Get on with it. Keep doing what you're doing. He's had as much competition as I had casting friends back in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reference to yesterday's broadcast. Everyone, so if you didn't hear it, you don't want to talk about it. Yeah, Nick and his karting friends. That's it, yeah. Or lack thereof. Oh, no, there's a picture of them. It's just me. <laughs> Nick and all his mates. Well, Sonny Morgan is surrounded by no one at the moment. Andrew Dixon's doing all, doing all he can to chase him down. He's reduced the gap to the leader by a couple of tenths, but that's all. Some great shots there from Ashar cameraman in the boot, just showing how the driver's working away. Just slight movements on the wheel there. It's more of a balance thing, last lap board. And through this very, very fast section, gap 1.9, so it's not changing drastically. 
as Sonny Morgan continues through Christmas Corner. Faster than it looks, Nick. It is. Said. It's much faster. It's not, it's not a hairpin at all. It's kind of like a, what is it, about 120, I suppose? Do you yeah, sweet wings. Yeah. And it's uphill as well, so you can kind and of carry it the right way, yeah. yeah. Um, Andrew Dick, I think Andrew Dixon will be pleased with this result, the second place from where he started. I think he's... Uh, I think that's, well, he started probably, ninth. This, this last, yeah. So yeah. This, well, one person didn't start the race, but this, this is the best. Yeah, he's got to do the second. Morgan off the front or near the front was always going to be very hard to catch. So I think... Dixon will go back and he'll say, right, that's great. I don't have to do anything now. It's all about the, fi- the time attack and the final. And I think Dixon thinks if he can start on that front row, he's got a chance of staying with Morgan when we get to the longer final. Uh, Morgan pats the side pod of his cart. Well done, boy. Uh, it's a horse. And uh, rolls through. Uh, Dixon second. Harris Roberts third. Daniel Hartley fourth. Lucy level fifth. Eddie Stewart. Didn't he show anything that one? He's obviously thinking too much about it. Probably, probably talking himself around the whole <laughs> way. Um, I thought he was just pleased to have a chair and sit down. Uh, then Max Carlton and Riley Thatcher are the eight. Who didn't run? Who didn't uh, start? It was Daniel Parsons. Oh, okay. we just, yeah, just noticed there at the very we have lost. We have lost a couple of drivers overnight um, to various reasons. Damaged carts or damaged drivers, to be honest. Yeah, um, we have. So we may have a couple of people missing later on in various heats. So the Mini Max, for a change, were, were kind of evolved into a... A nice, calm procession yeah, of driving there. There's a the chance to turn to rock and yes. like Relax there. Well, perhaps a bit of kind of, uh, you know, whispering Bob Harris. Senior TKM next. This is the 110cc air-cooled TKM engine formula. They're on the Maxxis tyre. That's pretty much everyone is today, <laughs> apart from the KZ. More of that coming... After this one, though, for now, we're all about the senior TKMs. Harry Roff, sorry, Harvey Roff, pardon me. Harvey Roff, our pole position driver, with Mitchell Ball on the number two alongside him. Jack Ransom and Charlie King, who was going very, very well indeed yesterday on the number 26. They're on row two. Row three is Matthew Temple Purcell and Joseph Jakes. Row four, Olivia Jackins and Will Cregeen. Row five is Tom Johnson and Andrew Platt. And then rounding off the 12-cart field, we've got Alexander Lehman and Joseph Phillips. Phil's back for more. <laughs> oh, we're now being quoted. <laughs> well, absolutely. We had some great footage <laughs> yes, of, of that one. That's going to be very beneficial if that's me, the me, one he's talking me, about. Me and Phil have got history. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I wouldn't say anything. Well, no, they, they, coming down the straight, but he was it's not, down the back. It's not our job to be judges of fact. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not. our job to observe <laughs> and, and, and tell people say, what's Say it how you see it. Yes. <laughs> I just love the way he, I just love Phil. He's so indignant. <laughs> Right, you, you know what? Out. You know what? Like, <laughs> it out. When he gets it back. During a race weekend, <laughs> during a race day, Phil is an intense character. <laughs> Outside of a it's race, like a, before the I racing know, starts, he's absolutely gorgeous. And he's lovely. It helps everyone out with the world yeah, and everything else. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he is the ultimate guy. Jekyll and Hyde. But he is, he's, I love, he's, I, <laughs> is I, Phil I, Howarth, by the way, I understand sorry. Phil's competitive <laughs> yes, intensity. Yes, you're awful as well. Because I'm horrible as well when I race. Absolutely awful people we are. <laughs> Can you help me? No. <laughs> no. Sort yourself out, you, be, you begrudgingly gave me one piece of advice on Friday. <laughs> I didn't begrudgingly give you it. I gave you one piece of advice for me begrudgingly. Hey, mate, you took it on board as well. Uh, right, we've got the TKMs out for their rolling lap. I could tell from the smoke. Yeah, <laughs> we've got poles of two-stroke smoke, which we love. Oh, I we do. Love oh, smell. I love. We love the smell of two-stroke in the morning. And the evening. And the... I think they've managed to swing something. They might have to get a go around, which is obviously what they want. Yeah, we've got a straggler. Uh, we might get this underway, actually. Really? Yeah, we have indeed. We're starting. Oh, I feel yeah. sorry for a cart number well, uh, the 91. 65. 65. 65. 65. Matthew Temple Purcell. Oh, yeah. got, away, got away out, out the collecting area uh, a little bit late. Right now, though, all the TKMs, all 12 of them out to complete their, compete in their final heat. And already down the hill to Ashby. We've got the number 36 of Harvey Roff off the pole position, leading the field round. All nicely ordered there, line of stern. Everybody doing as much as they can, waiting for those tyres to come on board, waiting for the tyres to pick up a bit of heat before we can really, really lean on them. And we've got Jack Ransom in second, Charlie King already up to third. Where's, where's Mitchell Ball? He's carrying the number two because he's the current vice champion. There he is, fourth. Fight. I can tell by a Sunderland helmet who's in fourth. Yeah. So top two, obviously they are um, teammates because they've got exactly the same sticker set. 
Henry Rolf and Jack Ransom. And they are being trailed by the man in green, or green hat anyway, uh, which is Charlie King. Now, Charlie has won, I think, won the first heat, didn't he? Um, of I the think day. he won the second heat as well. In the 26th. But it's a very close run between these three boys straight away. I think, boys, it's here take anything. Men. These three men. Charlie King won the second heat. And, and he's all oh, fantastic. We ran the outside there. He's going to get one. He's going to get two. Just to one. He just uh, got, got past the 27. Jack Ransom put the cart where he wanted to go up around this short straight, which is so with this entry into the boot. It's so become Mr. Popular. We, we, we've used to all the overtakes really happening at Christmas or Ashby, but suddenly, I don't know it's the, where, how the track is. It's dry. There's so much grip with the Super 100 uh, Vega rubber down. Bit. It's that what you would think is a single line entry into the boot. Nope, we're all going to go, go for it and into the lead. Uh, at Christmas King, just to be slightly wrong and right, is Charlie King. So King now takes the lead of heat number three as well. Yeah. From Roth in second and Ransom third. Well, Charlie King, I mean, you know, a very, very high standard of TKM drivers here this weekend in the NKC Auckland. Charlie King leading the MSUK British Championship uh, the last time I looked. I'm not sure that has changed, but certainly uh, doing a sterling job here and is absolutely... I, 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 use the term dominant very sparingly but there's no other word to describe Charlie King he's been quite unbeatable this weekend took heat one took heat two doesn't matter where he's starting on the grid all right it's a short grid this weekend only 12 carts so you know you can make a good ground but look at that already half a second was the gap at the line it's going to be more than that when they come round Nick yeah it's a great move there by uh, by Charlie um, I'm going to ask you a question now um, so TKM's in the British Championships, they on the Rotax side or the Army side of the British Championships? They fluctuate. Right, they float, do they? Yeah. Because yeah. Army, I don't know, but Army has a different engine, isn't it? Yes. Is Army like a Rotax engine, like it's like nice and clean, or is it like a TK engine smoking as hell? It's like a Rotax engine. They're a little bit more demanding, a little bit more, uh, they need a little bit more maintenance like than the Rotax. These are like X30s, aren't they? And that's that's sort of X30, thing. yeah, juniors and seniors. More popular on the continent. They seem to be, yeah, yeah. They're very popular, uh, the I Army on the continent. Um, Rotax engines seem to be the. Uh, I mean, there was there was almost a talk of the I Army engine disappearing in the British Championships. That was a, a rumour that was being mooted this time last year, but uh, that's not the, not the case at all. And I think they're at Lark Hall this weekend, aren't they? Yeah, yeah it looked, and, and it wasn't raining. I, I saw saw some pictures from yesterday, and it was not raining. Yeah, it looked, West of Scotland. Actually, looks not, sunny. Not raining in the West of Scotland. Looks sunny. Shocker. Yeah. They were saying that they, uh, there was a thing being done by, by um, well, I, uh, let's say our friends at Alpha Life, Alpha Life, Life they do, apparently uh, somebody else has covers cars, you can't believe it. Um, but they've got a new structure there which they're using for like uh, PR and everything else. Apparently it used to belong to W Series. So it's W Series Motorhome is now up at Larkhall. For what, sorry? For, for, for who? For Larkhall Track apparently now has W Series' motorhome and structure. They bought it off W Series. Like Hall, yeah, as like to use, use a clubhouse. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, right. Right. So at least they made some money back for the people, the well, eleven and a half million no people. Well, there was clearly an auction, wasn't there, yeah. of their assets and yeah. their property? That's what it was said on the thing I watched yesterday. If it's if it, if it is false information, you must blame other people, not me. Oh, well, you've stated it now on Carting Live TV. Who's so. the guy who? Who's the, who's the really knowledgeable guy who works in the British National Championships? Henry. 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 Henry, Henry Bodet said it. Yeah. Henry Bordet said it. Mm. All right. Well, if Henry said it, exactly. then it's true. That's right. Because Henry's uh, a reliable source. Back and, he, down and Henry knows everything. It is true. He does. Yeah. About karting. That's right. Uh, back here at Wilt Mill, as you can tell, we've had a conversation about something else because the race has been quite static. It's still Charlie King from uh, teammates Roth and Ransom. Uh, oh, problems there. Oh no! And I think that's it's Harvey Roth saying that. Who is it? Thank you for that, Harry. It is. The 35, 36, yeah, it's Roth yeah. is broken down. That, is that a seize? I'm not sure that's a seize or a chain or something. He's having a look. Oh, yes. yes! That's what we want to Chain. See. Chain. It is something slipped let's off hope there. It's, yeah, let's hope it's not whipped off, because the problem when the chain comes, it can take your car with it. Mm. In a whipping situation. Can you get off the track, please, sir? Uh, um, what's it? Oh, you can... <laughs> <laughs> He's put the chain back on. The chain slipped a cog, hasn't it? Oh, I love that. He threw the glove off. And then put, but actually, he may not throw. He may have taken it off deliberately to try and get the chain back on again. But that's brilliant. I've thrown my glove off. And, oh, no, I'll pick it back up again. I <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, hang on. We're going to we're gonna see some top glove action here. Yeah, yeah. He's not right. He's not happy. Chin's come off. <laughs> Shame's come off. And then he's Chin's come it. off the front sprocket. Oh, hang on. I might be able to do this. I can fix this. Yeah. We'll be able to <laughs> Thanks. twang it on. And he's there got, we go. He's, got, he's a lap down, obviously, is Harvey. He's done he's, well if it's actually if yeah. he's got his TKM started because they haven't got um, electric starts, have they? The so. chin is too slack, Harvey. He knows that. That's why he's going to limp round to the pits. And it's better it than walking, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He gets it and be able to good sort of stuff, mate. It. I, I just, I just, that's. It's not as good as the guy kicked the tyres yesterday, but it's still good. I, uh, can I just say, anyone who's listening, who's a carter, um, and you listen to this uh, later on the NKC carter, if you do break down, if you can react in a really <laughs> petulant way, it literally makes my day. So you can throw things down, and you can kick the cart. Also, if you've been taken off and you wait a lap to wave at the guy who's, who's taken you off. No. <laughs> I love no, that as well. We like can't shaking have that. the fist. No, no because not? that will get you disqualified from the meet. Well, it won't get me disqualified. No. But I'll still be commentating. Y- Nick, you... you I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying any physical contact. No, no, no. But saying you can't have people standing at the side of the track waving at carts. No. You, you, just just you had it once. Who would be here? You had it here. once. What? We've had it once. Well, I know we have, but it, we're not saying that we need it. Is that on your, your, is that on your 4G? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hence that. Mm-hmm. 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 Didn't think you cared. Hey. 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 Right, so anyway, back to the front. And it is still by a long way Charlie King. Jack Ransom now has second place, but second and third coming is Joseph Jakes, isn't it? We Jakes, found yeah. Jakes, we Joseph found Jakes. Yesterday. So yeah. Here comes Jakes. Yeah, I mean, Joseph uh, was out for round one at Three Sisters, and then Joseph Jakes is the, the, the chap who you will see in our paddock show, and you'll find out that Joseph Jakes' day job is working for Carling Motorsport. Carling That's Motorsport. That's a crazy day job. Yeah, uh, he works on the Formula 14, and so he can't make it to all the NKC rounds, so he's, been, he's managed to come out for the all plate, um, and he's a very, very quick TKM driver. Uh, no question. He loves it. He's there with his mum and dad. And uh, him and his dad prep the cart. And being a Carlin mechanic, he'll be prepping to a very high standard. And at the moment, third place. Interesting, we're going to be interested to see how this grid lines up behind Charlie King. Mm. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if anyone, if anyone has the pace to stay with Charlie King. That would be nice. He's absolutely been dominant. And not just dominant, though, um, with regards to um, here this weekend... If you look at the TKM Championship, Charlie King is leading the NKC on drop scores. He's leading the, cha- the, the championship by two points from Louis Bevan right. uh, with two rounds to go. So he's in contention for the NKC, the Junction 6 NKC Championship. Uh, we're about to see the last lap road come out. Yep. There's Charlie King just coming through the final turn and across the line now. There's the two boys in second, Jack Ransom, Joseph Jakes. And then behind them, Tom Johnson, Will Cregain and Mitchell Jax. Ball. Did I say Jakes? Yeah, it's very hard, isn't it? No, it's Jakes. No, it's Jacks. Joe Jakes, not Jacks. Joe Jakes. Oh, is it E? Sorry, Joe Jakes, you're quite right. Yes. Yeah. Press record. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Joe Jakes. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, what, nine seconds? <laughs> Oh, a bare little brain. I haven't got enough. Uh, Joe Jakes. <laughs> um, no, no. Let's start from the top. Charlie King. Oh, please do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Takes the chequered flag. Well done. Charlie King and continues in this dominant fashion. Uh, the likes of which is very rare at NKC level. Um, but Charlie King, he won, he two, and now he three. Jack Ransom. Has completed 12 laps and will take second place. Joseph Jakes was third. Will Cregain fourth. Tom Johnson fifth. Mitchell Ball sixth. Mitchell Ball dropping down to sixth. What happened there? Uh, Olivia Jenkins uh, is seventh. Alexander Lehman is eighth. Ninth was Joseph Phillips. Matthew Tebble Purcell finally got away and uh, finished tenth. Andrew Platt was eleventh. And it was Harvey Roth who we saw with that chain issue uh, rounding off and, and pulling into the pits. At half distance, would you believe? Six laps. Wow. That seemed like just, just a couple though. of laps ago. Uh, yeah. It's on uh, lap seven, though, I suppose. We've now got a bit of a treat. If you were a regular viewer on the Junction 6 NKC, you will, not be, um, you will not be familiar with our next class, which is our gearbox class, KZs. We're trying to get the... I'll give you a little bit of a secret here. We're trying to get the KZ boys to... Um, come together 
and join us in our 2024 NKC Championship. Whether that'll be six rounds, whether that'll be a three-round championship, we wait and see. We wait and see. But uh, the, I know that Chris Cox and Ollie Nitch-Smith are working very, very uh, readily behind the scenes to make that happen. Here they are, a guest a guest class at the NKC Allplate meeting. And it will be for the KZ very Allplate. Very upset people out there. Very yes, upset very intense. It's all about he the win. Very upset. It's all about the win. With the coffee. Oh, here we go. Yes, um, sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I'll run through the uh, the KZ uh, grid while Nick does that. We are in race control, everybody. So behind us is usually the sound effects of quite a vibrant sort of nightclub. <laughs> it's quite. It's, quite, it's like being in a nightclub here, um, with people being to- turned away at the door for no trainers. <laughs> Because the intensity is beginning to rise, I knew it would. KZ's off the line. So, gearbox karting, standing starts, as if it's not busy enough around the Wilton Mill track. Let's have a seven, seven gears to, uh, to muster with as you go. Single-handedly driving and steering whilst changing gears up and down the box. Thank you, Nick. Reese Llewellyn, the Dark Knight, the man in black. He's the dark knight in his overalls, but the man in pink liveried carts this weekend. He's on the pole position. Paul Phillips alongside. Bradley Calder and Bailey Regalsford are on row two. Then we've got Harvey Reby, Benjamin Ballou. James Webb, Sylvanus Klimas as on row four. Elliot, uh, Ellis Borshia and Sam Ward. And then we've got Isaac Smith and Daniel Chibula rounding off the 12-card grid. 12 carts making their way around. That is not Reese Llewellyn at the front of this. Field that is the number, the number eighteen of Bo Phillips. Only nine carts have come out. Twelve carts have, have qualified, but only uh, nine carts have come out. So Bo Phillips, Harvey Reby, Billy Regalsford, Sylvanus Clemas, Benjamin Ballou, Ellis Borchia, Isaac Smith, Reese Llewellyn is at the back. Why, why is Reese Llewellyn at the back? I've got a heat three grid sheet here for Reese Llewellyn. Now that's probably a choice. Reese Llewellyn is the first weekend on KZs, I believe. Yeah, that would be my choice as well. Yeah, and he's, he's choosing to be discreet. Yes, he is. He's starting in the back. So the, the Dark Knight just finding his feet quite literally. Finding his feet quite literally. Brum, on this good of KZ. Standing start. The lights go out. And we are racing 0-60 in 1.5 seconds. Into oblivion at 70 miles an hour. They jiggle their way through. Crooks and already Paul wow. Phillips. Look at the lead he's got. Down the box through Christmas Corner. And then through the curve there and into Inkermans. Using a bit of curb, not all of it. Downhill to Ashby, down the box on the bricks. Four or two, two axle braking with brake discs on the both of the front wheels and a brake disc on the rear axle. So very, very stable braking, not like our other two-stroke classes, which have only got brakes on the rear. So you'll see these guys braking in a straight line. And the 37, Benjamin Ballou is in second place. The number 182, or is it the 192, I should say, of Bailey Regalsford. We'll see a, night, a lovely interview with Bailey, and we get a good look at that number 192 cart in the paddock show. Mentioned this cart yesterday. It's prepared by uh, his dad, Carl. And if you, are, uh, if you are actually at the meeting and listening to this, have a look and find these people out in the paddock and have a look at these carts up close. They are basically, Nick, like driving a firework. Yeah. The acceleration on these things and the way that you've got to go up the box and down the box under braking. It's just a very, very, very busy lap. Well, given the fact that when you have a normal uh, car, you have to make a compromise in the gearing. You've got a fixed gear. So you are, a car, you are halfway where you want to be for pa- power and halfway for speed. No compromise here. You get all the power you could possibly want on a super low gear and all the speed you possibly want on a super high gear and all the gears in between to keep it on the spin. So obviously you can also have an engine that's tuned much more than a narrow power band as well. Yes. So you've always got that engine giving you the maximum power in every every phase oh, of that Oh, well, move there. And that was a 377 of Boucher, who's done pretty, pretty well in the previous two heats. Went side by side, but eventually has managed to uh, to get past Regardsford. He had to muscle his way through there, didn't he? Barely... Not really giving him uh, any inch there. No, and who's that coming through as well? The That's 63. Made, made really, made really, Sam Ward made a really poor start. Didn't get away at all off the line. Oh! Oh, 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 oh God! Barely result regards for there with a big hit 
He's up. He's up. He's, he's fine. He's up. It's yeah. okay. It looked worse than it was. He's up and walking away. Everything's all right. He's up and walking away. Barely thrown out of the car and immediately stands up, which is a good sign. That looked much nastier than I think it actually was. Think, he yeah. looks absolutely fine he, there. He'll be battered and bruised. Uh, no, but I think we've got a red flag, so understandably, there so after that one. Again, he's all right. Let's see what happens. He's up and he's up and around. Well, they try they try to get through and out of the boot side by side, and then accelerate it hard towards the final Ooh, turn it. at Pitts Bend, and it's oh, not okay, really it, uh, no. it's not really a passing zone uh, through Pitts Bend, and inevitably at these speeds you can just see the energy that these carts under acceleration, and that en energy dissipated as uh, Regalsford then speared off to the right, contact with the barriers, and uh, that was a very nasty-looking accident indeed, but I can tell you that Bailey, just taking his overalls off, he looks absolutely fine. He's a, he's a young and fit lad. He's Sport probably wondering what on earth happened. Um, yeah, we'll leave that to the officials. He does look fine, actually. Yeah, I'm he surprised. Does. Yeah, yeah. He's a young and fit lad. <laughs> you and I would, can't get, even get in and out of these carts, mate. No. Yeah, so we bring in the uh, field of KZs to a halt on the start-finish line, which is uh, standard protocol. And we'll uh, just make sure that Bailey is fine. He, look, he certainly, from what we can see, Nick, mm. standing up, chatting to the marshals. Yeah, all limbs seem fine, attached, no problems. Yeah, he's standing there with his hands on his hips. Probably more annoyed about the car, which is like a heavy thump. Carl will be busy getting this car ready for the final now after that knock. So we had three laps of racing. We'll take that back to lap two for a restart. It'll be a line astern restart. Um, Sarah Darlow, our grid marshal, will be checking for the race order. Blimey. There's the Isaac Smith there, the last of the drivers to choose to get out and maybe stretch their legs. I mean, these are, these are very, very, very important yeah. bits of kit I mean yeah. a KZ cart 0 to 60 in 1.5 seconds um, obviously that can be a little bit less a little bit more depending on how it's geared for whatever track you're at but like Nick says you gear them all the way through the rev range uh, with all of those choices of gears and they really are there that's Stu Stretton that's the famous or should I say infamous, infamous. photographer Stu Stretton photography if you are, he's pretty much everywhere. Um, and he's here at NKC. Um, and Stu, on his website, Stu Stretton Photography, check it out. If you're a competitor, you can buy uh, his shots. And they're very reasonable. I think it's 25 quid for 25 shots or so as a package. That's the most cost-effective way. And uh, if you are racing, do... You know what? Get as many photographs of yourself racing as you possibly can. I raced in an era where iPhones didn't exist and very few people, my, all of my mates, um, were too busy um, tending me cart to even think about having a camera. So I've maybe got about half a dozen pictures of about 10 years of karting. And, you know, so if you can, you've got professional photographers um, who are taking abundance of photographs at our race meetings here in the NKC and <clears> just just get them bought and then yeah. you know what no, in, I agree. Th in 30 I, years time like I, you and I, I have got is I, I bought when I started doing my track days on my bikes I bought actually buy the pictures in those days you, you, you couldn't buy them sight unseen you didn't get one the digital so long ago you just said can you, can you send me some pictures and you paid in advance and got some yeah. Yeah, but and you didn't know what they were. Yeah. Now you can go into a website and check and choose. And I've got them. I keep, and every now and then, they're not up at the border. They're, they're in, a, in a tube, and there's like four or five of them from bikes I had in the early night, early mid-90s. It's great. You look at yourself and go, first of all, you go, oh, my God, my leathers make me look so gay. Uh, and secondly, you go, oh, gosh, those bikes are so fantastic. Yes. And this and, is what I used to do. When and I also, young. wish I kept that one. It's now worth a fortune. <laughs> wish I kept that one. now a fortune. That one's worth nothing. <laughs> Uh, just, I mean, you know what? Even digitally, store them digitally. You can get, you know, have a, have a massive, massive catalogue of photographs that in 30 years' time you can look back and, and just, you know, enjoy. I mean, I raced Formula Fords. I've got two pictures. Really? Yeah, I raced Formula Fords you, for oh, two uh, years. And had you crashed in both of them? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but I didn't even take photographs of, of the damage after the, you know, after bringing it back into the paddock. 
Um, I literally have two photographs, both of which I'm s- sitting on the grid, mm. none of which at speed. It's a real problem, isn't it? Because you don't have any feeling of nostalgia when you're actually going through it and you're young. No, you don't. And it's then, all about now, isn't it? And then you kind of go, oh, yeah, that'd be great. Because yeah. I, 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 I was relatively good at RC racing when I was younger. I used to get me a picture of my name in a lot of the magazines. We didn't keep the magazines. And obviously, there's no digital copy of the stuff in the mid to the late 80s. And that's you go, right. Oh. That's right. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure I'd show because no one would be impressed by it so rather than me. The very first time I sat in a race car was at the Dave Manners Race School at Croft. Right. And at the same time I was there for the, for the day in a Formula Ford, Fred Henderson, uh, who was an international rally driver, renowned right. in the, certainly in the Northeast, and still around, we still all, everybody loves Fred Henderson. And Fred was there doing a piece for a magazine called Cars and Car Conversions. Oh, Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Triple yeah. C? Yeah, yeah. I ended up in Triple C, sat in the car, because when I finished my session, I would pull it in. I pulled it in, stay in the car, said Dave Manners, who was a big name in Northeast Motorsport. Uh-huh. Stay in the car. Fred Henderson and the other three lads who were there for the school day stood at the back of the car, and that made it into the magazine back in 1979 oh, or something. Oh, blimey, yeah. Was that actually a magazine? Was it, was it just printed on papyrus? It was, a, it was Cars <laughs> and Gold Conversion. It was one of the See, best magazines ever. No, no, with the death of magazines, unfortunately, we've lost a lot of really, I mean, really good magazines. That was a magazine that told you how to turn your Mark II Escort into a Mark II Escort rally car. Mm. It told you but everything. Let me ask you, do you know axles? what was the best-selling magazine of all in the mid-90s? FHM. No, it, good guess. I loved FH, no? Max Power. Was it really? Max Power was in 1.2 million a copy. Wow, really? And, and it's still there, but now there's about 40,000 or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like it. that whole thing, you know, which is why the, sport, the fast well, cars of the 80s and 90s are so popular. It's a whole car, that people who buy it, and the moment, people who are buying it back then can only afford the magazine. Now they can afford the cars. We <laughs> had two karting magazines, karting magazine and karting kart and super kart. No, yeah, karting news. I've never heard of karting news. Yeah, karting news is a, oh, that's even earlier then. Carling News. That was no. like a, that sort of size. No, no, no. It was Air Force size. No, this one was like almost like kind of a glorified club magazine, but was it was two, actually national. There was two big ones, Cart and Supercart and Carting Magazine. The thing is, the reason being is those magazines made their money on the adverts because every single shop put an advert in, wouldn't it? You know, yeah, that's right. Shop. And now, of course, right. there's no adverts from the shops because the shops just are on the internet. That's right. Yeah. I, remember, I remember when we were doing, I was, I was doing uh, RC racing, there was, a, there was a shop that took a page and it just listed all the part numbers and all the codes because there's nowhere else you could find out so if I, if I broke a front arm I need to know I'll order an A174 and you knew how much they were and you just phone up on a Monday after a bad weekend order a bunch of parts on the phone you know, and then they get sent out to you you might get by next weekend if you're lucky but it's like that's only way you can find out because there, no, there was no way of, on the internet to find, there was no internet literally you couldn't find out what the part was you needed you had to ask someone you go, you go, I remember going I've broken the bit that goes between there and yeah, there yeah, yeah. what's that oh yeah that's yeah we've got one of those or do you want the hop up version uh, what's that? Well, it's blue anodized and it costs four times as much. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course you <laughs> do. Uh, right, then, let's get this KZ heat underway. It's the third and final heat for the KZ class. Paul Phillips will start at the front because he was leading when the red flag came out. Benjamin Ballou will start behind him. Uh, we've got Bailey Regalsford out there uh, named. I'm not sure he's taking this restart after that shunt. And we get it underway with a green flag going oh! up, and we've got contact into oblivion. Contact got away there. With it. Got I think away that with was it. Ellis Boucher and Sam Ward, was it? Yeah. No, no, I think that's Sam Ward. 63. We'll see who was involved in that one when they come through. I think it was uh, Isaac Smith, maybe. Mm. Out at the front, though, Phillips, Ballou, Boucher. This red flag restart has brought them back together. Not for long. No, not for long. Paul it's Phillips it's checking out, isn't he? Away. He's checking out, and he's leaving Ballou to deal with the ever more advances of Ellis Borsia. Yeah. And Borsia looking down that inside. I think that's about acceleration out of the boot. We almost had that uh, a copybook thing there of what caused that first one. Oh, Ellis Boucher is nowhere near. Look, at where, look where he's come through. Who's that then? He's not the 377. Who is it then? No, that's a three-digit cart number, isn't it? No, it's 71. It's 71. Harley Rigby. Oh, right, okay. That's oh, Rigby. Well, I don't remember us talking about seven, it previously. 77. So, oh. Rigby is in third. Behind, so it's 37 from 71. Benjamin Ballou. Uh, and then just coming on the back is Sam Ward, who's still recovering from a terrible start he made in the first part of this race. Now, Harvey Rigby is wearing his Synergy overalls, so... 
I'm not sure what Harvey Reby's uh, history is with Synergy. Very much a renowned team in the world of uh, junior and cadet karting. Oh, 37 there, Benjamin Ballou, a complete power slide through the final turn at Pitts Bend. The gap of the line is seven tenths of a second there from Bo Phillips in the lead. Now here comes Sam Ward, Sam Ward down the inside of Reby. And that's a textbook move there, down the box on the brakes, very stable with these two axle braking systems on these Kia Z carts. And into Ashby. You see how that cart wheelied as he accelerated? He power, he Literally, he put the power on and the cart lifted its front wheels. That well, is mental. They're going to have, what, about 45 horse, aren't they, these things? I think. Uh, power to weight ratio is phenomenal. And, and more importantly, they have very low gearing in first or second gear, so they've got an unbelievable amount of torque going through the, uh, the hold machine almost immediately. The power to weight ratio must be something that getting towards an Indy car without any aero downforce. Mm. It's going to feel like an Indy car bouncing around on the bumps. Here comes Ward again. Probably would like a bit pushed apart, wouldn't he? Down the there. inside. Oh. Exactly. That's his favourite move. Off the back straight into Christmas Corner. The only thing was that the 37 Benjamin Blue kind of braked more like a, a normal car. Didn't it? it seemed a bit of rear instability as he went in there. That's a bit of rear locking. Perhaps he needs to just think about his brake balance. But it doesn't matter anyway because the pass has gone. The Ward cart. So it's the red overalls against the red cart. Sam Ward. He won the first heat. Yeah, I mean, this heat, he, 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 I saw him off in the first start. It's absolutely dreadful start. He got bogged down and left. He was yeah. dead last. It was Borshia who won the second heat with Sam Ward second. What's Philip Phillips done before then? Who, sorry? Our oh, leader, Paul what's he done before, yeah. Um, Paul Phillips was ninth in the second heat. And in the first heat for this class... Um, where was where was Paul Phillips for that one? Paul Phillips was third, hmm. so a third and a ninth. So, a ninth being so he needs to really get this win, doesn't he, to, to get himself up the grid? Depending on what his time attack times are. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Samuel looks, uh, has looked quick all through the weekend. Um, he's managing to slowly bridge the gap to both. Feet. They've got plenty of time. They've got at least now, I would say, four laps probably. What's um, what lap times they doing, Joe? They're about 43 so they're, they're down to 43s, yeah, low yeah. 43s. 40, the, the fastest lap of the race so far, Ellis Borgia, 42.7 mm. is the fastest lap of so this Despite heat. being heavier than a standard road tax car, it just shows you the gearbox gives you a couple. Oh, and there goes Sam. He's going to. Oh, that should be. Basically, he didn't really ask me that by. He said, I'm going past. No, oh, I'm going past. back at him. I'm going past. I've gone past. And uh, you just deal with it. Yeah, well, he was dealing with it because Paul Phillips was coming back at him in fine style. So, Ward now takes the lead. He's got a minute and 26 seconds and a lap. See how that comes over. They're going to get... Well, they're going to be cuspy for two more, aren't they? With a minute 19. Well, they're probably not. They're probably going to get three more. This, this and two more, I think. He's pulled away, hasn't he? He's gone. Sam so, Ward, he's, uh, he's really on form this weekend. And look at that, Harvey Reby coming back at Paul Phillips, the number 18. Yeah. Phillips obviously has the cart set well for the start of the race. And uh, be, as you say, almost certainly be a uh, pressure situation. Tire pressure, rather than personal pressure or psychological pressure. And the 71 of Reby. Now, giving Phillips something to think about as Ward eases away. And his final heat of the cage. You see them again in time attack mode later. Sun gets into that camera, it turns very atmospheric now. Now the sun's right bearing down the, the, the lens. Down the inside, Reby turns into Christmas Corner. The Synergy overall driver, Harvey Reby, now up into second. And Bo Phillips beginning to win ever so slightly. As we get towards the one lap to go board, Sam Ward. Just coming onto the back straight, and Reby, if anything's catching him. Yeah. Now then, eight seconds, four set, two set, one no. set. It's going to be one lap to go. The one lap to go board being readied now. Reby's just found some. Yes, he has. Unbelievable pace. pace. He's massively closed that gap. What was the lap times? 42 7 for Reby there. 43 2. So he's, he has took. We didn't need the stopwatch to tell us he's took a chunk of time there, yeah. do we? He absolutely has. Big Sam got the hurry up then. Sam, yeah, Sam, 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 I'm winning. It's fine. Oh, my lord. Oh, hello. Hello. Who are you? Yeah, I'll go a bit quicker again. It's fine. Yes. Right. 
bright white, purple and blue. Absolutely. Did Sam decide to put the foot down? He's broken that immediately. He's saying, nope, Bobby. No, 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 no. Not involved in that, I can tell you right now. Yeah, Sam Ward has woken up and responded to the advances of Harvey, Re Harvey Reby. Here he comes, though. Sam Ward will take the third heat for KZ. Next time we'll see these carts, it will be for our timed session, our time attack session. Double points awarded for this time attack session coming up. We've got one more heat left, Nick. We've whizzed through the heats this morning. It's been very, very intense. And we've got, if I told you, we're going to don our helmet and get our body armour on because it's the 177s <laughs> out again. Okay. Here we go. One more to go. So one more heat, and then we will go into our time attack session, straight into the time attack session. Time attack session. And we'll uh, talk about session. that when we've got that in front of us. Right now, though, it's all about the final grid of the morning. Uh, time attack will take us up to the lunch break. We've got time attacks for the two junior raw tax classes, the two seniors. In fact, everybody, everybody's going to get Everyone a time attack session time before attack. lunch. It's always a time attack for everybody. Got a massive grid of Rotax 177s out next. Kyle Dunford will start on the pole. Alex Jones alongside. Stuart Dixon and Nick Skelton are on row two. Row three is Nicholas Walker and Joe Pifner. Scott Clay and Tom Eldridge are on row four. Ryan Taylor Truman and Seb Pulpin are on row five. Simon Pugh, Elliot Thomas, row six. Row seven is Peter Jeans and Tom Thompson. Then we've got Colin Campbell and Billy Clark on row eight. Alfie Lawrence and James Yap are on row nine. Louis Large starts on row ten with Oliver Smith alongside. Harrison Crook and Ben Hitch are on row eleven. Callum Porter is back out on row twelve with Will Milner. Then we've got Joshua Pickford and Mark Gilley starting on row thirteen. Scott Smith, Brian McCready on row fourteen, and then rounding off twenty-nine cart field is Jake Lewis. So as ever, uh, we expect a few fireworks. People down the order. Scott Clee starting on seventh on row four. Expect him to uh, come to the fore. Kyle Dunford is no slouch, neither is Alex Jones. So it's going to be another ding-dong, I think, Nick. I would be very surprised it wasn't a ding-dong. A ding-dong merrily on high. So we get the track clear shout up from... Sarah Darlow on the grid. She's released the carts onto the track, and it's Kyle Dunford who starts on this pole position. Alex Jones alongside. Those two just going off there, getting some heat into those tyres. As much heat as you can get is not enough. I want more for this start. More heat, and not. then you then you don't want any more heat because you want to cool down again. Yeah, it'll be lap three before we get the tyres really where we want them, even on a warm and hot day like it is today. Here we go then. Nice slow pace there from Alex Jones and Kyle Dunford. Dunford on the 76. He's the pole man. Showing some battle scars there for what is has been some very intense racing. That is the second place. Alex Jones starting alongside. Here we go. That's a lovely ordered grid there. And we get things going into oblivion. The field goes. It's the 76 of Carl Dunford that gets around the outside and leads through Crooks and up the hill towards Christmas. Yep, great clean start from this final heat of Rotex 177. And it's gone away in grid order. So the first two. Is it Dunford Jones, Dunford? Jones 76 and 78 look very similar on our screens. And they're basically they are in grid order, but they it's are 78. 78. Yeah, it's Alex it's Jones. Jones Dunford, yeah. yeah. And they are battling side by side. Already looking, I wonder who's going to do the dive at the inside of uh, Chapman. The answer is the man in third, Nick, the Nick red Skelton. card. Skelton, the 127. Oh, look at this. Already people not... They're not prepared to just hang about, are they? It's not about championship points. It's all about points and getting up the grid because they need to be at the front of the grid for an all-plate meeting. So we usually get people settling in and just... You know, be happy to gain points towards a championship. It's not about that today, though, Nick. No. It's all about getting up the grid. And there's a move for the for the uh, the front of the field. Nick Skelton. Down the inside of Christmas Corner, the Tech's boot way. They've all got that mystery, haven't they, which is the large amount of points available for the time attack. And none of them really know how far they want to go and clear air. 
So you've got to maximise your point gain in the heats when you can influence everything. And now another... Oh, very poor... I think that was, yeah, that was done. Skelton was the second after a weird bit of a run between uh, Parker and Chapman there by the second place man. As it was, Dumfries just didn't have any drive at all there. Very strange. So as they come across the line, then it'll be two laps completed this time. Yeah, Skelton got the lead there. Jones got two places to the quite a lot of kerfuffle and moving around going on. <laughs> kerfuffle and moving around. But the uh, net effect is it's now Skelton in the 127 who's come through from uh, four or five on the grid. Leads from Dunford and Jones. Scott Clee now, we mentioned for the first time in fourth place. Yeah. Scott yeah. really bearing down very quickly on the 78 of Alex Jones. I would expect him probably to get through relatively, relatively soon. Yeah. yeah, I expect that Scott to uh, short. And we look down the order. Louis Large up to ninth. Nicholas Walker, seventh. Let's have a quick rundown of the top ten while we let this battle unfold. Skelton leads, Dunford, Alex Jones, Scott Clee moving into third now. Ahead of Alex Jones. And that is a change in the order. Ryan Taylor Truman, where is, where is Stuart Dixon going? So Ryan Taylor Truman, fifth. Harrison Crook, sixth. Louis Large up to seventh already. Stuart Dixon, eighth. Ninth is Nicholas Walker. So Nicholas Walker on the triple nine, dropping down the order at the ninth there. James Yap rounding, James Yap rounding off the top ten. Where did Louis start? Louis started in 19th. Yeah, um, big movement forward there. Now we see Skelton not getting away from Dunford at the moment. If you're getting that kind of um, three minutes down, five to go, plus a lap. Joe disappears for some unknown reason. And they come through Ash, uh, through the main start. There they go. 27 from 76. Third place is that car up with the blue overalls of Scott Clee. He's trying to bridge the gap up towards Dunford. On the Lando Norris cart is Scott Clee. With the blue and flory yellowy green uh, sticker kit. Very much the Lando Norris standard. Not one of the uh, court karting teams, but obviously a brand of karting. Obviously the badge engineered, as is the Fernando Alonso and the Charles Leclerc. None of the Formula 1 drivers are actually sitting down in their sheds, welding up chassis. They're all being <laughs> done by a company who goes, can I give you some money to buy a name? Yeah, okay, I'll have some money. Yeah, I like money. Excellent. Probably got a promotional picture of them driving the cart somewhere as well. Very wide, out on the rumble strip goes the 127, Nick Skelton. But what has happened is Clee now is going to join up with this triumvirate at the front. And now he's going to start looking about making a move on Dunford in the all-orange cart with the orange helmet. Very orangey, Mr. Dunford. So Cleese, the third of those three carts. Blue overalls. About to go through Parker. And I'll slip now. There is a chance that you can get a really nice dive here at the inside of Chapman, but that's not really happening. And they carry on running. Down the back straight. Three again. So sussing out what where Dunford's strong where Dunford's weak and the good news him in that sussing out play because Dunford's put a bit of a hurry up and now he's right now to the back of Nick Scales in the top three through Oblivion another lap completed and three minutes and 70 seconds to go yeah clock soon ebbs away Nick Skelton coming under immense pressure now we knew these three would come back together Scott Clay just taking his time just sussing things out on that Lando Norris cart isn't he right on the tail of that orange livery of Kyle Dunford and Dunford likewise doing the same with Nick Skelton. Nick Skelton very, very difficult to overtake though because he's holding some cracking pace. 45 nines last time through. 45 eight for Dunford. Oh, oh and there's Scott Clay having a look towards the boot. First the left-hander, then the double apex le uh, right-hander. The second right-hander. Oh, and there's Scott Clay looking down the inside towards the final turn. It's a bit tricky there. He had to back out of that one though. Discretion, certainly the better part of Valor at that part of the track. We've seen what can happen there, haven't we? You yeah. know what can I happen there, there, yeah. Yeah. End up off the track. Oh, and Scott Clay down oh. the inside. It's a late... Oh, and he got wiped. Ooh. Christmas corner is a late apex because of that kink on the exit. So you leave the door open and Scott Clay just didn't quite have the momentum to to, get it, to carry that into the braking area mid-corner. Yeah, and, he, and he, he, actually you'd see he his nose wiped because he actually applied the brake and then he lost... Uh, he had to. He, he had to, yeah. Two or three tenths there just to avoid being... Well, good driving because he avoided the contact there, didn't he? Mm. You know, he didn't just let himself sort yeah. of slide into his, his opponent. I think he's um, got a bit of a tap on that front left, so hopefully he hasn't arranged anything. We'll see. It's spaced them out, though, this squabble. 
this recent squabble. First, second and third there through Oblivion. And there's Louis Large in fourth, Harrison Crook fifth. Just behind them in the background there, Louis Large, Harrison Crook, Ryan Taylor Truman. They've got a, a bit of a battle of three carts there for fourth, fifth and sixth. This is the battle for the lead though. Skelton, Dunford, Clee. Clee finding his composure once again to maybe mount another challenge at Dunford, but Dunford's no slouch and he knows he's going to be coming. But these three absolutely on the limit of their carts here, so very, very difficult. Very, very difficult to mount an overtake. It's very difficult to keep up with them. Yeah, Nick, exactly, yeah. Let alone try and pass them. Yeah, you've got, you're, you're at 99 tenths. Not nine tenths, yes. ninety nine tenths yeah. of keeping up, Absolutely. and then you've got to find your hundredth tenth yes. to get past. But you've I got to find a hundred and one. Oh, that's a bit that's naughty. That's it. Now. Yeah, that's not great from Kyle. Mm. Um, I'm not. I'm not quite sure how deliberate it was. I think he, when, he, when he actually did that, it was quite shocked. I think to find Clee there. Went, oh, <laughs> Maybe. I think. He, he, I think he'd taken the, the idea. What I'll do is I'll take the defensive line into Christmas, and then found. Oh, Clee, oh, he's doing it. Oh, yeah, he's that. yeah, I think. You're so right. I think he probably was a little bit surprised. Anybody? I don't think I'd particularly call. Cool foul on that I might yeah, call it advised yes but misunderstanding because it is it's happening very very quickly yeah it, we're, we're watching that as we're padding that shot towards us it's also slow and serene because it's just the camera's locked in the paint these guys do 70 miles an hour yeah three inch, two inches from the ground yeah exactly small applications of steering now we've got Scott Clee who knows how exactly how long there is to go in this race it'll be the last lap to go there but next goes. time by down the inside at Christmas and there he makes that move Look very, very but easy. Who's, the back of the, who's on the back? Louis Large. Louis Large in fourth. Because they've been swapping positions, Louis Large has gained that gap back. Mm. And the number two now on the back of Kyle Dunford. If Dunford's not I careful, he's, he's going to lose that lose third place. Move. No, it, it is going to be last lap next time round. I think Scott Clee's absolutely safe. He's pulling away. What's Large going to do? So Louis. White and red cart for Louis Large. Oh, and now he's apex. coming the inside. The inside. Straight That's through into third place. So large from 19th on the grid, third now, I Joe. That was all about how he went through the the boot section there and he got the acceleration, managed to get the, the throttle on earlier. We've got all sorts of things kicking off behind Louis now with Kyle Dunford. He's got Harrison Crook and Ryan Taylor Truman absolutely all over him. Now then, with not much of this race left, half a lap, we've got Scott Clee. He's checked out. We've got Nick Skelton in second. Louis Large, I think, has run out of time. There's the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. That one's not over. Kyle Dunford looks like he might have this. They come together, three of them attached to one another, it seemed. And then across the line, Scott Clay takes the win. Nick Skelton second. Louis Large finishes in third from 19th. He'll be happy with that. Kyle Dunford fourth. Harrison Crook fifth. Ryan Taylor Truman sixth. And then we've got James Yap, Callum Porter, Callum up from 23rd, the Dan Holland Racing Mechanic up from 23rd to 9th, Ben Hitch 10th, and then we've got Scott Smith, Oliver Smith, Joe Piffner, Jake Lewis, Nicholas Walker, Mark Gilly 16th, Peter Jean 17th, 9th, 18th was Tom Thompson, then Stuart Dixon 19th, Elliot Thomas in 20th. Yeah, good. Scott Cleese started seventh as well. So that's a good run to first. So well, yeah, big and you know what? Gained. If if I was a betting man, I would have put my money on Scott Clay from that position to be able to to challenge for the lead, because he has been. He's he showed great pace, not just here, pretty much across the whole season. So um, uh, but that'll be he'll be happy with that. So that concludes the heats, everybody. Mm -hmm. it, we have not concluded the formation of our grids for the final, no. however. We've got our time attacks. And if we've got time attack, what does that mean? It means it's Gazbury time. Bury time. But it's not Gazbury with a chair time. It's just Gazbury time. Oh, you're not, um, me, you get, you're, you're not relinquishing your chair. No, I've got chair. you're going to have a lie down. Do. Oh, yeah. So there's yeah, so time attack is about to come. It's um, to talk us through time attack and talk about the personality time attack and talk all things time attack. But just be very careful. No one's shouting. He's a bit delicate. It's Gazbury. Yeah, wife's birthday last night. Not exactly perfect preparation for a day's karting, even if you are just talking about it. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm there. Uh, I'm more right. energy, I'm guys. More energy, <laughs> mate. More energy. Come on. Does he have more energy? More energy. I'll have a coffee, please. Will's gonna. <laughs> Will's gonna give me the grids. What you got for me, Will? Current standings. Ooh, Excellent awful. stuff. Right. What we got out? Time attack. Six minutes. Junior it's a time. Attacks. It's a time session, guys. It is. 
and we're going to award points for the quickest down to last. Yep, and they're double points this morning. Double points. The they points are. go towards the grid. They do, later on this afternoon. I was uh, prowling the paddock, as I do in the mornings, and um, interesting about the tyres. A lot of the drivers are saying they're only coming on at the very end of the time attacks, giving them really one full hot lap. Yeah, different mindset, this. Mm. The last thing you want to be doing is finding someone to race with. Yeah. And the thing you want to be doing is, hang on a second... different mindset the last thing you want is to be tripping over somebody yeah as and we saw yesterday wasn't it quite frequently in fact yeah in juniors, absolutely in fact. yeah and it, it's so easy though that because you know these guys are uh, these guys and girls are here to race and when you find somebody to race usually that's what you do instinctively <laughs> yes but you've got to get your mindset it's about timed it's about the f against the clock you're battling the clock not yeah. not the competitor on the uh, that you'll be side on the track yeah. Not a problem for Nick Ellis at the moment, leading the way. First out of the pit lane, first hot lap ish, a 48.9. Only going to be a benchmark at this baton, though, isn't it? Well, currently it's Freddie, Freddie Ingram. I've been, uh, Will's been great and handed me the current standings. Okay. Um, we haven't got Freddie out there at the moment. Harry Hannum, he's not out there at the moment, so they are yeah. coming next. Nick Ellis is fourth Nick on Ellis points. Nick Ellis is fourth on points currently. Um, and is still at the top of the table. Jaden Hewitt. He's ninth currently. That's more With number 25, Jaden Hewitt there. Currently ninth going into this session. Ninth on the grid, that will be. And the number 25 there, absolutely on the limit using all of that curve, wasn't he? And some. And again, that dip always makes me shiver when I see carts over that. You really one. love that dip, don't you? Oh, Does it bring back memories? Bad ones. Chains, <laughs> bent sprockets, you name it. It's horrible. The problem is, and that's between that's between Parker and Chapman, isn't it? Yes, that downhill. You do tend to use a lot of the because there's a shortcut there, there through a I think the shorter version of the circuit, isn't it? So you tend to lean out there quite a bit, and normally half a car at least over that white line. And because you need to use all the track. Yeah, yeah. Right, who we got now? We're looking at the number 19 of Harry Hannum. Yes, we are. Now he's been going really well this weekend. Yeah. And he's had some great, great drives in the heats. He's currently second quickest. Yeah. 45.5. He's got to find 88 thousandths of a second to go quicker than Marcel Popical, yep. who's just gone quickest. Still got half a session, though, to do it. So the tyres should be coming on song now. And apparently it's quite grippy this morning as well. Other drivers have been saying this. You can see cars hopping everywhere, aren't they? Do you think that's because if we've had the super, the 100 supers are on Vegas? Yeah, Vega White's there running. And also the KZs are on a, a, yeah, um, a Leconte Le, Le tyre, which again... Not softer compounds, I believe. Softer compounds, certainly the Vegas are. Yes. Um, so invariably we might have that uh, become a factor. We, we've, we've even had, and I've yet to have it confirmed, lap records in the 177. Really? Abs overall absolute lap records for milk in the 177. We need to go and find that yeah. today. Is that 77? I don't know, Joel Bullen? Oh, yes. It is, Joel Bullen. So, Joel Bullen coming into this session, 19th on the overall grid for Junior Rotax. Trying to pick out these numbers is so difficult when the sun It is, but I mean, the it? sun's beautiful. It's a beautiful day. It's per perfect conditions for any kind of motorsport. Oh, all over the curves, isn't it? You've got I to do say, that there, I've Every you? inch of road, yeah. Yeah. You used have to be a concrete that. strip once. Oh, every time I think now. Like no, no, I've made it. I was out there on uh, Friday night. It's very, very rough. Ooh. Not somewhere you want to be too often, then. No, <laughs> not at all. That's the 91 of Finley Patterson, who is currently 12th quickest here in this session. Finley Patterson, 16th on the grid going into this session. Not a bad showing out of 37 drivers. Yeah, that's not bad in the midfield for Finley. Not a bad place to be for later on, is it? Anything can happen later. What this time session enabled us to do was just perhaps study, study the way that people are driving around the track. And an interesting, guys, for me, is the way that the drivers have found themselves some space to be able to circulate yep. alone. They've certainly learned quite quickly from yesterday when they were falling over each other on more, more than one occasion, I think. Yeah, we'll yes. leave that for the heat. Yeah, ideally. Well, well, actually, the next time we see these, these boys and girls race, 
Um, it's going to be for the B final and the and then on into the year final and oh, the heats have been intense. There's a B final today as well. Yes, oh. there is. Yeah, just that be many a pure, drivers. Pure numbers. Yeah. Let's see if they will turn up or they decide to go home early. Now we do, we will get an element of people helping one another around, and these three carters mm. there on our screens and somebody backing out there. I think that's the 41, Daniel, Daniel Whitfield, Whitfield on that red red yeah. cart. Yeah, backing out, knowing that that's not the way to do this. Inside the final 30 seconds. The six-minute sessions here for Time Attack yep. absolutely just disappear. As the number one Presley ten. Walker. Presley Walker is currently 10th on the grid coming into this session. And he's currently 7th in the timings here. 45-3, his quickest time. 45-3 coming on lap number 6. So the previous lap to this one. He's on his eighth flying lap now, with the chequered flag flying. Yeah. I'll be able to give you a rundown of who's quickest in this time attack. Across the line the last time. It's, it's still always up to third. Good lap by oh, Presley Walker at the end there. Brilliant. Finley Underwood as well. 44-8 on a junior Rotax. Honestly, oh, these guys are that's flying. Grippy, isn't it? So Finley Underwood, 48-8. 48.873 came on lap six. He went quickest there. Harry Hannum, second quickest, 45.061. Presley Walker, 45.079. And then we've got Marcel Popacul in fourth, 45.090. That's how close they are. Nicholas Ellis was fifth on a 45.135. Jaden Hewitt was sixth on a 45.2. Billy Edgecombe, seventh on a 45.254. Freddie Moore, eighth on a 45.350. Then we've got Daniel Whitfield on a 45.366. Joel Bullen on a tenth, on tenth, I should say, in the 77, on a 45.381. 45.4 for Louis Reese. 45.400 to be exact. Lightning Jack Dimbleby, 45.410. Finley Patterson, 45.536. Then we've got Louis Llewellyn, Owen Keenan, Josh Della Carter, Frank Ward, and Abdurrahman Sheikh. Rounds off the times of the 48-2. It's close, isn't it? It's Very. absolutely close. We've got our second group of junior road decks, so I'll put that sheet back. Just trying to figure out where if I was. A 44-8 by Finley Underwood. Oh, that's as fast as 177 were going yesterday, wasn't it? That's insane. I, I mean, that. <laughs> all right, they're, they're very similar mm. in in power, but they are, they're supposed to be slower. They're supposed to be. They're Nobody's supposed told to be slower, that, yeah, they? yeah. Boys and girls, it's supposed to be slower. <laughs> Good effort by all of them to be that fast. Now then, our current provisional pole sitter for the final, Freddie Ingram, yes. is out in this one. Mm. Keep an eye on him, is he? Ari Hannam, who left. is provisionally second, um, he's just been out. And Kasper Tomalewski, he's currently third provisionally. Nicholas Ellis, provisionally fourth. Billy Edgecombe, provisionally fifth. I say it provisionally because the points from this time attack goes towards the grid formation. Yep. Still a lot to play for. What have we got? Up towards Christmas Corner. What number is that one? 69. Freddie That's Freddie Ingram. That's our provisional Paul sitter. Let's watch Freddie for a little bit here. Again, loads of clean air. Not getting caught up in traffic. The drivers seem to be preferring the front of the field and getting on with it rather than messing about. Well, that's Joshua Withcombe who's gone with Freddie. He's, uh, these two carts are, we know how quick they are. Yeah, Josh mm. being six overall at the moment on points. Good place to be following Freddie. Yeah. Crossing the line, Freddie Ingram's time. <coughs> Not quite quick enough. In fact, Joshua Withcombe goes quicker. 46.093 for Joshua Withcombe. Freddie Ingram, 46.125. So the tour that, jo uh, that Freddie Ingram was giving Joshua Withcombe absolutely worked. Yeah. As Maxim Smith there on the 31. Shadowing both the Josh and Fred in front of him. He's making current. most of that, isn't he? Yeah, third quickest in this session. Where is he in the order on the grid? He's way, is he way down? Yes, he's way down, 25th. Mm. Not sure how he... Nice. Yeah. Currently, this won't do him any damage at all, will it? No, he's uh, he's up there. He's going to gain some great points. Alex Fraser 
currently Chapter. fifth as well. That's the 31 just crossing the line now. So Maxim Smith. Three flying laps for Maxim Smith. That was a 46.075. Freddie Ingram's gone quicker still, Gaz. 45.526 for Freddie. Has he pulled from? He has pulled away from Josh, doesn't he? A little bit. See yeah. out the window. Yeah, Josh Withcombe, he, he went quicker still, 45.737. He's trying his best to keep up with him, isn't he? Who's top of the list at the moment? Kasper Tomalewski. Tomalewski. Yeah. He's dropped that in from nowhere, isn't he? Where's he come from? Where he was he? up there. He was oh, up he's there. Up he's there. current oh, third. He he's, quite, he's provisionally third on the grid. The 119 is Billy booked. Billy is just trying to look down the order. Where is Billy? Billy's down in 28th. So he'll be desperately needing to gather some points to improve his grid position. Using Oh, look how much Kirby was using there on the exit of Crooks. All of it and some, I think. Absolutely. Look on, on the edge he is on the braking there, oh. just firing the cart into Christmas. Into Ashby. It's a downhill, not quite a hairpin. Feels very tight, though. Mm. But it opens up on the exit, doesn't it? Very so deceiving. You think you can take a bit more speed in there than you, uh, than you need to. Draws you in. Great corner. Great for overtaking as we've seen so far this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Momentum out of Inkermans. Yep. Carry that towards the breaking area. So there's the 23. Caius Zygmanta. Zygmanta. Caius Zygmanta. We, yep. we speak to Caius in our paddock show. And he's new to NKC. Maybe on a bit of a, a research mission this weekend. Mm. Checking out the NKC regs and tyres, etc. The 155 Mitchell is... Mulvey. Yeah, now we've yep. seen how quick Mitchell is during race conditions, but here we are. Time attack conditions here for Mitch. Head down and get on with it. Where is it at the moment? Is Where are you? 11th on the points at the moment, so yeah, he's not bad. No? Not doing any harm to his efforts today, is he, at the moment? Where is he? He's currently he's fifth. fifth. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's doing all right. Freddie Ingram's just jumped back to the top of the sheets. 44.847. See, again, a minute to go, and they're now putting their quickest look, laps look in the Look at that, though, guys. 44.847, 44.868, Joshua oh. Withcomb. He's doing well to hang on, isn't he, Josh? Yeah. He's, he's, he's there. He's in contention for quickest in this session. Yep. He's going faster and faster each time by. I'm saying that. He backed off there. <laughs> 45 dead was a back off. <laughs> yeah, whatever. He had a lift. Yeah. yeah. Saving his tyres for another go. <laughs> the number 30... Just following, is that the number 30 I see there? Just following that black and yellow livery on the oh, round. 36. 36. Vlad Tominchuk. Yeah. So Tominchuk. Another TKR driver. Quite a big team we've got. Yeah, they the have. They're, they're well, drivers, represented, I think. well represented this weekend in the Oakley. Tominchuk's time uh, is good for ninth at the moment. And he's another driver that wasn't quite better. as quick. Ellis Warlock oh, jumping over through Inkerman's. So bumpy through there. Very easy to get the car unsettled and have a bit of a lose a lot of momentum through there and give up positions during the race. Well, losing momentum and, and, and spoiling your lap time. Quite at the moment, yeah. Yeah. Freddie Ingram and Joshua Withcombe have took a checkered flag. That's the end of their session. And at the moment, Freddie Ingram is the quickest in the session. A 44.665. He puts another couple of tenths so fast. on the board. Yeah, absolutely. Joshua Withcombe currently second. We still want. We still wait for Kama Tobolewski to finish. He has. So Joshua Withcombe second. 44.868. Oh, look at that. He's matched his time so exactly. So, 44.868 on lap five for Joshua Withcomb. Kasper Tomalewski, 44.868, exactly the same time. Brilliant. Down to the thousandth, <laughs> but it came two laps earlier. What have I done there? Press the buttons again, Joe. I have. I've done it. Oh, I've done Where it. does that put uh, Tomalewski and Withcomb on the grid, though? They're tying on Are they tying on points or not? <laughs> I've gone to Mitchell Mulvey. What have you done? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Well, I, you, guys, I am not going to work out that grid Ives. from those times. What I can tell you is Freddie Ingram was fastest in that time attack. 
with that 44.665. Yep. A massive, massive time there. Joshua Withcombe was second quickest. Kasper Tomaleski was third. Uh, Mitchell Mulvey, not far off with a 44.956, was fourth. Then we have Maxim Smith in fifth. Sixth quickest was Alex Fraser. Seventh quickest was Billy Vogt. And then we had Alfie Bushel, Vlad Tomanchuk. Tenth was Kaya Zygmanta. Jill Everton out here with the gold team and Paul Ozan. He was 11th. We're already getting things underway, so we're going to lose our time attack for Junior Rotax. They've concluded their session. Their grid is formed. We'll have more information on that when we get it. Right now, Rotax Max standings are Seniors. currently on the provisional pole position is Kieran Givett with Philip mm. Howarth alongside and he had a great heat as well didn't he brilliant yeah. driving this morning yeah they were that was a cracking heat it was very very intense very with with nothing to play for other than points yeah but all counts though and Kieran I think Kieran started a long way down as well so that was a great drive for him to come through the field like he did so let's see how this one transpires Whoa. we will Try and keep you posted as to who's quickest. Yep. Jensen Watts. Oh, hello. Somebody stranded on the way up the hill, look. It looks like Matthew Lambert in the, dip, in the background. But, uh, yeah, Jensen Watts, first out of pit lane. Jensen Watts, what was he like back here? He's uh, the last two rounds, wasn't it? Is he, he, yeah, he won at Mansell, I think, didn't he? Wilton he won Mill, at Wilton. Mansell, yeah. He's, yeah. Been, he's been formidable. Um, for the last two rounds of the, of the Junction 6 season. He has, yeah. He a, didn't have a, did he have a DNF yesterday, I think? That was not going to help him, but he's certainly not going to be slow later on. So they've completed one lap. That's not <coughs> really going to be their optimum lap, what we're seeing there. The 93 Jensen Watts, we've talked about quite a lot. Yep. Oli Varney, Philip Howarth, Kieran Gifford at the moment at the top. All familiar names that you see at the sharp end. Yeah, Alex Moody up there with yeah. a 45.9 on his second flyer. We, Matthew uh, Lambert. We're only two minutes in, so plenty of time. Marcus King just pops up the seventh there on the LRG Motorsport cart. Cart 26. Alex McGee pops forward. Philip Howard back up to second <laughs> with a 45.4. Thick and fast We've now, got Jensen it? Watts on the 36.2. He's That's skipped not an awful lot. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. missed out half a lap there, yeah. so we'll, uh, that was we'll his lap to one. catch up. Yeah, we'll wait for that. 45.6 is a more representative time, which yep. puts him in third place. So we'll wait for that. My anomaly Lambert jumps up to seventh across the strike. Who's He's that, sorry? Matthew Lambert. He's seventh overall in points. That's not going to do him any, any harm either. Is that George, George Sanders? There he is. George in the 56, letting everybody by, looking for some air. Or quite possibly looking for Phil Howarth, who's just about to come up behind him. Right, so he's going to be now picking up speed. He's backed off to let some carters by. We'll keep with the 56 for a little while and see just how George uh, goes about this. He's picking up speed towards the end of the lap. It'll be the next lap that counts for George Sanders. With three minutes, so halfway through this time attack. Yep. And here we go, okay, out of the boot. Oh. Through the final turn, pits bend, using a bit of curb, not too much curb, yeah. which is always the right way. Look at all the track he used on the right there <laughs> all of it. to maximise his entry into Oh, oblivion. there's a power slide now. Who was that in the 20? Oh, uh, he knows it as well yeah, as Costin. he knows it. That's uh, Hayden Phillips. Yep. George Sanders is just behind him, I think, on the road. We were watching George in that orange cart. We've lost him. Let's stay with oh, the 20. Yep. Hayden Phillips down to the, uh, the double lefts yeah again they're using all of that god it makes me nervous that does do oh. you've got to use it though oh, you've, you've, you've got to yeah. just ride that pump out and hope for the best into the boot first left now right gets the power on acceleration zone keep it flat through the final turn kisses the apex with that front right ever so slightly across yeah. the stripe and he's gone he stays in 11th actually yeah George Sanders though who we were looking at a short while ago he's improved to th uh, to 7th was well, 6th for a moment there yeah now down to 7th 44-9 look at all the carts in the 44s incredible 44 look at the difference in their pace one tenth of a second covers 6 drivers I don't think they're together on circuit either so that's all just down to them doing what they're doing 
Will's aware that Jensen Watts' his quickest time is a 36. The last game, I mention it. Let's have a look at... With a minute to go then, the time attack, we're going to see if we can rectify that anomaly on the timing screens. With... Phil Howarth on a 44-619. Ollie Goodyear on a 44. Oh, and that's Kieran Gifford, 44-444 for Kieran Gifford. So, Kieran Gifford already on the provisional pole, Gaz. Again, right at the last, he dropped it in. Yeah, it's now Jensen Watts has actually dropped the fourth now that we've cleared that. 44 6 7 6. Still not a slow lap run, no, so. Yeah, 44 no, 6. It's not, it's not at all. So Gifford, Howard, Goodyear, Watts, Varney, McGee, Lyons, Moody, Sanders, Mills. That's your top 10. 44 4 4 4 for Kieran Gifford. Now that's the number 26. Marcus King. Yeah, Marcus is currently 15th in the moment? session. Yeah. I'm um, going to see where he is. He's down here on the back. He's had some bad Ooh. luck. He's, he's right at the back of the grid. He's in the B final at the moment. Has he not finished the heat? Or? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but he's going to be in the B final and he'll not want that. He'll want to try and get himself up the order, maybe. Let's see what he can do here across the strap. Using all the road into Crooks and Oblivion and he's does he improve I think he stayed where he did yes he did did he improve in time no he didn't right check the flag then it's Kieran Gifford just comes through and he goes even quicker 44.362 44.362 for Kieran Gifford that's the quickest time of the session Phil Howarth will finish on a 44.525 Jensen Watts up to third. Finally pulled it out of the bag. 44-619. Ollie Goodyear fourth. A 44-658. And then we had Ollie Varney. A 44-713. Alex McGee. 44-883. 44-885 for Archie Lyons in seventh. Alex Moody. 44-963. 44-988 is George Sanders in ninth. Ryan Mills is tenth on a 44-993. And uh, we then go Matthew Lambert. In 11th, Hayden Phillips is 12th. Joseph McVeigh, Dan Andrews, Marcus King ended up 15th. Alex Jackson, Jake Richards and Sam May rounded off the 18-cart field. So we stay with uh, senior, senior Rotax, the 162 class, for now. Uh, with their second group about to come out for their time attack. And with Kieran Gifford on the pole position, going fastest there and gathering double points. I think that's going to be Kieran Gifford on the pool. I think it might be, and a very good chance for him to secure an O-plate later on. But let's not curse it just yet and no, see no, no, what unfolds later. Let's, yeah, let's see how that transpires, eh? Mm. We've got Braden Hill in this, a 35. He's looking pretty handy this weekend so far. Third overall in points. Knows the circuit quite well. He's spent a bit of time here just recently. He's, yeah, he was um, very much at the front in juniors last year, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. One of the major players, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely was, yeah. Got himself yeah. in a bit of traffic there. Don't think he's going to be too happy about that. Well, we fight. I mean, they're all going to pour out of the collecting area together, aren't they? Yeah. And you know, we'll uh, we'll see them come through. There you go. When we change the picture As and get a grasp of where they are on track, so. we'll let them fan out there and pick up somebody and watch them through. That's Evie the Poulain. Evie Poulain. Let's stay mm. with Evie. Super fast this weekend so far as well, from what I've seen. She has. She's gone really, really, really well. Uh, and race conditions as well. She's mm. raced really well as Evie. Yeah, she's been good. Let's stay with Evie now. That distinctly bright yellow stripe through the pink. It certainly stands out, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Easy to pick out. Oh, God. Into Ashby's. Oh, Ooh, look at another curb there. Just kisses the grass on the way out. Yeah, a bit e of wiggle on the way in there. Oh, and going go across that Gaz's curb. bump. That curb. Gaz's bump. Oh. Gaz Bury's bump, that, that one. Yeah. Honestly. Uh, out towards the boot, we'll get a good close-up here from Ash's camera. Evie fighting the wheel there, just... It's working really hard, yeah, isn't she? getting the car to turn, and then through the final turn, pitch bend. A bit of oversteer on turning. Scandinavian flick style, very good. And Evie's time, 
for a second there took it to the top of the screen 46 0 46 where it's Braden Hill who's done a 45 4 5 straight two. out of the box and one first flying lap Alex Warnaby 45 6 6 3 yep there's the 45 of Archie Elliott Archie currently in where is Archie's 12th at the moment 12th position yep. after that one lap one proper lap yeah I mean, and that's done, it isn't it this is their third flying lap we are inside four minutes remaining Braden Hill's coming up really fast oh Archie Elliott's cart there absolutely went sideways as he turned into the boot I'm not sure too much nail brake pedal yeah <laughs> That's the number 35 of Braden Hill What's just following point? Archie through. Through Crooks now. Braden Hill's going to get a bit of a, a tour so here. Yeah, yeah. Is he going to go? Even quicker. Ooh. Oh, no, he doesn't, does he? Snap over this there. He needs to get by there, doesn't he, really, to keep, a, keep yeah, his gonna pace be, up. He's going to be stifled now as Braden Hill currently at the top of the screens. And this is the thing now, isn't it? Because ahead of him, you've got Evie just a little bit up the road. So what do you do with half the session you get him? Oh, he's gone through it anyway. Yeah, you go. he knew he had But it. do you lift off? Do you go for the move? <clears throat> right, let's stay with this one, Paul, because this is the guy who's quickest at the moment. And Braden Hill currently third on the grid. He's going to need to go quicker than Phil Howarth did to get more points to improve his grid position. And he's broken free now of the carts behind him. He's got a bit of clean air. So we're going to see an optimised lap here from Braden Hill on the 35. Into the Ashby right-hander. He'll use all of the kerb and a little bit more there. <laughs> a little bit grass on board. Just being greedy now, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that bump. Gosh. Gaz's bump through Chapman. Getting probably towards the final stages of the lap. It's probably not as bad as I remember it being, but you still I don't me. think it is. I think <laughs> you're exaggerating, Gaz. You've been dramatic again. Yeah. Here it's we go. Raining. Here we go. You look at how much track he's using. <laughs> look at how much curb. It loves it, doesn't he? Yeah, let's see where it is. Yeah. All over the white line. 44 5 4 1 for Braden Hill. That's the quickest time in this time attack. And he consolidates that top slot. Doing a fantastic. He's straight up to the back of Evie as well, isn't he? He's not not hanging about this afternoon. He's not. Look at the ground he's made on Evie Poulin. And it, that Evie's no slouch as well. She's, oh, yeah, she's, she's currently fifth. 45058. And once again, Braden Hill will. will got, uh, got to make a choice now. Is he going to back out of it with one flying lap to go? So, with a minute and a half just clicked by the 90 seconds remaining. Oh, he's lifted out, look. He's, he has, he's, he knew. He knew what to do. Yeah, he had. Clever, clever, intelligent driving by Braden. Yeah. Last year, quite frequently, oh. to be fair. Right, who we got? The number Reece, 30. Reese Pope, 38. Reece, 38, is it? Right, Reese Pope. Where's Reese Pope? He is currently a seventh. So he's inside the top 10 in this session. He's last lap by there, 45095. And we can see he's really, really on the limit there, certainly on the brakes into Christmas. <coughs> he's into Chapman now, heading towards the boot complex that's the left hander turns it in uses all the curb just checks the oversteer very nicely gets back on the throttle all of the track there on the left being used that's for number 74 What's Jake this? Dennis just sorry Jake Davis Jake Davis yeah, uh, driver of the day wasn't it Not a couple of rounds ago uh, yeah man so took a hit on the head didn't he been upside down, I think, wasn't it, in the, one of the hits. Now, Jake's outgrowing that junior cart, isn't he? Oh, sorry, the, uh, the senior. that senior cart. He's getting taller, I think. <laughs> he is. Look at his knees. Only 16 as well, I believe. So tall. Where is he? Where is he in points, Joe? I tell you who we haven't seen. Where is... Oh, no. Sorry. Sorry. Wrong class. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Stand down. Stand down. Stand, Stand down. down. Get all excited again. Check it flag. Probably best. <laughs> Check it flag flies then, and that is time attack sessions completed yep. for senior all tax. Great Hill top of the sheets currently with a 44 5 yeah. 4 1. That will stay. That I will stay so. right there. It came on lap five. Uh, Matthew Herbert was second quickest right at the very end there, 44.576. Then we've got a 44-820 for Tommy Lee Davis in third. Aidan Rudge is fourth 
on a 44.860. Alex Wannabe, fifth on a 44.941. And then we've got Evie Poulin, who ended up sixth. Evie's fastest time, 44.963. Uh, Toby Case was seventh on a 45.010. And then we've got uh, Brody Trehorn, eighth. Ninth is Reese Pope. Tenth is Jake Davis. Archie Elliott, eleventh. Scott Goolsby, twelfth. Jimmy Rogers, thirteenth. Matt Lewin, fourteenth. Michael Gold- Goodburn was 15th, Tom Patterson 16th and Mohammed bin Mahfouz was rounding off this field in 17th. We'll have the full classified grid order for you when we get towards the B finals. Um, right now though, it's Minimax's turn for their time attack session. And we've got still a few time attacks to get through. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We've got Senior TKM for their time attack coming next. Then we go into KZ and then the two 177 groups, which is really, really going to get intense, I think, when we start racing again. Um, but time attack is what it's all about. So Minimax current standings. Sonny Morgan on the provisional pole. Andrew Dixon alongside. Daniel Hartley. Harris Roberts fourth. Eddie Stewart fifth. Lucy Lovell is sixth. Daniel Parsons seventh. Max Colton eighth. And then Riley Thatcher running off the nine cart field. Let's see if this time attack changes that order. That's what time attack's all about here at the Oak Plate. Interesting that Sonny's going to at the very back as well this time round. He was first out, I think, last time, wasn't he, yesterday? He let everybody out. Who's that, sorry? Sonny Morgan. Yeah, he's sixth out, sixth out of the box in this one. Carts are out. They're on their first lap. Uh, they haven't come past the pits yet. And when they do come past the pits, that will be their first flyer. The driver there at the front of the field, number 25, is Andrew Dixon. And he certainly means business. Ducking his head down behind that steering wheel just to reduce the airflow. Yeah, and again, there he goes again. Line. Through Crooks and Oblivion. I think flat out in the junior road tax line as well. His tyres are very good. I think they're flat out in the seniors. Are they? Yeah, I think so. Maybe Man. a little bit dab on the brake just I to wouldn't. settle it, but I've just been doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, the curve through and commence. If anyone knows whether that's correct, flat out through that section, Oblivion and Crooks, please tell us what 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 exactly are we doing? Yeah, there in the senior on a, road on a senior on a, in the senior classes, and even in the junior classes as well. So Minimax, we think definitely. Um, and we saw the momentum, guys, so they, they are slower because they're not using as much curb on the exit. Mm. Let's see what the first times are posted then. This is the first fly is. Four, the table. 48-1. Eddie Stewart, 48-2. 48-2-5-1. Daniel Hartley, 48-2-8-5. Lucy Lovell. Harris Roberts, 47-8. Uh, sorry, 47-9-8-7. Harris quick. Roberts goes quicker. He was quickest yesterday as well, wasn't he, I think? Yeah, he's Looking good over the one lap, isn't he? Mm. Still four minutes to go, though. Can he keep it? Time will tell. Well, he's going to go quicker and quicker as his tyres come up because the tyres aren't even up to temperature yet. Is he stuck in the traffic there? No, there he is. Oh, yeah. he's no, he's not, actually, because Andrew Dixon's got a lot of pace. The 63 of Daniel Hartley is the car we're looking at right now. And he's... I knew they were three minutes somewhere. Yeah, car using all the curb a little bit sideways Hartley third Lucy fit. Lovell top who's that Lucy Lovell just jumped to the top of the timing table yeah and there's Lucy there on the 16 yeah making good use of the slipstream oh, the wiggle into the hairpin that 47 3 8 5 that was Christmas it was Christmas that's Ashby that is Ashby I knew this happened somewhere you're suffering still aren't a little you? bit yeah. <laughs> is it evident yeah <laughs> <laughs> drink water oh, what yeah. you doing to. Yeah, Lucy's going to have a lap time stifled there because the number 63, Daniel Hartley, not meaning to get in the way. He's, he's, well, he's focusing he's on his lap time as well. And this is it, isn't it? Time attacks, you've got to get on with it. Don't worry about anybody else. If they're yep. quick enough, they will overtake you. But um, yeah, it looked like Lucy did bump him coming into the, uh, into the Chapman left-hander. Andrew Dixon, 47-115. Eddie Stewart, who is the cart there on number 45, Eddie Stewart. Joined us in the commentary booth, didn't he? He showed us that that he's got uh, he's not just talented behind the wheel, he's talented behind the microphone yesterday as well. And Eddie, he goes to second quickest in this session. He is currently fifth on the grid for the final of Minimax. Let's just stay with Eddie now on the 45. He's got a bit of 
space to continue and not be stifled in any way. His current time of 47.166. Let's see how close he gets to that one. All the road. Yeah, all that curve on that left hand there. All of it. Across the stripe he goes and improves in time. Cracking that from Eddie. 47 1. He's getting there, isn't he? As you say, as the tyres are coming on, the time's whittling down. I think he's getting faster and faster. As we're getting towards the last 90 seconds of this time attack session for Minimax. Max That's Galton. Seventh at the moment at the very back, actually. Yeah, Max Galton How's is uh, just finding his feet, really. And to think, to be last, he's only half a second off the front. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. That's how, that's how competitive it is, though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, half a second is nothing, especially here at Wilton Mill. There's so yeah. many areas where you can lose and gain time. It's a very big track, isn't it? Here? Yeah. Which is, which is five more seconds as well. Lots, of elements to, lots of elements to it. Yeah, definitely. Not like uh, a Three Sisters or a Mansi. So into the final one minute then. And using all of the curb there. That was a cracking exit of Crooks. 43 there. Harris Roberts currently fourth on the grid. Let's stay with this one, Paul, into the last minute because I think this is going to be a blinder. He was absolutely you mullered that curb on the exit. Muller's that curb on the exit of Ashby. Takes the grass he, with him as well. He, he, has to, he has to ask for a ticket <laughs> to get back in, doesn't he? Doesn't he, he there with to. that one? Into yeah, Chapman. The other side, yeah. Sonny Morgan shadowing as well. This will yeah. help Sonny with a little bit of a toe if he was just close enough coming into the boot. He's on him now, isn't he? After this lap, Ooh, we'll get one more lap, aren't they? Yeah, we'll watch Sonny Morgan. Sonny Morgan, who is currently on the provisional pole. Now... Harris Roberts there didn't go as quick as he has. He wasn't far off, but not quite quick enough. Sonny Morgan, he went quicker still. Yeah. And Sonny... Harris has let him by. Yeah, he's let him by. Yeah. So 46.721 for Sonny Morgan. So that's his quickest lap there, just gone by. And I think he was maybe picking up a bit of a tour. That helped. Mm -hmm. Now he's got clear air. The checkered flag fly. So this is his last chance here. So provisional pole sitter, Sonny Morgan, is currently second in this session and Andrew Dixon is ahead of him so 196 points Sonny Morgan, 191 points Andrew Dixon and if Sonny Morgan doesn't go quicker here my arithmetic he no he hasn't. doesn't, he closed the gap though well that's because Andrew Dixon absolutely mullered that one 46.538 for Dixon 46.617 for Sonny Morgan that's your first and second and I'm just looking at 100 points for Dixon, that's 200. And what's the points for second? Is it 96 or is it... It's 96 or 98? It's got to be 96, hasn't I it? I think it's 96, yeah. So there was, a, there was a five-point difference going in. There was a four-point difference there. It might be that... Sonny, I'm going to have to confirm that with the timekeepers. Uh, that session there, Andrew Dixon, quickest, 46.538. Sonny Morgan, 46.617. Harris Roberts, 46.835. And third, Eddie Stewart... 46866. Lucy Lovell, fifth, 46897. 46990 for Daniel Hartley in sixth and Max Galton, 47085. That's how tight the Minimax grid is. We've got TKM equally as tight coming out next for their time attack. Just trying to remember who was quickest yesterday. I can't blank. Absolutely blank at the moment. Oh, don't worry, mate. <laughs> we can uh, we can check that out right now. It's all about the uh, the grid formed at the moment. Charlie King on the provisional pole by ten points. Mitchell Ball is on second on 187. Uh, Joseph Jakes on 183. Harry Ro Harvey Roth on 182. Tom Johnson on 182. Jack Ransom on 173. Will Cregeen on 173, Joseph Phillips on 169, Olivia Jackins on 167, Alexander Lehman on 163, Matthew Temple Purcell on 161, and Andrew Platt rounding off the 12 cart TKM field on 155. That's the provisional grid yep. for the final coming up later. Following uh, Joe Phillips, who's shadowing Will Cregeen. Again, at the front. 
a trend for some of these. Uh, to prefer being at the front in command, don't they? So yeah, they do. Yeah. Getting on with it. Get out there. Will Cregain uh, leading the field round. Who's that in set? Who's that behind Joseph him? The 66, Phillips. Joseph Phillips. Yeah. So Cregain will want to just get on with it. They're on their first flyer. And Cregain there in the, with the orange side pod, the orange and black nose cone. Flicking it through the final turn at Pittsburgh, using a bit of curb on the exit. Benchmark 47.658, Joseph Phillips 47.977. They're the fastest two on the track at the moment. We're still waiting for Mitchell Ball and Charlie King. Yeah. Here they come. Just coming there through now. Charlie King there, the 26. Goes to the top of the screen, 46.918. Charlie King goes quickest. Not bad at all. Andrew Platt. Drop. Andrew Platt is currently 12th on the grid, so Andrew will want him to will be wanting to get as much time here, eighth place, if he wants to gain some points and get himself off that back row of the grid. And that's easily done because it's very, very tight there in the midfield and down to, towards the rear of the grid. So the 92 there just clicking on through. Look at this whole stream of them now. Over the line. Including Mitchell Ball. Yeah, now the, the TKMs, do they suit following each other a line astern? Do they do they go quicker in that four car train? Well, it seems to be, doesn't it? I mean, they're not really holding each other up, are they? No, they're not. That's the thing. Keeping it in line. Yeah. Nobody's really doing anything on toward. Mitch won't be happy with this, though. We'd be wanting to get through here. So the Tarvi Roth at, at the, the top, at the front of that, uh, he's currently fourth. Who's that second place car? Jack 27, Ransom. Jack Ransom. That's the second car in that picture. Charlie King's confusing me this weekend because he's changed his bodywork and I'm used to the red barrel. Yes, can't, yes. Can't pick him out at half the time. Just letting the cart breathe there with Harvey Roth. Let's see what the times are and whether they change. It does indeed. Do. 46 8 4 1 for Harvey. Very he's respectable, the, that one. He's the quickest cart on the track at the moment. He's just knocked Charlie King off. But Charlie King's at the back of this lot and quite happy to circulate alone. Some drivers are I suit, doesn't it, I suppose? He's quite happy to be tender, isn't he? Something I've seen before with some of the quick drivers, especially around Wilson Mill, for whatever reason. I remember Simon Keeble doing it a lot when we used to do uh, qualifying a couple of years ago. Hello, Simon, if you're watching. Right, few place changes there. The 27 breaking free, Jack Ransom. He's currently third quickest. Now that he's got clear air, he's got no carts in front of him. I'm not sure whether this will be his quickest. Let's see if it is. Oh, it there is it indeed. Is. Straight to the top. 46-7-3-1 for Jack Ransom. These are teammates are working with each other. Who's who is that on the on the, who's is that livery, guys? Uh, TWM. TWM drivers. Mm. Jack Ransom and Harvey Roth working together and proving it works. Because they're the carts at the front of this time attack field. Just trying to see who's shadowing them. Is it. Uh, That's a number. Missed it. <laughs> Honestly, it's so fast. 48. Olo Olivia oh, Jenkins. Olivia, yeah. Olivia being pulled through as well. Olivia being pulled around. Olivia up to fifth quickest in the field. Let's see again. Not quick enough that time and Alexander Lehman has broken through and uh, is sandwiched between the two do TWM Carters Alexander Lehman 46.745 he goes second quickest in this time attack we're into the final minute Mitchell Ball seventh quickest it's uh, I'm not sure he's had the breaks with traffic as Mitch did he lift off the back of the group I think he did didn't he, he gave himself a bit of uh a bit of breathing room. Can't see him out the window to see where he is. Oh, he's circling by himself now. Joe Jake's through the boots. Where is he at the moment? How's he doing? He's fifth. Fifth at the moment. Head down across the line. Changes at the top, though. Harvey Roth and Jack Ransom goes to the top of the screens. And there's Charlie King. Where's he been lurking? Charlie King, 46.270. He's already consolidated that pole position. He will start on pole position. 
even if he finishes second in this session. But right now, he's in first. Harvey Roth is second, 46.627. That's a considerable margin, isn't it? 3.357 is the gap. Charlie King, very, very tough to beat here. Yeah, he's proved that last time out, didn't he, for round four of the NKC. He was just on fire. There's Alexander Lehman just finishing his session and crossing the line. Alexander, who's been there or thereabouts, he's currently... Where is Alexander on the grid? He's currently 10th. He will improve there. Finishes in fourth. But right now, let's have a run down. Charlie Kingland, 46.178 for Charlie. Tom Johnson, right there at the very end with a 46.584. Goes second quickest. He demotes Harvey Roth to third. 46.627 for Harvey. Alexander Lehman threw into fourth. Great finish for him on a 46.665 right there at the very end. It's Jack Ransom and Joseph Jacks, fifth and sixth. Mitchell Ball, seventh. Olivia Jenkins, eighth. Joseph Phillips, ninth. Will Cregeen, tenth. And then we've got Matthew Temple Purcell and Andrew Platt rounding off the 12 cart field. Great effort by Joe Jakes as well, considering he's not been in the carts since three sisters around. That's one. right, yeah. Only half yeah. a second off. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, the KZs coming next and then two uh, two time attack sessions for Rotax 177 uh, we'll, we'll have the 177 standings for me soon for their grid at the moment their provisional grid no he hasn't ok still under deliberation <laughs> so right now though KZ Sam Ward 195 points not much in this guys Ellis Borshia 192 Benjamin Ballou 194 Bo Phillips 177 Billy Regalsford I think Bailey's back out after that massive shunt. His father, Carl, is on the barrier watching. So that frightening shunt that we saw at Pitts Bend, he's out. He's back in the cart. Yeah, I believe he walked away as well, didn't he? Which is good news. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I, um, yeah he did. Can't hear you saying that, Nick. No. Should we have three headsets next time? Shall we? I'll try not to be hung over next okay. time. Yeah. Well, it was your wife's birthday. <laughs> So six oh, yeah. on the provisional grid. Uh, there he is, one nine two. That's the Regalsford. that's Regalsford, yeah, Billy it? Regalsford, isn't it? In we'll see a lovely interview that we did, Gaz and I did in the paddock show, and we get some lovely close-ups of that uh, cart and the preparation Absolutely on it. Absolutely immaculate, wouldn't it? Incredible, yeah. It's and that's the shop floor almost. That's all down to his uh, father, Carl. I, I do love a red and white helmet. It's got a very louder-esque look to it, isn't it, almost? Yes, it has. But the colours, guys, my football team. No, of course they are. He's on a barrel, <laughs> and the car not too badly damaged at all, if at all, and repaired. And we'd be looking as pristine as ever. And thankfully, Billy Regalsford, fit enough and not too bruised and battered. He was thrown from the cart, which is exactly what you want, actually. Yeah, well. <laughs> as bizarre as that sounds, you do want to be uh, thrown from it. We'll and not being part of that. And, uh, see how he is. Yeah, is yeah, do that. Um, chat with him. So behind Bailey, who's qualified fifth at the moment, uh, provisionally, for the final grid, Sylvinus Claymas is sixth on 174 points. 170 points, Isaac Smith. Reese Llewellyn qualifies eighth. He'd be happy with that one. Is this, his, is this Reese's first KZ um, event? Quite possibly. I know he's done but a lot of testing at Landau. Well, he he started off the back for his heat. He should have been on uh, up at the front. Yeah. And he start, He should have been on pole, I think. And he's cho chosen to start at the back. So I'm thinking yeah, he's, he's probably chosen to do that deliberately because he's, he's gathering um, a bit of experience, knowledge, isn't yeah. he? I was chatting with the Dark Knight, as he's dubbed himself, yeah. uh, yesterday, in fact. And he was saying, as he does in typical South Walian ways, he um, doesn't expect to be anywhere near the front. And he's just having a good time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know what? Driving these gearbox carts yeah. around here, 0 to 60 in, what is it, 1.5 seconds something or something? Like that, yeah. Something like that. I mean, it is. It's an experience just driving around by yourself, let alone racing them. I was on the infield yesterday watching them and the amount of work these guys are doing. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, Brilliant I don't to watch. Absolutely I don't, spectacular. I don't think I have got the extra brain capacity to uh, fathom out gears as well as driving a, a, a fast cart around the track. 
Daniel Sabula is behind Rhys Llewellyn, ninth provisionally on the grid. James Webb provisionally 10th. And then we've got Harvey Reby and Bradley Calder rounding off the 12-cart field. And we'll see how they are. Harvey Reby uh, only had two finishes in uh, fifth and a second in the fourth heat. In the first heat, he was 40, he was fifth. And then we had the time attack second heat. Uh, time attack. No, time attack was first, wasn't it? Where he came fifth, Harvey Reby. Then he had two non finishers in his heats and a second place in the third heat. So that's why he's down the grid. So I think we are just waiting for some sort of clear up going there's out on the track. We're waiting for some drivers to appear on the dummy We're grades. waiting for some so drivers yeah. to appear. Apparently yeah. there's missing drivers. Well, that never usually stops a session. We're ahead of schedule. Oh, okay. All oh, right. Well, so there we, we go then. Well, there you go. Relax, everybody. So does that mean we can have a bit of a lie down now? Oh, yeah. All right, okay. Can I go for a lie down? Yeah, no, you can't. Not yet. <laughs> We've got three more time attack sessions, everybody. <coughs> We're just waiting for the uh, the session to start for KZs. And then we've got two time attack sessions, the two remaining time attack sessions for our Rotax 177 groups one and two. Now, the two-day meeting here at Wilton Mill for the all plate has enabled us to incorporate these time attack sessions. I would love to see these things become a feature. Yeah. However, Nick's Nick. That means, Nick, we need to do two days of live streaming. <laughs> Everybody's in agreement. Then. Time attacks. But you can't get through these time attack sessions as well as three heats and finals in just one day. No. We can't get through just the heats and the finals it's in one day. You'd have to turn up, drop it, and just go. Is that Steve Gilly there? Uh, that is Martin Jackson. Martin Jackson. Sorry. Martin, who had a pretty big shunt, didn't he, at fullback last year? Yes, he did. Down, wasn't yeah, he uh, did. Full recovery and racing elsewhere now. But uh, always nice to see him back in the paddock helping Spanner for a couple of drivers. Yes. Um, talking about um, fullback, we've got two more rounds of the Junction 6 NKC coming, haven't we? We do indeed. Round five in mid September, isn't it, I think? It is. I should know. Is it mid-September? 10th, 10th of September, is it? I'm just okay. scrapping for that. There it is. There you go. At 9th Wait. and 10th, good, well-remembered, Nick. 9th and 10th at Fulbeck for more Junction 6 NKC Championship karting. And then 21st, 22nd of October for the final round where we will be concluding our championship for 2023. And we're already looking forward to 2024, aren't we? Um, it kicks off in April, 20th to 2023. 20th and 21st of April, we're off to Clear Pigeon for round one of the NKC 2024 uh, series. Yep. Uh, we then go to Fullbeck, back to Fullbeck for round two, 31st of May, 1st of June. We'll come back here to Wilton Mill, 29th, 30th of June for th round three and half time. After half time, after the oranges and the, uh, the rub downs, we then reconvene 20th and 21st of July at Rowra in Cumbria. We head back to Three Sisters, where we, uh, we went to this year for round one. We're at round five, Three Sisters, 20th and 21st of September. And then round six, concluding the championship, we're off to Forest Edge. Mm. A new track on my list, uh, a track that I'm not familiar with at all. Well. It's near the south coast of, uh, of the country, uh, just north of Bournemouth, is, uh, is what I saw. Two very southern circuits and uh, a couple of very northern circuits in Rower and Three Sisters. Everywhere is very southern for me, my friend. It certainly is. I suppose you can't see Norway from your neck of the woods. Nearly, mate. Yeah, yeah, if I look, if you left, I can nearly see from my house. <laughs> Squint hard enough. You can see the North Sea from my house. Okay. Right then, we've got KZ. the clock ticking. Six minutes of time attack for KZs. Now yeah. let's see what tactic these boys and girls employ. That's so following the leader, isn't it, on the moment? It what is. Are doing a lot, are they? Cruising about. Spectacular well. to watch. I mean, if you had a KZ just going round by itself, it is. I mean, we're, we're looking at playing a little bit of a lottery game here. Nobody wants to lead them round. Everybody's yeah. going slow enough to be overtaken, but everybody's staying in line astern. It's like watching the qualifying at Monza, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that's right. First across the line, though, would be uh, Harvey... Harvey Ruby. Harvey Ruby, yeah. Yep. 
Still not particularly quick. No, we're not up to speed, are we? The clock is ticking, we're, isn't it? We're, it's playing, just me. we're yeah. playing a game here. Right, yeah. the 22's gone. Reese Llewellyn. He's, he's lost his patience. Me. Yeah, it's just not hard, is it? <laughs> it's Reese. Now, let's stick okay. with the Dark Knight. We call him the Dark Knight because when he's on his Rotax 177, he's in full black livery, side pods, nose cone, fairing, completely yeah. black, suits his suit and helmet. However, this weekend, he's gone pink and blue, hasn't he? Mm. <laughs> Somewhat contrasting from the black. Suits him, though, doesn't it? There's Sabula. He's had enough of following Reese Llewellyn, and he's broken free. These two going off ahead. Yeah, so like the number the 12 and the rest of the field have decided they've had enough of um, dancing about between each other Sabula this is this is the lap we're going to watch Paul this one here it's the first flying lap Sabula leading people around we'll yeah. see if by leading everybody around you can be the quickest on the track it gives us a, a great opportunity because we're not really focusing on a race, to just watch the technique there. Right on the apex of the corner is where, when he got the gear. Yeah, but it was right on the apex where he got the gear. He's doing it. He's changing down right into the corner. Still doing it there, Chapman. Accelerates up the box, pulls the gear, and then brakes down the box. Down the box again. It's not a case of just flicking the gear stick either, is it? It's We're coming to the conclusion of his first flyer. 42.987. That is so fast, one-handed. <laughs> it really is. I mean, they're coming up to Christmas, and they're doing, what, nearly 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour? I think That's right, yeah, 78 groups. miles an hour, I think, Billy uh, Regalsford said. Yeah, incredible. And they can stop pretty much on a dime from that speed as well, I've, I've uh, been told by a couple of them. The right. braking power is just ridiculous. Because you've got brake discs on both front yeah. and rear, isn't it? That's... Yeah. Uh, something else to drive I can imagine so here we go then this is uh, Sabula's Daniel Sabula we've stayed with him for another lap let's see if he's gone quicker still 42 987 he doesn't he does indeed 42 721 so he extends that here's the field coming through now nobody's gone quicker Sabula backs off let's stay with the 18 that's Paul Phillips He's got the CRG overalls, the orange shoulders, the black overall. And currently, the number Four. 18 is four, f sixth. Sixth, guys, 44-0-1-0. This is quickest time. I was looking at the Ah, oh, you're just looking <laughs> at the, uh, the, the... That's what we're looking at, man. So sixth Please. place for this number 18. Can't even want to improve on that. Into the boot. And out with it. Out nearly the pitch bend, as he usually as he could. A little bit... Um, still, I kept his right hand wheels on the track, didn't he? 43 499. Run. He's gone quicker. They don't use a lot of the exit curve, do they? Through to oblivion and out the other side. Isaac Smith down the hill and into Ashby's, using all the road and a bit of grass down as he goes through. And they really don't use a lot of the track, do they, in comparison to what we've seen so far? And this is cruising around, of course, and fooling everybody. <laughs> yeah, including us. <laughs> including us. Yeah, including us. This is the number 123, Isaac Smith, yep. who's currently in sixth spot. Yep. Looking to improve. Tight line through the exit of the boot there. Again, how of the road being used? And it's just my eyes, of course. Let's see if we can pick up the number 192, Paul Bailey Regalsford. He's the red and white helmet, red and white cart. Uh, Bailey was the driver who had that big shunt. Let's just stay at Christmas Corner and see if we can pick him up. Okay. Just want to see how he uh, how he goes. Here he comes here. It's the red and white cart there. Second in the picture. That one there, the 192. There That's Bailey Regalsford. And you know what? Isn't that a welcome sight to mm. see Bailey out and fit and driving that cart around? And so quickly. He's only had, what, an hour and a half, I think, yeah. to turn this all around and yeah. uh, get prepped again. That, so that, that really serious-looking incident... Mm wasn't as serious as it perhaps looked yeah, quite possibly he's uh thankfully yeah absolutely that was a bit scary he's let a driver through and he's uh, that's his session done is that enough for that? um we're, we're gonna find out now if bailey is fit enough to compare to continue aren't we yes because that was a bit of a a bit of a test Ooh, we've had, we've had uh, a cart off at the first turn 
on the exit of Oblivion. I yeah, exit was. of Oblivion. We've had a cart off there. That's brought out a red flag with only four seconds remaining, uh, according to the timing screens. Um, that's going to bring a premature end to the time attack for this session. And we've got Ellis Borshia topping the screens with a 42.659. Daniel Sabula, 42.721 for second place. Sam Ward, who is our provisional pole sitter. Sam Ward will probably relinquish that provisional pole to Ellis Borshia. With Ellis scoring more points here in this session, Sam Ward currently third in the timings, 42.955. Bo Phillips, 43.319. Harvey Reby is fifth on a 43.383. And then Isaac Smith, sixth place, 43.659. Billy Rigalsford uh, pulling into the pits there, 43.663 in seventh. And then eighth place in this time attack session, Sylvinus Klimas, 44.119 was his time. Rhys Llewellyn, 44.638, having a great time watching uh, from the rear of this uh, this field, but no doubt will be enjoying every minute of driving this oh, KZ gearbox cart. Oh, he loves it, does Rhys. Interesting session, that way, wasn't it? I mean, at the start, nobody really went for it. Aside from Reese, and then they've done what? Maybe one or two hot laps. Like you said, it's um, it was a bit like it was a bit like Monza Grand Prix, wasn't it? When they're yeah. all they're all waiting for each other to make the move. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's better. See that in your ears. See, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Got you. Yeah. Is that better? Yes. You happy? It is, mate. <laughs> it's the beard muffling it. Probably. How are you feeling? Yeah, rough. <laughs> good party though. Pretty good party. Uh, so, so are you allowed to tell us? Was it a special birthday? Was it a 21st? Of course it was. It's always a 21st birthday, <laughs> isn't it? There was a little detail. I suppose we had dinosaurs. There was chickens. There was dinosaurs uh, and chickens. The mask and even Freddie Mercury was there. Was he yeah. really? Yeah, unbelievable. Hell of a party. A late one, too. As, um, yeah, just uh, how late? Um, I saw the morning. And, and you were here. And you were here at... 9.30? Uh, ish. Commendable. You know what? When I was <laughs> your age, I could do that. There's not a hope in hell that I can party till after midnight. Well, as you like and to then, frequently remind me, as I'm yeah. getting nearer to 40, it's becoming yeah. very hard. Yes, to it is, mate. Will you get, will, you know, will for another decade. And then it doesn't become hard. It's it impossible. becomes impossible. <laughs> yes. And you're just not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, back to the job in hand. Two more uh, time attack sessions left. Uh, it's for our uh, KZ, sorry, KZ, KZ, KZ no. have, have just Dragon. completed that one. I think they've gone into the pits as well, haven't they? Uh, well, yes. There's only a few seconds on the clock. It's Rorax 177s. That's who I'm talking That's who I'm talking about. Have we got about. the stand-ins for that? Oh, we have. Yes, I Ooh, have. Lovely, look, look at this. that. Top of the table so far on points is... Ed Matthews. Oh, okay. You took it out of the light for me. That's better. Ed Matthews. Jamie Zyra. I'll be shocked about that. The yeah. two, the two, hang on. So the two Dan Holland mechanics who've basically gone into the workshop... I'm not sure whether they forced the lock on the door. Yeah. They've dragged some kit out. They have. And it topped the it top the grid. I mean, I think first and second. Quite possibly done more laps around here than a space shuttle. I hope Dan Holland's on holiday. <laughs> yeah, he must be. You'll find out later when he watches the broadcast. Their number one driver, Kai Hunter from Dan Holland. Yes. Who's, al who's also an employee of that outfit is on holiday in Sardinia oh, is it? Nice. yes if the Hunter family are listening hello to Reese. I know he was listening yesterday his dad Matt was also listening and uh, Matt's very happy with our lush greens <laughs> Nick will be happy to hear lush greens it's very lush green isn't it yeah so we we have an incident involving two drivers uh, that brought out that red flag the uh, safety crews are Tending to that. We've got 177s, the first group in the collecting area waiting to start. We'll have a, a quick... I mean... All right. Usually, the Junction 6 NKC is full of drama. Is full of drama. And incident and... My saying is there's a soap opera behind every garage door, but when it comes to carting, there's a soap opera, the soap opera behind In every awning, awning zip. Oh, isn't there ever? Yes, there is. 
and none more so. It was the same last year. You know, the, the dynamic between the two protagonists for the championship, Louis Large and Phil Howarth, went all the way to the flag. We had a dynamic did, yeah. very similar in all of our classes. Um, and here we are, you know, the interlopers here, Ed Matthews, who, uh, you know, not a big part. He's a mechanic for Dan Holland, mm. so he's very busy with UKC. Yeah, Jamie yeah. Zyra, he came out at the fourth round here at Wilton Mill. He's currently Timo Jungling's mechanic and mentor. Yep. He's proving to Timo Jungling that uh, he, he can't just do it. He doesn't just do it. He also um, knows what he's talking about when he's trying to mentor him. Yeah, he does indeed. And he's done a very good job at Wilton Mill last time out after coming back from France the day before and competing. And uh, if he's got that type of talent, what can he do as an engineer? And in the paddock show coming up very shortly, our paddock show... We speak to Jamie. In fact, we get in there. We we, we dove into the Dan Holland you, enclave, didn't we? You uh, you forced the lock and let yourself yes, in. Yes, so. yes. It wasn't so much welcomed in. We were barged our way in. <laughs> yes. Right, what's going on here, you lot? Oh, right. You're all using the kit, then. Yeah, yeah. You're all in Dan Holland racing. They're all in their own Dan Holland outfits as well. Which it's you know, funnier, all of these all of these guys, Callum Porter, Ed Matthews. Um, and Jimmy Zyra, all very, very proficient carters yes. and drivers in their very own right. Yes. Now they've moved on to mechanicing and mentoring and, and driver coaches to these younger drivers in the Dan Holland stable. And it's, it's, it's fabulous for me to see the likes of Ed Matthews, who, who was working for Reese Hunter a short time ago. It's fabulous yeah. to see them actually uh, racing and competing and, show, and absolutely showing what they know, that they know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and it's great for anybody looking for... Uh, we, that we all got here. We've got the Howers, we've got the Louis Larges, we've got uh, the Jib Tech squad. Scott Clee. Scott Clee, yeah, you know. All of them like that. If you look at the grid, right, Ed Matthews currently on the provisional pole, Jimmy Zyra alongside, Scott yep. Clee second, Louis yep. Large four, uh, fourth, Ryan Taylor Truman fifth, Harrison Crook sixth, yep. Joshua Gollin seventh, Kyle Dunford in eighth. Try to pick a winner. Ben Hitch ninth, Scott Smith tenth, yep. Callum Porter. 11th, Alex Rowley 12th. I'm down to 12th. And any one of those drivers can, can you know, potentially win that final. Um, looking down the order, Alex Capardia, currently 26th on the grid, ahead of his teammate Ollie Hancock. That's not I'm not sure what happened Ollie to Ollie is, in <laughs> that uh, third heat. He had a DNF, I think, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. Yes, yes, he did. Alex Capardia, who's a good friend of ours, from, he's joined us in the booth at places like Silverstone Wake. He's raced at Le Mans. He's raced in Creventic races. He's, uh, you know, a familiar, a familiar face. Um, perhaps in this lull, um, I'm going to bring the mood down because last week, the karting family, we lost a member of the karting family, um, a big part of the karting family. Uh, we lost a lady called Sue Porter. Yes. Um, Sue Porter was the wife of uh, Clark of the Course legend Ken Porter. Um, they were always together whenever Ken... And Sue were at Warden Law. You know, um, Sue and Ken would always come as a team, uh, officiating at some of the big meetings like the British Champs and the UKC and the likes. There was a, a, an amazing situation that I, I had personally in January. I was at the Dubai 24 hours. I was working the pit lane for uh, RSL on the Creventic race there, the big race, Dubai 24 hours. I walk into the pit lane to start my stint, and there's... There's Ken, and, there's Ken and Sue Porter. And I walk <laughs> in the pits and I go, oh, hello, Ken. Hello, Sue. Oh, hang on a minute. What are you doing? Hang on a minute. What are you doing here? <laughs> and they were there. They were in Dubai. They popped into the, the opening on the 24-hour race. And, um, and I just thought, hang on. Hang on. Um, you're not supposed to be in this world. <laughs> you're in my karting world. You have overlapped into my car racing world. What on earth? What on earth's going on here? And they were they were there for the uh, over the road to the, the Dubai Autodrome. Literally, literally over the road is the K Dubai Cardrome. Yeah. And next to the Dubai Cardrome are restaurants and yeah, yeah. shops, and it's quite a bustling little environment there. Um, and they were there for a, for a big event in January. Um, and he, I think he said to me, um, I had we had the choice of being at somewhere like I don't know, let's say PF. Mm. Uh, we had the choice of being a PF or the Dubai Autodrome, and it's January. Where would you be? In bed. It was 28 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> it was 28 degrees. It was beautiful. Um, and it, we lost Sue last week, and it's been a, a, a very sad week for the karting family because, like I say, Sue was a big part of the, 
the karting world here in the United Kingdom. And whenever when I next see Kent, um, I'll be giving him a big hug because mm. she's going to be a big miss. Uh, yeah, throughout sit, the karting world, as you say. You know, sit the morning of a race and having a bit of a coffee and a catch-up and, and whatever. And, uh, you know, very, very sad for Ken. And we, we send all of our love from, from here at Wilton Mill. And everybody at the NKC, you know, reaches out and uh, gives him a, a metaphorical hug and a, a big tight hug at that. Yeah. We're all thinking about you, Ken. And we're certainly thinking of Sue and our thoughts this afternoon. Going back to the 177s, actually, I thought I'd just had two of our most travelled drivers, Brian McCready and uh, Colin Campbell, travel from Strand Rare. It takes them nearly an hour, I think, to get to Larkhall. <laughs> and now, so I'm on. Uh, so yeah. they're an hour north of Larkhall. West. You go and west and right, you keep going north, west. Right, okay. Yeah, and they, they um, take them a good nearly three hours to get to Rawa. I spoke to Brian yesterday briefly. And uh, they reckon they've done nearly 4,000 miles wow. already this year. Wow. It's incredible. Wow. That is brilliant. That Neat. is brilliant. And which one of them is an Arsenal supporter then? Uh, that was Colin. Colin right. in the 57. Yes. I, I pulled him up, didn't I? It's you like, did, yes. So what's someone from Stranraer doing <laughs> in an Arsenal top? And he just said it was back when he was a kid and he, you know, following English football as well as yeah, Scottish yeah. football. When Scottish football was good. Yeah. Back in those days. Well, you know, when you had Hearts, Hibs. Yeah, a lot um, more teams at the front. You know, you had a lot more teams at the front. So enough of Scottish football. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what's going on with the um, Women's World Cup at the moment, which is uh, going to sort of date this. Uh so we're about to get things underway. I think the about to get people in their seats for this 177 session. Time attack. Two more time attack sessions. So 12 minutes of actual competitive karting. All right. So we're, we're waiting for a decision as to whether or not we may go for a lunch break now or we may go for a lunch break after these two sessions. Let's just wait and see for that. For now, we will um, we will move forward as yeah. if we are. Did you hear anything, guys? No, I have not. No, we've got uh, drivers still in the collecting area out yeah. of their overalls. So nobody's looking like they're getting ready to go out anytime soon, are no. they? Um, if we are ahead on time as well, though, might be an opportune moment to take lunch. If that is going to be the decision, might be a welcome one as well. Let people. Uh, I don't know. Let's uh, let's wait and see the what, the, what the officials say um, as we go forward. I've said it again, guys. You have. Going I have. Forward. I have said that again. Don't let that drop from too low. It's hidden in your beard. Right, so we are waiting for this next session to either restart or we go for a break. We'll wait for official word right now. There's no sign. For there's a little tea party going on down <laughs> there in the collecting area. Who are they? Can you recognise anybody uh, there? It looks like uh, James Yap crouching down and Alex. So that's Alex James Jones. Yap on the right. Yeah, that's right. With, the, with the rib protector. Correct. And you've so got that, Alex. That might be an idea, actually. If, you, if you're watching this, that black thing around Alex Yap's middle is a rib protector. And that basically velcros on and it stops your body being slammed up against the sides of the seat. Even though the seat's tight, mm. it stops you basically, your body is squished into the side of the seat. And it, that protector stops basically the flesh and the ribs yeah. from squishing up. Um, so that's a, that's a great insight there. You, they wear them under their overalls. And, not forgetting uh, as well. And there's another one, the DHR T-shirt uh, character there. Not yeah. sure who that. I think that's Ed Matthews. Actually, no, it's not Ed Matthews. Wrong overall. So who's that chap with the blonde hair? That's uh, one of the Collinsons, isn't it? It's yes, it is. Yes, and it is. Is that Andy? We're going. Yeah, we are. We're going to start. We're going to get this time attack underway. So we are going to get two more time attack sessions underway. Two more six-minute time attack sessions. Uh, this is all about going as fast as you can. And you're getting a great view of everybody's rib protector there, everyone. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you weren't aware of that, that that's part of the... Uh, that's one of the most required bits of kit 
Yeah, that's one yeah, of the, yeah. the most required bits of kit you will ever need going karting. Helmet, gloves, rib protector. Do not get in a cart, and a road, certainly a Rotax Max cart, without your rib protector. Because you'll... Uh, I know some people who haven't been able to get back into a cart for six months mm -hmm. after not bothering with the rib protector. I uh, broke my ribs at Clay Pigeon a long time ago, 2016. Stuck it in the barrier. He broke his... Nick here broke his ribs there. Oh, he did spend. at the last corner, yeah. Yeah, he's not mentioned it much, though. He hasn't, has he? No, not really. You've not mentioned it much at all. No. <laughs> it, I'm presuming the track's clear now, is it? Yeah, we, we, uh, we've got that. Window? Yeah, we've got drivers getting suited and booted, as you can see, guys. Yeah. Um, Ayrton Anderson in the 67 with the, funnily enough, Ayrton Senna helmet there. Top of the screen. Ah, yes, so he is. Yeah, 67. A man after my own heart there. That's a great Senna replica, isn't it? Yeah, he's, um, he's the engine motor of AAM. Right, so blue overalls, yellow sides. That's an Ayrton Senna replica helmet, the blue with the green. Ex-British RC champion. Right, so it's a, a familiar name to you, Nick. You know no one can hear you, mate. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. You've known him since he was 11. <laughs> right. Right, cool. He nice obviously guy. knows he's a big motorsport fan. Um, so it looks like we have got people... Already suited and boot. I can see Sarah Dollar walking through the middle there with her pink folder. <laughs> of course, it's pink. She's the uh, commander in chief of all things collecting area and grids. Just on the grid, tucked behind Alex Jones, who stood right in the middle of there, is the 136 of Peter Jeans, co owner of TKR. He's racing for the first time in a few years. Uh, decided to do the O plate earlier on. Oh, really? So, so got him a fancy suit and a fancy car livery for this one round. Right, wow. Apparently he's doing quite well. Where is he in the? Uh, where uh, is he in the points? What number is he? One three. I say he's there doing he quite well. He's twenty eighth. No, no, that's quite well because oh, yeah, there is forty nine carts. Oh yeah. So he's twenty eighth out of forty nine. Say he's doing yeah. very well. That's why I think you know I was looking at uh, Alex Capaldi at twenty sixth on the grid so far. Mm. Andy Collinson, newcomer yeah. to the uh, Andy and Shane here, uh, familiar names from Northeast Karting, and Andy. Hopefully on a bit of a research mission to perhaps think about the uh, the NKC next season. And Andy in that group now, that's about to go out. He's on the number, where is he? He's on number 174, just out of shot. Mm. And centre, to put a face to a name, is, in the big high vis on his phone, is Stu Stratton. Yes, he's just sending a text to order dinner, yes. I think, probably. Quite possibly. Ordering is. his is, lunch. Um, was hoping to race KZ, but it's been a bit unwell with his shoulder, you were saying, and uh, especially around here in KZ, as we know. It's a bit of effort. Yeah, I think, I think Stu, sticking with the photography this weekend, he was mm. telling me about his shoulder injury, and yeah. it sounded really nasty. Um, so, yeah, discretion being the better part of Allah. He could have mm. done one or two laps, maybe. That's what he said to me yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> one or two laps each session, and then <laughs> called it a day. And you know what? That would have been fine, because those carts are absolutely... All about the experience. Yep. So we get things underway. Six minutes, clock already ticking. And we'll see how these 177s go about it. Things getting very, very, very they tense at the front of this grid. They've staggered themselves out as well, haven't they? They haven't gone out in the... Uh, they said they're not going to have a big train. There's two big trains, but uh, there you go. Yeah, let's see. Who's at the front there in the 88? Not quite sure. 88 is... Oh, 56. I'm completely wrong. It's Joshua Pickford with Ayrton Anderson tucked in behind him. And uh, Peter Jeans. So Ayrton Anderson carrying that Ayrton Senna replica helmet. Mm. You know who he's named after. I after can't all. imagine. Yeah. I never thought I'd actually say the name Ayrton on commentary either. That's a, that's <laughs> a first. Yeah. It's not, not quite our first, not quite well, Nick's first. He's been talking about him since he was 11. Here we go then. Time lapse coming up. The 58 is... 56. 56, sorry. Yes. Is the cart that we're with now, Joshua Pickford. First flying lap. Yeah, and behind him is a train of carts. You can pick any one of these, Paul, and, uh, and watch them. But we're going to stick with we're going to stick with who we've got now, Joshua yeah. Pickford. Let's have a look at uh, Peter Jeans, if you get a moment, see how he's doing. Look at how those carters were using that runoff there. All of it and some. Yeah. No quarter given. Need a number for Peter Jeans and we'll pick him out. Cheeky wave to somebody over there. Yeah, he's just waving to his Mid crew. Yeah. yeah, waving to his crew, sat watching from the sidelines. As you do, why not? Right then, first time's being posted. 
the timing screen absolutely lighting up. Yep. Jimmy Tyler, 46-3-4-0. There's the 67 of Ayrton Anderson with that centre replica. Yep. He's got... Uh, he's just closing in back then. He's currently 7th overall. He's having a good run. He's normally he comes to the Wilton Mill venue. Oh, or, uh, he's racing. having... Right, this is going to be... This is getting very messy. He's squabbly now. Yeah, and Anderson having to back out and let these, let these carts by. Yeah. Let's pick up someone else, Paul, and uh, we'll watch that, unless you want to stick with... Alfie Williams just ahead of him. Alfie's had a good run this weekend, looking for a top 10 finish. Hopefully he can improve on that and uh, get a bit further up. But as we know, there's no points for second place this time round. Ryan Taylor Truman goes to the top. That's the number 45 of Jamie Tyler. Jamie currently in... Where's he gone? Where's Jamie Tyler gone? I was looking at him. Seventh yeah. is Jamie Tyler. 46-0, as good as. Yeah, fastest time so far is a 45-8-5-8. Ryan Taylor Truman... Alex Kapadia, who I mentioned, 15 for Alex, 46.971. Thoroughly enjoying revisiting Cart. Hasn't sat in a car for a decade. Oh, hey, really? Let's find Cart 51 when we get a chance, Paul. And we'll have a watch of Alex. We know how quick he is in a GT3 sports car and an mm. LMP2 car. As we watch Harrison Crook. I have Crook. no idea where he is on the track, by the way. No. <laughs> Harrison Crook through the top of the hill. There he is. That's there Alex there. Oh, we had him there. Yellow helmet. There he is. We've out got of oblivion. him. We got him. Into oblivion. Out of oblivion. Yeah, into oblivion. Into crooks. That's uh, that's Christmas corner, isn't it? Yes. And through this the kink. Down in Kimmins. Watch the car unsettle there. Oh, he's lifted. Don't ah, watch it unsettle right. then. What's he doing then? He's been very professional, isn't he? He's been very, very diva-ish. Just backing off. I feel like he's played this game before. Well, he's, he, w he was saying he hasn't been in a cart for a decade, and yeah. uh, but he's, he's thoroughly enjoying it. He's been in car racing. It's uh, easily done, isn't it? Yeah, but different, ma different kettle of fish driving these things. Oh, Alex course, yeah. was telling me. So physical. Here we go, then. The blue and white cart. He's running with Holly Hancock this weekend, who we've also seen a lot in car racing. Yeah. Seventh, wasn't he, in GTE in... At Le Mans in 2021, I believe. So. All, all the, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of experience. Quite a handy driver, the two of them. Yeah. And here we go. Oh, out the bumps through the king. It is. That, uh, Sorry, that bumpy. Of it. It's because of the it's because of the uh, the curbing there, isn't yeah. it? If you get a chance to do a track walk, have a look, and there's just black mark. Is there? Clean tarmac, black mark, clean tarmac. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah, it's that bad. Horrible to drive. <laughs> here he comes towards the boot then. We'll keep an eye on Alex. He's down in 15th at the moment. He's just coming around to complete his lap. About a minute on the on the board. Kipadia across the line. And his time then. Not as quick as he's been. 46.8. No. His quickest times are 46.5. Not doing too badly, is he? I mean, to be a second off after not driving a cart in a decade. That's uh, not I know, bad at all. I know. That's I know. Nothing to be ashamed of there at all. It's the 45 who is currently the quickest cart on the track at the moment, getting towards the last 30 seconds. Will he drop into the 44s that we've seen so frequently from the, uh, from the quick guys? Kapadia getting out the way, but the number 25 not wanting to get out the way so readily. Uh, just looking down the order while we follow the rest of these fields round. Jimmy Tyler is quickest with a 45-289. Elliot Thomas, second quickest, 45-302. Ryan Taylor Truman 45-332. Harrison Crook 45-351. Look how close they are, man. Joshua Pickford 45-457. Then we've got Ben Hitch, Alfie Williams, Daniel Burgess 8th on a 45-656. 45-9 for Andy Collinson inside the top 10 in ninth. Peter James 10th on the 136. Yep. Well done, Pete. Yeah, great effort there. 45-920. We've got the check and flag flying. The session coming to a conclusion. Who's on the hot lap that can challenge? Any of, oh, this is it, isn't it? I think Jamie Tyler is going to be uh, pretty happy with that. Not in the 44s, though. A good three, four tenths off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. C 
So, checkered flag, remaining runners in the 177 class. Tyler takes the quickest time of the session. We'll just make a note of that, shall we? 45 mm. 2 3 2. And again, the top, the top eight and nine. Top nine are covered by half a second. Not really a lot in it at all, is it? These quick guys are really quick. Yeah, the next session is where we've got our top of the grid, the provisional grid. Yeah. Matthew, Zyra, Clee, Large. Taylor Truman was out there and came third, so he will gather some points. Harrison Crook, he's currently sixth on the grid. Harrison Crook was fourth in that session. Yeah, very handy around here. Yeah. He's proved that many a time. Josh Pickford, 13th on the grid there. Josh Pickford comes through in fifth. Ben Hitch is ninth on the grid, so Ben Hitch there coming through in sixth, quickest time. Uh, we mentioned Andy Collinson down in 25th. They've gathered some points for 10th. Remember that we br we put all of these lap times together with the next group. Yeah. And we amalgamate them, and it's it's quickest to, to slowest. Yeah. So what could be pole now for... Yeah, that's right. For Jamie Tyler, could be fifth by the end that's of this right. session. That's right, heading out now. Yeah. And this session, we've got some really quick guys. Well, we've got our provisional front two rows out next. Yeah. Edwin Matthews. Ed Matthews. Currently on the provisional pole with his uh, teammate Jamie Zyra alongside. Yeah. Scott Clee is third, Louis Lodge fourth. It's going to be a belting session. So a string of carts there off to the front. And the first two carts through have got a lot of space in front and behind. Right then, that's the 68. Alex Rowley. He's the first in the queue. And he continues on, crossing the line then. It's the 155 of Steve Stewart. Tom Thompson, Jamie Zyra's out there. Tom Eldridge is another one to look out for. Right now, though, we're going to follow Alex Rowley around this track. And just see where he pops out at the end of this first real flyer. 12th overall in the point, so uh, a good performance here will help him at least be in the top 10, 15 for the final later on. Yeah. Yeah, 12th. Everybody's looking to be in the year final. Everybody's looking to be yes. in that top three, three or four rows. Right, here he comes in. Alex Rowley, the first true indication of how quick we're going to be. 46-6. 6 5 for Alex. Yeah. Oh, that's a, try and keep up with that, Joe. The yeah, that well, well, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going <laughs> to. I'm just going to wait a few seconds. He was fastest for about mm, a second. We've still got these very quick drivers yeah. down here to come through. I've done it again. Yes, yeah, so I've done it again. Yeah. Louis Large, top of the screen. 46 5 6 3. He's going to find the knees. Kyle, second and a half yet. Kyle Dunford, top of the top of the times. 46 3 1 5. Callum Porter, Callum Porter. DHR Look, local. Yeah. Am I surprised? Mm, not really. Ollie Hancock. Ollie Hancock. Cart 50, 46, 3, 2, 8. And there is our provisional pool sitter, Ed Matthews. 45, 6, 5, 4. Four, first of the drivers straight into the 45s. Jimmy Zyrus. First real quick lap. 46, 0, 4, 8. He's third. It's Matthews. Alex Rowley. Great lap from Alex Rowley, that really second one. Fast. Yeah, yeah. Where is Ollie Smith? He's just coming down to Ashby's now. Where is he on time? I can't quite pick him out. Number nine. There is Louis Large being followed round by Jamie Zyra down the inside. Louis led him through. Jamie Zyra, the number 95. He's in contention for this all plate. He's letting them all go. He's looking for somebody, isn't he? Who are you looking for, Louis? He's looking. He's looking for a gap. That's what he's looking mm. for. Ed Matthews extends that 45 3 4 6. Not quite as quick as Tyler's 45 2 3 2 from the previous session. Scott Cleese popped up there. Yeah. Again, 45 3s are a lot slower than they were this morning, aren't they? And yesterday as well. Yeah, Louis Lard just started that fast lap now. He waited for some break in yeah. space. He's, He's now up to Christmas Corner. Here he comes. Through the kink, touches the curb over this. Over the bumps, see the car get unsettled there. 
you can see the way he's been thrown around. I mean, Louis, yeah, yeah. Louis's a, 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 a strong lad, and he's just been thrown around in that cart. Mm. That shows the physicality of, yes. of driving these Rotax Max carts. Oh, we have a red flag. Why is a red, red flag. flag. Got an incident, have we? Yes, we have. So with two minutes remaining, we have an incident that has brought out a red flag. I'm not quite sure where that has occurred. Louis Large reacts and stops the cart on the track. There's a drain cover that's come loose at turn two. A drain cover has come loose, I think right. the drain is on the inside of the corner. Canada 1991. Yeah. So if you look on the screen just now, it's pretty much just ahead of the 155. There's a drain. Well, I think it's pretty much right on the apex. Not something you want as you go through oblivion flat out. Well, we've lost Joe due to natural functions. <laughs> um, he Joe, you're really sweaty. Yeah, mate, I've got <laughs> damp ears now. Uh, talk about drain cars. I, drain cars. Uh, I think it was in, in Malaysia about 10, 12, like 2005 when one probably one Toyers. Uh, William sucked a uh, drain car up and destroyed did, the yes. chassis. Yeah, yeah. It's didn't happened quite a bit, actually. Quite a lot of F1 cars have sucked um, drains up. Didn't it happen in China? It did happen in China as well, yeah. In the Williams? No, it happened in, maybe in China. Maybe, 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 yeah, it might be in China, but Malaysia might be somewhere in the far east. It was east. somewhere over that way. It's, it's nearly the same, isn't it? It's yeah, on the I bottom of it. I probably shouldn't it? say that because that's going to be outrage two nations. Yeah, fair. Um, yeah, but it's, um, normally, they, they obviously, these, the Formula cars lift them up by the pure effect of the downforce, sucking them off the road but of mm. course I think this is probably just a, uh, a wear and tear drain, job yeah. like quite possibly they are going through there pretty quick not something that you want to happen if you're the first person on the scene especially in the cart when your feet are quite quite exposed aren't they really yes not sure I what they're going to do about it they've got, they've got the instant weld on it they? well they can't take it out can they there's a big hole there isn't there then what do you do you can tell them not to drive over it but that doesn't really work with drivers no <laughs> Please don't drive in it. Uh, They'll have to use the wet line, won't they? Just take all the grass instead and let it go under the seat. Oh, oh another red flag then. Been very bitty this second part of the day. Obviously, one, one, one major stop for unfortunately an accident. Um, haven't heard yet any incident, any update on how the driver is. I shall go in, find that out as best I can when I uh, when we go for lunch break, which is after. After this session, in fact, isn't it? This is the mm. last one of the timer sacks now. Yeah. <sighs> Looking very comfortable on screen, isn't he? Mm. Just chilling, as he does. Sitting in my cart, having a relax. Yeah. Just at the last corner, as you do. So they're going to try to replace the drain cover. I'll tell you who that is. Jerry's back from his urination, which is good news. <laughs> um, I told my drain cover story, so it's back to you, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. It's just these delays really, na really screwed with my uh, pit stop strategy, didn't it? <laughs> That's where it is. So we uh, we have got the uh, we've got we had two minutes on the t on the board. Now, if we continue this time attack for this group, they've got one lap to warm the tyres up, second lap to warm the tyres up, third lap perhaps optimised. You have All to right, wonder, is it, it going to be worth it? Are they going to improve? They're already down in the, the 45 fires, aren't they? 45-3. So far. Oh, 45-3, sorry. 45 yes. two, was the quickest time by number 45, Tyler. Yeah, and is it, is it going to be worth getting back out? I know the tyre temperature is going to be falling away now isn't it yeah um a rundown of the times in this time attack session it's the uh the final time attack session of the uh, of the weekend mm. actually because uh, after the lunch break we go straight into our finals um ed matthews he's had a he's had a cracking weekend hasn't he he's certainly uh i'm not sure how much karting ed's done i mean he's heavily involved with dan holland mm. i'm not sure how much driving and competing ed has done and callum porter his teammate right there with him so ed matthews 45 3 4 6 callum porter 45 4 9 7 scott smith is third 45 5 9 1 then we've got scott clee fourth 45 7 3 2 Jimmy Zyra, 95, 45, 7, 8, 3. He's in fifth. Cal Dunford is sixth on a 45, 8, 2, 4.
we've got Ollie Hancock, 7th, 45 836. Then Joe Piffner, then Alex <coughs> Rowley, then Finley Cross, Jake Lewis, Joshua Gollin. Louis Large is on a 46 563 in 13th. Louis had backed off. I think there was more. He'd be very frustrated if yep. we call, if we conclude this. Because I think be now, Louis, yeah. looking at Louis and what he was doing on track, he was just gearing up for a blitz last couple of laps. Yes, definitely. Being 13th is not helpful. But he has shown us this morning, in fact, that he has come through the field quite quickly. He started 21st, I think, didn't he, in the heat and finished 3rd? 3rd or 4th? Yes. Yeah, he came up 3rd, yeah. Yeah, so that won't yeah. be a problem. But uh, this is not an ideal situation, especially when the quick guys ahead of him are Scott Clee, Ed yeah. Matthews, Jamie Zyra, that are going to, if they start on the front, quite possibly just drive off. Well, yeah, it's going to be hard for, for Louis to contend. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that tactic, is, that red flag has done him no favours. Uh, behind Louis in, th- in 14th, Nick Skelton, um, Steve Stewart, Nick Skelton, again, 46-5. We've seen Nick perhaps go a bit quicker. Steve Stewart in 15th, Cameron Marston, Jack Goodyear, Tom Thompson, Tom Eldridge, Ad- Adrian Smith, Nicholas Walker, and Seb Bulpin is the... Uh, final qualify there, twenty second place, forty seven point five weight, and all, all of those last four drivers, their quickest time was uh, had come on their last lap. So, we, you know, the, the, there is an element of people just picking up the pace. Yeah, it's going to be interesting as well. Now they've got two minutes on the clock. They're all on circuit together. They can't really spread too far out, can they? No, not really. Yellow flag's been waved. Test of the dream. Uh, yeah, who's that not being able to get away there? Engine not starting. There you go. He's off. Yellow flag. I see two minutes and seven seconds on the starting gantry clock. That's the official one. The clock has, stick, has started ticking. Now that okay. Louis Large, he's got no one in front of him, and he needs to just basically scarper. Scarper and not think about anything other than breaking away from this, uh, this line of carts. So let's see what Louis Large can do. He's the current number two, the 2022 vice champion. He needs to be careful because he's about to let somebody buy him. No, Into Yeah, they're all <laughs> stacking up behind a, Louis. In the, in the 23. A, uh, thankfully for Louis, they're Tom all Eldridge. stacking up. Here Tom we go. would be wise to follow Louis, I think, at the moment. Just I to, think so. As Tom is where? 19th. Yeah, so. he's way down. Right, here we go. Through the final turn. This is the lap that Louis Large is counting on. I don't think he's got enough temperature in his tyres. I don't. I don't think this is an optimised run for Louis. He he's might. He will get more than this one lap, however. Two minutes on the clock. He's going to go hell for leather nonetheless, isn't he? Yeah, he's he needs out at to least, get it. He needs to get a few places up the, up the board, doesn't he, for a good, a good qualifying position. You know what? This is, this is great television, isn't it? This is great television. I'm not going, you know, the, the red flag has created this situation. I know. But this is great television. If Louis Large can just knock Ed Matthews off there. Ed Matthews is out there as well, but he's in a train of carts. Louis is the only driver who's got nothing in front of him. Yeah, He's it's, got uh, fresh air. It's work, worked quite fortuitously in Louis' favour. Here we go. Uses the kerb. First line lap. 46-1-2-1. Yeah, the tyres aren't in there yet, are no, they? No, not at all. He's got a chunk of time to find. Probably going to get about... Two, two or three flies, I'd say, then. Yeah. He'll get across the stroke one more time. That'll probably be his last lap, start of his last lap. 45-second lap here, isn't it? So, yeah, a minute on the clock. We can definitely get another another two laps out of this. Another two laps after yeah. this one. Definitely. Yeah, would be my estimate. So, by then, his tyres should be with him and gives us a chance to study. He's got a very composed yeah. method of driving a cart, Louis. Bear, you know, minimum movement. All the best drivers are like that, watching people like Kai Hunter yeah. and Reese Hunter, the same sort of thing. Doesn't look like he turns the wheel, does it? It makes it look now, very effortless. You know, Ed Matthews, Jimmy Zyra, yep. here this weekend, exactly the same, ducks his head down. Every single mile now he can get out of it now. He's gone up to third with that last lap, 45-5, yeah. he's getting there. Still a tenth and a half down though, isn't he, on the overall pole? He's getting there or thereabouts. I keep saying pole, it's not pole, is it? No. <laughs> Oh, Scott Clee, 45-47, goes to second. We continue to watch Louis Large on the number two. This is all or nothing for Louis because it's the one lap to go board after this. 
here he comes through the boot he's currently in fourth place in this session this is the checkered flag as well so this is his only shot all of the road there by Louis Large oh not as quick 45-7 45-7 for Louis Large. His quickest time was a 45-5 the lap before. Ed Matthews, that 45-3-4-6, will stand him good to be quickest in this session. Right. Scott Clee is still out there on the track. Callum Porter up Easy. to second. 45-3-9-6 for Callum Porter. Scott Clee's took the checkered flag. Hasn't gone quicker. He has to settle for the 45-4-0-7. Louis Large will be four, 45-5-1-7. Wow, Scott Smith right at the end. Scott Smith, fourth place. Jamie Zyra, 45-7-5-0 right at the end. Kyle Dunford right at the end will finish in seventh. And then we've got Alex Rowley finished eighth. Ollie Hancock, Ollie, rapid time there. 45-8-3-6 mm. on lap four. Joshua Gollin was 10th, Joe Piffner 11th, 12th was Nick Skelton, and then we've got Jake Lewis, Finley Cross, Seb Boltman, Tom Thompson, Jack Goodyear, Steve Stewart, Cameron Marston, Tom Eldridge, Adrian Smith, and Nicholas Walker. That is it. That is it for all of the qualification process. Why we will be bringing you our grids next, guys. We will be. Why can't we do that every week? That was it's good, great, isn't it? That was really good. Yeah, yeah. Two it's laps. great, isn't it? <laughs> that, was, uh, that was something. I'll go, and, uh, I'll go and find Louis and uh, see what he says. That'd be interesting chat yeah, to see how we some, played that one. Get some backstory on that, yes. would you? Yes, yes. I'll see what I can do. Yes, that's great stuff. Uh, thank you, Gaz Bury. Yeah, no worries. For thank joining us for Time Attack. Nick Damon is still there. We've, I've just nudged him, so he's woke up. Yeah, hello Gaz again. Gaz, Gaz is going to do some prowling of the, of the paddock and find some, and find some uh, stories, some backstories to what was going on there. I'm pretty sure... Um, I'm pretty sure Louis. Um, okay. I'm 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 not sure that whether that red flag can kind of spoil his momentum. I'm pretty sure that is what happened. But I tell yeah. you what, that gave us a, a cracking well, cracking ending yeah. to that session. Okay. Nick? Bit, of, bit of good news. Um, the KZ Carter, who was taken to hospital as precautionary, he, he seems to may have he actually may have hurt his legs um, in exiting the car. Do you know it, who it is? It was a three seven seven. It was at um, standby caller. I did know who it was. It's a 377. It's the, the guy who sounds French, but it isn't, I think. Oh, um, it's, um, yes, Porsche. Ellis yeah. Porsche. Yeah. So, um, and it was a mechanical. He changed down the throttle stuck open. Oh, really? Yeah. Ouch. Mm. But the good news is he is, in, he is at the hospital. He's been taken as a precaution, so um, that's, that's the good news. Um, right. We are now in a lunch break. We've been this lunch break. We've no idea how long it's going to last. Yeah. Um, so what we will do is we will take off the timing. Thank you, Paul. And we will play you the Paddock Show, uh, which features Louis Large, actually, uh, amongst others. Uh, it'll run some minutes, and then after that, we'll go. We'll try to find out when we're coming back. But uh, enjoy the O Plate Paddock Show. We're back up. Oh, we'll, see <laughs> well, hello, and it's back here again at Wilt Mill for the O Plate. And today is finals day, and finals mean final, don't they, Joe? Absolutely. The thing about an O Plate meeting is, it's not about finishing on the podium. It's not about gathering points. It's about winning. We're only here to, to, to praise the winner of the ore plate, the accolade of carrying that ore plate for the remainder of this season and on into next. So, you know what? NKC meetings generally are very, very intense affairs. We've seen the drama, we've seen the incident, but this one here at Wilton Mill this weekend, oh my goodness. I, I, you know what? The intensity level's already gone up there, and we've only had practice and heats. So when we get towards that, those all-important finals, when it comes down to the one Carter that crosses the line in first position, that's what it's all about. There's nothing else. There is literally nothing else. It's all about the win. There's nothing else. It's all about the win. He hasn't finished, but it's all about the win. In fact, go and talk to people in the paddock about the win because it's all about the win. Just the win. Don't talk about anything else. Just the win. Just the win. Just the win. It's just the win. All about the win. The win. All about the win. The win. We're at LRG Motorsport where Louis Large has got two hats on this weekend. He's got the team principal hat on. He's looking after everybody in LRG Motorsport as he is, has been doing all season in NKC. But this weekend, Louis wearing some racing overalls, which means that he's not just telling people what to do. 
he's going to have to prove he can do it himself. Now, Louis, like in true Frank Sinatra style, here you are, out of retirement and back in the driver's seat. Now, how much seat time have you had so far this year? Uh, we've done five days in total since November last year. Just five yeah, days? Just five Good days. luck with that one. Yeah. Then, yes. They've mostly been um, spent coaching with the lads, so yeah. I don't get a great deal of time to get out myself. I'd love to, but it's just we don't have the time. So we've doubled down with a bit of staff this weekend um, so that I can get in the seat myself. And I'm really enjoying it. I suppose the question isn't... Will I enjoy it? Will I do it? The question is, will my neck hang out yes. until Sunday afternoon? You know, I missed the session this morning, tactically. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, but it, it's, it's itching. I mean, you know, you and I have talked, you've got some great memories about, you know, from last year's NKC. Vice champion that came down to that bit of fun we had at the beginning of the year. Yeah, that chain, broken yeah. chain, you know. So you must be coming into this event where win it literally, win it takes all. It's not about coming second. Absolutely. So you've got a clear... Uh, and, and concise approach to this weekend, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, try and drive around that track as fast as physically possible. Um, if it's not fast enough that someone else is quicker, then we, we, we try and get in front, we try and make a race of it. But, you know, we, we've come in this weekend with realistic expectations. You, you can't do five days in a cart and expect to turn up and drive away at the front. It, it's just not how it works. You've got to put the time in. You know, the lads in the tent are, are a great testimony to that. They've spent a lot of winter testing. They've improved dramatically. Everyone's seen it, and that's the key, is laps in the seat. So we've come to this weekend with the intention, as you always do, to win. But we've got a semi-sensible head-on as to the fact that we'll see how we, we stand. But like you say, it's only the last 100 metres that counts. I, you know what, Louis? All right, standing here in the paddock in the cold light of day, that's a really sensible approach and a really, you know, <laughs> sort of pragmatic approach. But I know you, and when you get on that grid and get released from that collecting area, there's only one thing on your agenda. Yeah, that's, that's coming in first. That's yes. being the first yeah. across the line. And like you said, it's the old play. It's winner takes all. If it comes down to the last lap and it's a do or die move, it's a, it's a do or die move, but you might as well stay at home if you're not going to make it. So you've got to go out there. You've got to, you've got to push it to the limit. You've got to do what you can. But ultimately, it, it's about having fun this weekend. Seeing that there's not there's nothing more fun than winning. Well, <laughs> talking about talking about having fun. I mean, you know, here we are halfway through the NKC season. You this year completely change of tack, yeah. uh, team principal looking after other drivers' interests. How have you enjoyed it so far? It's uh, we've had ups and downs. I think that's fair to say as, as you do in all motorsports. Um, you know, we've got Sebastian Corkin who's leading Mini Max Championship yeah. at the moment, which is great. Zach Bolton's having a fantastic run as well. Steve Gilly was sitting in the top spots in the early part but unfortunately with a broken ankle he's going to have to miss the rest of the season it's um you know it's a tale of two halves you get really excited for those who who have the good results but then you've got others like andy ambrose who who should have had a lot better year and the pace hasn't you know the results haven't shown the pace so it's um it's hard to to see so many do so well and then at the same time see ones that you'd like to see do better struggle it's about balance i suppose and you know not everyone can have the best weekend but we just try to give them the set up that the advice that they need to so they can go out there and do the best they can and i know it's challenging louis but is it enjoyably challenging it is when we when we come away i think it's what it's you know it's <laughs> what you mean like on the monday yeah when you look back <laughs> yeah. on the monday and you think you know i did have a good weekend there but at the time it, it, it is stressful and um, there's a lot more pressure on it than i expected right. but it's it's a new challenge it's, it's going to get easier as we go along we, you know we're not done yet we're only just getting started and, and the plan is to get bigger and stronger and develop the, the team we've got we're not out looking there you know, maybe find someone who you'd think's a, a bang on winner and, and get them a free sticker kit. That's not what we're after. We wanna we wanna take the mid pack drivers, we wanna drive them towards the front and challenges come with that, stress comes with that and, and bad weekends come with that, but that's what it's all about. Thanks, Louis. So guesting here at the O plate of Wilton Mill with NKC is another class of carts, what we haven't seen before. It's the KZ class. Exactly the same as what we normally see, engine, four wheels, however, a little bit different. It's got a gear shifter and we've got gears. So quite a handful around Wil Wilton Mill, I would imagine. Bailey Regalsford, who is the driver of this cart. Bailey, it's fabulous to have KZs here. It's fabulous, personally, to see KZs anywhere. I've got to say, when I see these things fire off the grid, they remind me of fireworks. <laughs> So what's it like driving a firework? Well, uh, moving to this from Rotax definitely uh, picks up a bit more speed. Uh, I think we're doing about 88 miles an hour here. 88 towards Christmas Corner? I think so, yeah. Wow. I'd have to look, but I think that's what I saw. Um, but the front brakes, they, they 
the anchor on and just the feeling of them, how you drive them, I much prefer them. Oh, I'd never look back to Rotex. Well, I was going to say there, you've, you've mentioned something quite key. So on a Rotex Max car, you've got one brake disc on the rear axle. Mm. In these KZs, you've got two brake discs on both front wheels. So that will give you a, a massive braking efficiency. Yeah. Um, it's definitely and also stable. Yeah, very stable. Um, keep it in a straight line. Yeah. You just brake hard and then let it off into the corner. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a different technique to learn. And lot, a lot busier, um, you know, you, you, on a Rotax Max, I mean, I, I know I'm making this sound simple, but you've got a brake and a throttle to think about. Mm. But here, you're, you're, you're shifting up and down all the time. Are you, are you driving literally this whole track one-handed? Uh, yeah, especially <laughs> here, so tight, constantly up and down the gears. Um, yeah, we had a practice day. I had to just spend the morning learning which gear for which corner. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and what are you looking for with regards to the gears? Is it, you know, is it about keeping the engine on song? Yeah, so these engines don't have any power valves, um, so you have to keep them revving. Uh, sometimes you can find yourself in between, corner, uh, in between gears for the corner. All right. Uh, so we have to work that one out. Yeah. <laughs> lot of, I mean, a lot to think about. You said, I'll never go back to Rotax, but surely after driving these things, going back to Rotax would be like a, like a tea party. Yeah, it's almost boring. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 It's like driving a manual for a car. Why would you want to go auto? Yes. Well, I drive an automatic, but I'm a lot older than you. Um, uh, the other thing I want to mention, and, and if Ash, Ash, just have a look around this cart. Now, the preparation, this cart has been out on track. Now, you wouldn't think it. You would think that, you know, if you look in here around the rear axle where the bearings are and the seat mounts, the exhaust you would think that that cart has just been unwrapped from cellophane. Now, who's that down to, that standard of prep? Because you have been out in this, Bailey, haven't you? Uh, yeah, well, I've even fired it off in the first corner, so uh, she's looking pretty clean. Yeah, so who's, who's that down to? Who's helping you? Oh, my dad. Always my dad, keeping everything clean. That's his job. Ash, there's Dad behind me, over my left shoulder. That is a cracking job. You could get a job in Formula One with that standard of OCD. What's your dad's name? Uh, Carl. Carl, mega, awesome. Um, the weekend, it's a one-off event. We're not talking about championship, so, you know, is, does that give you an easier mindset regarding the racecraft? Uh, definitely. I'm just here for a bit of fun. Right. Uh, I know a lot of people on the grid, so we're just having a mess around. Um, it's going to be a long weekend, though. It's, it's a hard job driving a shifter here. So, so, in, so I mean, you're a young man and you're very, you look very fit. Is this more physical than a, than a Rotax? Yeah, you definitely feel really? it. Yeah. Right. Um, it's a bumpy track and just right. trying to keep it pinned over the bumps is a bit scary. And yeah, just driving it one handed over the bumps here as well yeah. makes it difficult. Yeah. I think Bailey likes the challenge of these fireworks and we yeah. look forward to seeing you out there. And just to remind everybody standing start, clutch start, standing start, engine rise, and off you go. Yeah, you don't see that often here. No, 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 you don't no. see that often at all. Well done, Bailey. Thank you for the chat. And uh, again, I can't emphasise just how mega that... You're a very lucky man to have, Carl, yeah. behind the scenes. Thank you, guys. Right, driver here, Caius Zingmata from the Junior Rock Tax class. Caius has joined us for the NKC Oplate here at Wilton Mill. And it's the first time Caius has raced with the NKC. Caius, you've just been telling me you normally race at your home track, Bayford Mill. Yeah. Yep. Bayford Meadows, that's where I normally race Bayford at. Bayford Meadows, sorry, I said Bayford Mill. Yeah. Um, is this your first time out on these Maxxis tyres? No, I normally race on these at Bayford right. and Buckmore and that, so I'm a bit familiar with these. So what's brought you to the all plate here for NKC? The team, really. They just want me to try out, get things started in NKC and go along. Right, and the team is Rolf Racing. Have yeah. you, do you race with Rolf at Bayford Meadows? Yeah, I race with them everywhere, really. Right, right. Everywhere I can. So is this a bit of a, a, a research mission to maybe join us in the NKC for a full season next year? Yeah, I'm, I am planning on joining NKC next year, right. try and do the full season and maybe a bit more. Right. So it's just a start. That'd be good. Um, is this your first time at Wilton Mill then? Yeah, this is my first time. Uh, it's going pretty well. We'll see what we can do tomorrow. Right. What do you think of the track? Lovely. A bit bumpy though. Is it bumpy, is it? <laughs> yeah. Right. So where, where do you expect, where will Kai, as Zygmata, be happy with on Sunday afternoon, finishing-wise? Obviously, everyone wants P1, but 
you got to be realistic. I'm hoping for a top ten at right. least. Okay. All right. And are you familiar with mixed grid racing? Yeah, I've done a bit of it at Buckmore and that. Uh, I've done quite a bit of like going through the grid at Buck Bayford. So right. I'm familiar with overtaking. Right. We'll see how it goes tomorrow, though. So when you see you're with Rualf Racing, do you have uh, uh, one of Rualf's mechanics checking over your cart and prepping your cart for you? Yeah, I have Jason Rolf checking over the cart like, right. every single second just to make sure that I'm proper ready. Right, and so you obviously have ultimate faith in Jason and yeah. his judgment regarding setups and stuff? Yeah, he's a top man, really. So you just have to drive? Yeah, that's basically it. That's Do what he says. Yeah. Get on track. Yeah, and go as fast as possible. Yeah. That's easy, really isn't it? I mean, it sounds easy, <laughs> but yeah. it takes a lot of to do it so well you are having fun Caius aren't you yeah I'm having a lot of fun today yeah brilliant. especially in the rain yeah brilliant brilliant he's going to continue having fun all weekend thanks guys thank you right here we are at Wilton Mill for the Oplit for AKC but Wilton Mill is also the home of championship winning Dan Holland Racing and it seems that all of these mechanics here this weekend have just kind of broken into the workshop and are going to race all of Dan Holland's carts. I know that's quite not, not quite the case. Uh, Jamie Zira here. Did say that right, or is it Zira? Yeah, Zira. Zira. Jamie Zira, you may remember for the last round here at Wilton Mill, again, home ground. Jamie, you absolutely blitzed the 177 class. But before I talk to you about that, your mate here, what's your name? Uh, Callum Porter. Callum, you are a mechanic. You work for Dan, Dan Holland. Let's step in here. He works for Dan Holland. Callum, you're on your weekend off. What have you decided to do? Going to come into work and go racing ourselves. <laughs> so you're going to put into practice everything you tell your young drivers to do out on track. We're going to see if you can do it, aren't we? Yeah, give or take. Hopefully too many of them aren't watching this. We can, but yeah. <laughs> Mate, we'll there's going to be 10 million viewers watching this, right? So the pressure is on for you to prove out there on track. So no pressure at all, really. No, no, none at all. We'll, we'll give it a go. Right, you were, you were crying that you're supposed to be out on track yeah. a second ago. Well, off, off you go. <laughs> Jamie, I want to talk to you a bit more because last round here for the, for the third round of the NKC here at Wilton Mill, yeah. you came in. We'd never seen you before. No. There you were with your Dan Holland racing overalls on. So yeah. I knew you kind of must know what you're doing, but there was a bit yeah, of a backstory as well. Yeah, you know, I'm being... <laughs> yeah. But there was a bit of a backstory. Tell us about that backstory because... You were somewhere else on the Saturday and you turned up on the Sunday, is that right? Yeah, so we, was, uh, we'd done a couple of days testing and I wanted an extra day and uh, the Le Mans race finished on the Saturday. So I drove back from Le Mans, got home at one o'clock and come and done the race on the Sunday. So when you say Le Mans race, what exactly, what championship was that? Uh, the International Trophy. Right, and who were you running there for Dan? Uh, Timo Jungling. I was right. mechanic for a junior. Yeah. So you were mechanic for Timo Jungling, yeah. for Dan Holland Racing. Yeah. When the race finishes, I'm just going to get this clear in my mind, everybody. You get in the van car yeah, and car. drive back to Wilton Mill. Yeah, I drove back to Wilton. Got here at one o'clock in the morning. And grabbed some sleep and then got up and, and then went into the race meeting. Yeah, that's right. And you made it look easy. Uh, it wasn't easy. <laughs> but I, I had a bit of luck, but yeah. Right. Yeah. The last heat was, was wet and I start, that was my middle start and I had a little bit of luck in the heat that was at the back. All right, so. I, th I think you've been very modest there, Jamie. Um, what, what's, so what's your background? Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you are here working for Dan Holland. Uh, well, I've been racing since I was like, well, I think I started in a car when I was seven. Right. So I've done a lot of racing. And then when I finished uni, I just started working for Dan. Right. As a mechanic? and yeah, it, I just never stopped really coming to the track. I, I, would, I would think, you know, having raced yourself when you're passing that on to young drivers like Timo Jungling, uh, it helps having an understanding and insight as to how, how to do it. Yeah, still they don't listen sometimes. Though. <laughs> of course they don't, they're kids. You yeah. didn't listen when you were in. Definitely not. No. No, many arguments with my dad. So I'd like to know, you know, here you are doing the O plate. You were there at the last round. Are we going to, I mean, you know, we're only halfway there in the championship. You could, theoretically and mathematically, you're, you're in with a chance of winning a championship. Uh, I think oh, I don't. I don't know. There's only what is there two rounds left? Three. There's a three rounds left. Is there three or two? No, I think there's only two rounds two left. Two rounds left. Yeah. Two rounds. Yes. It'd be a big push. Well, you, you know what? You, what we saw of you at Wilton Mill. Um, not only that, but this weekend the all plates all about the win, and I suppose you just have to do what you did last month. Yeah, it would be nice. We'll see if I can do that. Can you do that? Uh, I'm going to give it my best. 
Absolutely. Jimmy, it's a pleasure to meet you. That was a great story. I wish I would have been all over that uh, last month, but uh, I'm going to leave you to get on with your session. Thanks, lads. One of the most popular classes from both off the track and on the track is uh, the TKM class, and they're back. They're back at Wilton Mill for their O plate. And Joe Jacks, I saw you out at the first round, Joe. You took part in the yeah. first round of the NKC, but um, your day job has kept you away from us until this O plate. But you've got an interesting day job. Um, you're living the dream, aren't you? Tell us what that is. Um, so I'm chair, chief mechanic for Carlin on British F4. Um, could say it's a dream, it's quite, quite hard work, but yeah, um, yeah no, I say it's really good. No, it is a dream. You work at it, you live at a racetrack, so yeah. So how's the Carlin season going? Uh, it's going well. Um, currently leading the team championship, uh, very close, but we are leading the team championship. And then uh, we've got a driver in second and third in the championship, so we're just chasing now the leader in the last two rounds, hopefully. So. And I mean, mega uh, working for a guy like Trevor Carlin, who's been there, done it, he's got so many t-shirts. Oh yeah, he's got he's got all the stories. If you want a motorsport story, he's, he's yeah. definitely got it. So yeah, yeah, no, he's brilliant. Well, here you are at Wilton Mill, and you're in the driving seat, not in uh, not holding the spanners. Um, so tell us, um, you you must be looking forward to racing again. Oh yeah, but we've not been in the seat since Wigan. I just it's just nice to be back in the seat. To be honest with you, just nice nice weekend away with the parents and. And yeah, just looking forward to it, especially with the three day event as well. Like, you, you get you certainly get your money's worth of it. So, yeah, so not a team of mechanics around your TKM cart, is there? Just you and your dad fettling it? Yeah, just me and my dad. It has been since I was racing 12 years ago. So, um, I just find it the nicest way, just spending time. So, is um, is Wilton Miller track that you're familiar with? Uh, yeah, I've done it quite a bit over the years. Um, still want to. I'd probably say one of the most challenging, I'd say. Um, but yeah, I've done it. I've done it sort of regularly for the past few years. So yeah, I do do enjoy it. We're very physical and uh, technical as well. So, um, I mean, Wilton Mill as a track is it's renowned for close racing, which brings drama and incident. And this weekend is all about the win. So you know, what's it going to take? Uh, I think it's just sticking with a pack. If you can stick with a pack and uh, and keep in the slipstream, then you've always sort of got a chance. And then and then take your opportunities while you can. Really, with, with the TKM has been so close engine wise, it's it's just about being in that pack. Um, and then yeah, just taking your opportunities where you can. Really. So, so where, where will George Axe be happy with come Sunday afternoon? Uh, I'll be happy in that pack. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to be in that lead pack, basically. But yeah. yeah. And anything else is a bonus. So. Yeah. Great to have you back. Best of luck with Carling Motorsport for the rest of the season. And best of luck this weekend, Joe. Thanks for joining us.
afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Wilton Mill. Oh, my goodness. Good Are you ready for this, everybody? Well, we've, we've, had, we've had everything so far, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I did see that coming into this uh, NGC all play, it was going to be full of incident and drama. Well, we've had incident and drama of the like of uh, I didn't even I didn't expect. But we've sorted that out with you at a few... Uh, a bit of trap maintenance going on before we get things underway, so we apologise for the slight delay. We've got the first of our B finals. Now, it's Junior Rotax B final, of which we have six drivers, only four of which will qualify through to the A final, coming up later. So it's all about that fifth, fourth and fifth place. At the moment, Freddie, the Freddie Theobald and Harvey Williams are on the front row. Byron Scott Simmons and Ellis Warlock are on row two. Then we've got Lewis Crocker. He's on the edge of that uh, qualification with Abdurrahman Sheikh uh, alongside in sixth place. We've lost Curtis Latimer. I hope you get well soon. <coughs> Curtis, I know you've got a bit, a bit of a slight injury uh, that you've pulled out on. But right now, Nick, we're about to get underway. We have got a quarter of six, four to qualify. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's all so about the win. It's all about the fourth, actually, this one. Yeah. It's not about the win. It's not about the win, actually. It's not about the win, no. no you, 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 about you, your, your catchphrase no longer applies. They're off, and they're running in the first of our B finals at the O plate, and they sweep into the void. No, no, no. Oh. Yeah, they didn't get too close to the, uh, the raised drain, uh, which is now screwed down by seven hefty screws. Lovely break by the uh, red and white car, which I assume is Harvey Williams. And the, the fact that the top fourth, we've got a microscopic gap now towards fifth. So... Um, yeah, it is Harvey Williams in the 22 through Ashby first. Then the rest of the field. First four. Look at that. Already we've got somebody gesticulating. I think that's Ellis Warlock in, uh, in second place telling the driver behind, come on, let's work together. Let's work together. And let's work together is not what we're doing. <laughs> the 64 there, Freddie Theobald. He's currently third in that uh, blue and yellow car. It's the one behind him, the purple one. That's, I think, Byron Scott Simmons, the number six. Oh, no, no, it's Abdul Rahman Sheikh. He's the final qualifier, and already... Dropping the other two. Drop, dropping Crocker. Yeah. Dropping Ab Byron Scott Simmons. He is. As Abdul the lead of this changes, and the all-silver cart of Ellis Warlock in the 99 cart. Yep, he's got a flake on that. Comes in. So that purple and white cart there, Abdul Rahman Sheikh, is the last qualifier for the year final. At least for the final two rules of the grid. Now, OK, you could argue, it, you know, we've been saying it's the your play, it's all about the win. But sometimes it's all about just being there and being part of the event. Mm -hmm. And if you've had a bad day, you know, you've come into this. With, and I've been to places where I knew I had no chance of winning, Nick. I was, you know, didn't have the pace. And it's just part of being part of this event. And that's what these four drivers now that are in that quali those four qualifying positions, that's what they want to do. They want to be part of the air final coming through. Byron Scott Simmons there making a move on, or trying to make a move on Lewis Crocker. Oh, needs to change the timing method. Hang on a second. Can you talk for a second? Yeah, of course I can. Um, the gap, by the way, to um, between Abdurrahman Sheikh and Lewis Crocker was 1.3 seconds across the line. Um, and it, Lewis Crocker and Byron S Scott Simmons, not quite, about four tenths the difference. 48.5 for Scott Simmons. So he's only a couple of tenths. Off the uh, off the times of, of Sheikh. Well, what I will say is, if you want to get yourself a lot of TV time, um, start badly but stay fourth. So you have a bad qualifying and come fourth and be fine. Look at this; it's, it's like non-stop number sixteen all over the screen. Yeah, you got a hood on. Uh, no, <laughs> I think that's a neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> racing in a hoodie? No, he's not racing. There's a, woman, there's a, there's a woman walking past us. He's got the most marvellous deportment. That really works on television, that. No, I'm just saying, you know how occasionally you, 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 there's things that walk past the, um, the, the screen, you see dogs, and you see this, and you see that, and you see racing mums, and there's, there's a lady, she, you know, she's I don't know, probably about 45, and she's got the most marvellous deportment. It's, it's, it's a completely non-statement about any apart from just she's got a fab, it's just, right, so honestly. Things are settling down there. Shall I get her in? Do you want to well, talk about that? I can't really talk about deportment. Just, just do I? yoga. Uh, I mean, your wife's a yoga teacher. Well, no, it's like Is that why you notice that sort of Yes, yes. I like, get pointed out this, you know, how people... Um, how people hold themselves. Yes. I'd like to make out that as a complete that comment before I get in trouble. It's good. all right. All right. We know I'm being heckled by the producer. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll keep going. I've, I've had my, 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 my first segue of the day. Yeah, I think we'll stop there. Here we go, fourth uh, and fifth yeah, together. We've got that. That's because Byron Scott Simmons, who is quicker, uh, proved to be quicker than Lewis Crocker, has now moved up onto the rear bumper of the number 16. So Sheik really needs to 
get to grips with this number 16 cart that he's really driving with some aplomb sideways on the exit is never perhaps the quickest way but Abdul Rahman is doing all he can Byron Scott Simmons on the bright yellow cart is that a Ruaf racing cart it is indeed no, Ruaf racing oh it'll be inside but no no not this time I think it's coming I think Scott Simmons has a bit of pace mm. top three away that's Ace yeah. Warlock Harvey Williams and Freddie Theobald well, he's Abdul the, Rahman no he, he, he's the drag up the Christmas corner Scott Simmons mm. breaks slightly later but just not enough to make that move and almost going side by side through um, through Inkermans. Adam Rowan wasn't, wasn't on the right line for the run down from Inkermans to Ashby, but I didn't see Byron Scott Simmons was able to take advantage of it. He, he could have really cut back and tried to go up the inside. I think he's looking for a clean move. I think he probably has the same confidence that, the, that he can get past. He's waiting for a nice clean move. But yeah, a little bit of oversteer there yeah, through the boot. Once again, Oops. he's got a bit of acceleration. And I think this is going to go all the way, all the way to the flag because Byron Scott Simmons, who is quicker, he just hasn't got. He hasn't. He's not quick enough. Oh, he's got the drive this time. Oh, he's got, he's the got drive. drive. Yes. yes. After Raman's shake, moves to the left, and Byron Scott Simmons moves through. Nice cut back by no, Shake. That was that tried was, it, but yeah, that was all about coming out of crooks, wasn't it? Mm. Keeping your foot in, carrying all those revs all the way up that long straight because you need as much power as you can get. That's quite a steep hill towards Christmas. And already they're now breaking away. Um, got a great battle for the lead uh, with the three leaders coming through the final turn. As Byron Scott Simmons there takes control of that final qualifying position. Let's jump forward, Paul, if we can, to the three leaders. Ellis Warlock, Harvey Williams and Freddie Theobald. Here they go. Oh, all over the it's shop, a ding yeah. dong. OK, lad, you know you're qualified. But it's who qualifies where, well, and the, the glory of having their picture taken by Gaz Bury. You say that on the first big page. Yeah, that's, that is a, a, a big, a big. It's, it it's is. like winning. It's all about the winning. Um, but the thing about it is, is that you don't qualify if someone punts you off and you're sitting in the grass, well, or you punt yourself I mean. off. This is what I mean. Steady, steady, boys. Realistically, they are racing, and as you say, this is a, this is a fun race for them. It's, it's yeah, they're not going to be winning. they're not going to win the uh, the A final from the back of the grid unless you know there's a, there's a typhoon or something happens and sweeps the top thirty carts off the track. So if you enjoy this now, and um, just drifting around the line, all three of them oh, come back side swinging. By side, three wide. Oh. That's not all oh, too wide into mm. Crooks. <laughs> Thankfully, they sort themselves out for the exit. Freddie Theobald. Oh, oh on the no, grass. no, you don't break on that. Yes, but Theobald found himself being squeezed. He wasn't quite alongside, was he? He's going to have to be careful there. Carried momentum. Most amazing thing, he actually has some grip in the grass. I don't know. So some of these two the other the eye oh, racing developers. Got, got him. 22, got him. sliding wide. Got him, yeah. Freddie Theobald taking advantage, coming out of Ashby. Ellis uh, Warlock has taken advantage of both of them by uh, pulling away. Yeah, because these two have been squabbling. Wheels on the grass, going wide on curbs. All yeah. of that will slow you down. Yeah, the wheels on the grass go round and round, but they provide any full momentum. We're inside the final minute, but at 56 seconds... These guys are lapping in 46s, so it's going to be two more laps after this one. Up towards Christmas, Theobald coming back. It was Theobald that started on the pole position in that bright yellow and blue cart. The rough racing driver. I think that's rough racing. I have mm. my eyes don't deceive me. It's yeah, those colours. They're, the right they're, they're no, very, very, well, they're very, very lively colours and very similar. Yeah, I don't think it is, though. There's a, this flurry yellow and blue uh, disease has to be stamped out in karting. I know, I know. Give us a bit there of... Are, uh, there's, uh, there's green. There's... Orange. Orange. There's we've got, red. We've got quite a few orange and red cuts. There's there. deep blue. There's magenta. There's all these other colours you could use. Oh, battle for the lead. Beginning to heat up. Freddy Theobald has found his composure. The carts come right back to him. It'll be the one lap to See go that. board next time. by. Look at that. Ellis Warlock having to defend in the Christmas... Now then, there's no doubt about it that Freddie Theobald... Now, these three have qualified. These three are into the year final. Mm. There's, no qu there's no quibble here. I'm going to take a look at that uh, nose cone of the number 84. Sorry, 64. That looks, uh, looks as though it's dropped. So Theobald needs to have five seconds, which he has. Abdurrahman Sheikh, 9.8 seconds behind. 
One lap to go. Ellis Warlock leads into the final lap of the... Do the, do the calm heads come on now? Junior? Or is that picture no. with Gaz just too, too alluring? It is. Ellis Warlock's heading towards getting his picture in Facebook as the B final winner of Junior Rotax. If he can maintain that position. Meanwhile, Freddie Theobald will qualify also for the year final. Along with Harvey Williams and Byron Scott Simmons. Abdurrahman Sheikh has learnt a big lesson there. He learnt a lot in those early laps of just doing all he could, trying his best. Oh, and there's uh, Theobald coming back at Warlock and another little nudge on the rear bumper through the boot. And there's the picture. <laughs> there's the picture. Ellis Warlock takes the B final win. Freddie Theobald finishes in second. Harvey Williams third and the final qualifier into the A final, just crossing the line now. Byron Scott Simmons, there's Abdul Rahman Sheikh crossing the line. And then our final runner in Junior Rotax is indeed Lewis Crocker. Well done to those yeah, youngsters. We'll morning, see yeah. them in the year final. So only a couple of people have, only a couple of people have their days ended, so it's uh, everyone else it's all to play for in the O final, because oh, oh, final on the O player, because it's all about the win, as as we know. <laughs> Did you just say the O final? The O final. It's been all O final. Yes, already. So, B final for Junior Roll Tax complete. Senior Roll Tax 162's B final coming next. And we had eight, we've got eight qualifiers, but only seven carts, I know for a fact, will be taking part in this as Andy Ambrose, the number 55, has pulled out. He had a big knock um, yesterday, yesterday, took part in the warm up this morning, uh, still too battered and bruised, and he. Uh, pulled out. He pulled out. Very wise, very wise mornings. and mature decision, I think. Yeah, he's I think always so. keen to carry on going, so. going, keep yeah. going, keep going, keep going, and, and he, he go, no. And and Andy's uh, been a big part of the uh, of the Junction Six NKC. He knows he's got to get fit for the next round. Mm. He'll always yeah, hopefully go. Go. he'll also hopefully be a big part of our Autumn Cup at Warden Law. That's right, the Autumn Cup Warden Law. Uh, there'll be all sorts of information about over the socials to look out, and we'll be on the Casting Live page, it'll be on the NKC Drivers page, it'll be on the car, and we're going to, oh, I'm even doing a video to give you the information to do it with. We might have to put some lead on his car so he runs in the 177 class, but I'm sure they'll sort that out. I'm sure we'll sort that out for Andy. Right, then. take some lead out of me to get so I can run the 177. Who we got? Yeah, I'd love to be able to take some lead off me to run at 177. Um, Matt Lewin on the pole position, Sam May alongside. Michael Goodburn is on row two with Marcus King. And then we've got Tom Patterson with Mohammed bin Mahfouz Just on that then, third row. Again. And have we got six, have we? Mm. So I'm not sure who we got. Right, so we're missing. We are missing Jack Hears Roberts and Andy Ambrose. Um, I thought we would. So another six cart race, another all about fourth and fifth, the battle. That's the final qualifier. So right in that frame right now, Tom Patterson, Sam May, Marcus King and Mohammed bin Mahfouz. Here we go, we get things underway. Oh, it's a great Ooh, start from the 36, blimey. Matt Lewin. Just around the outside. The space there. You what, sorry? Uh, the guy in the fourth just moved into space that wasn't there and suddenly it appeared as he uh, shuffled his way into uh, oblivion. Oh, Marcus King round the outside and into second there. Great move by the youngster. Marcus King finds himself in second place. Oh, and side by side through Ashby. There's contact there but, with... Yeah, um, Tom Patterson and Sam May there coming together. Tripping over. Red flag. I've got a red flag, did I hear? From... No. Someone said red flag in the background. Sorry about that. No, no, no. Yeah. Don't say red. Someone said behind. Said it, didn't they? Definitely. Definitely. There is no red flag. There are one, two, three, four, five, six carts trolling along the main back straight. So one lap completed, Nick. Matt Lewin, Marcus King, Tom Patterson, Mohammed Bin Mafuz, Michael Goodburn and Sam Mee. Now the gap between Maf Bin Mafuz, who is the final qualifier, is three tenths. Let's call that four. That's the number 82 there. Now Sam, of 62 Sam and Michael still Goodburn. Running? Or have we lost one? No, we've lost one out of five. Lost me. Right. So there's only four carts, five carts running for four spots. At this point, not qualifying is a little bit embarrassing. Well, <laughs> you know, you've still got to finish fourth. Yes, but I'm saying it's like you know, there's an 80% chance you'll get through. So there's the 62, Michael Goodburn. Who he is in fifth. Yeah, he's in fifth place. He needs to catch Mohammed bin Mahfouz. He's got a very relaxed style, hasn't he? He has, yeah. Yeah, very very generous of movement there which is exactly what you've got to do he's got a deranged Nassau panel as well it's slightly he? worrying it's slightly to the cock on the left 
So Matt Lewin leads, Marcus King second. Looking comfortable, those two. Tom Patterson equally so. And if anything, Mohamed bin Mahfouz looking equally comfortable in fourth. Do you However, think Mahomes... Mahom, I better not say this. I was going to say that we probably will get me in trouble if I won't say it. Well, Michael Goodwin... Just his number 666, that's all. <laughs> well, the number of... Exactly. I just wanted to be Mahomes... Mohamed bin Mahfouz, I'm assuming that Mohamed, therefore, is putting in a certain Muslim. I'm one of these trolling evangelical Christians by being 666. <laughs> Here we go, nice. Tom Michael Goodburn catching and catching. Bin Mafuz there alongside. Whoa. It was all about momentum through Crooks. He's alongside into the breaking area. Who's going to sit it out? Bin Mafuz has to slot in behind. So a change for the final qualifier. It's Michael Goodburn who now moves up to fourth place. And that number 666 of Bin Mafuz is now our fifth place cart and the first of the non qualifiers. I was about to say, Nick, mm -hmm. he was looking very comfortable. I don't think his cart's handling very well, to be honest. No, it seems to have gone off a bit, doesn't it? We've only had three minutes of this B final, so whether or not... Oh, I mean, ouch, he's got, ouch, he's got no ouch, grip, has he? Ouch. He's got no grip. Mm. Is he, has he, he pressed his tyres all wrongly? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. The tyres have just gone. Yeah, the car, the car was great there. So in the he, started with, he started too high. It had been good early on, and they just got yes. too hot, too yeah. big, and then he just gone. Yes, that's exactly what's happened there. We'll but give him some camera time, though. Yeah, why not? He's, had a, he's here at the ore plate. I'm not. Well, I am, but I'm just talking about it. And he's, uh, he's no doubt you know, enjoying driving. When did the ore plates, have ore plates always happened? Was it like a recent, like, last 15 years sort of thing? No, no, no. It's been around since <laughs> it's Irish car. The ore plate was a big thing. Remember when we did the um, the British Championship, the MSU? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was it. That was the airplane the Rotax, wasn't it? Yeah. That was the Rotax classes, wasn't it? Mm. And we had Joe Taylor coming out of retirement and taking the O-plate in 177s, purely because it was wet yes. on slicks. And he's been driving around that track since he was five, <laughs> which he wasn't even allowed to do at that age. And it was shut for some of the years. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, we had no car competition car in there for some of the years. But he'd been, he's now 30-odd, and he's been driving there for since he was five. So knows way around then. All about the wet line. Knows where the grip was for sure. But uh, yeah, the old plate's been a big part of karting. It was, uh, you know, it, it, at one point, you know, the old plate was. Go back big. to the front. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's go to the top the three because it's not really happening behind at the moment. So let's go back to the front. Well, they come through. That's and look Whoa, at that. Marcus oh, King's drifting. Twenty-six. Well, that's because he hit the curb on the inside. <laughs> he doesn't want to be doing that. That must have hurt. Getting well, they're very young, fit men with rear protection, but it didn't hurt. It hurt if I'd done it. Getting very, very. Ragged there is Marcus King, and he puts a wheel on the dirt there. He needs to be careful here, Nick. He's qualified for the year final, but Marcus King getting very ragged indeed and almost losing out to Tom Patterson there. He needs to perhaps compose himself a bit more. He was right on the back bumper of Matt Lewin, and now that he settles down, he's pulled away a little bit from Tom Patterson. Mm. So, Matt Lewin leading this B final Marcus King right on his tail they've pulled away from Tom Patterson now two and a half minutes remaining first and second nailed together he can't get a, in, old fa in old fashioned times you wouldn't be able to get a cigarette paper between I'm not sure what the modern thing is now no I'm one's allowed sure. to make roll ups yeah. yeah you can't get a single page of 80, gra 80, <laughs> 80 grain A4 paper between them you know what, this is uh, looking a bit spicy with two minutes to go. I'm pretty sure these three will know that they've qualified. It's just now what bragging on us, isn't it? Mm. Getting your face in Facebook. Do you, know what, do you know what the GSM means in paper paperweights? No. It's grams per square metre. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, comes in really useful <laughs> in karting, huh? Well, look, you know, when the race is less than, isn't quite so dramatic, we can, I think we can, we can be like the BBC oh, in the form BBC. and everything else. Yes, yes, well, it might not be dramatic for you, but it's certainly looking dramatic for these three. Matt Lewin crossing the line two tenths. And now there, Marcus oh. King moves to the outside. With the snake there Matt on the Lewin breaking. needs to be careful here. He's going to be seen to be driving overly defensive if he's not careful. Moving across to the right, then fainting across to the left. Mm. Some officials like perceive that and, and interpret that in a different way to other officials. And depends who you've got on the day. And how official they are. Yes, and well, what their, what their thoughts are of defensive driving. Uh, Matt Lewin 
he's on, you know what they're driving very very quickly these three three boys mm. um, Mohammed bin Mahfouz back into fourth place by the way oh no how's that? what's happened here no he's not no he's not he is on the screen that's very weird isn't it he is on the screen oh, there's a timing hang on let me reset the timing yeah. right good yeah yeah that wasn't that wasn't right so Michael Goodburn was the is still the final qualifier uh, inside the final minute then and it's Matt Lewin with Marcus King so close you could pitch a tent over them and he's remained that way for the last couple of laps time ticking by if he wants to take the win and Matt Lewin dancing around in that cart left and right making it very very wide indeed Marcus King struggling to now this is where Marcus King has momentum he's far enough back at Oblivion through Crook now he's got momentum but he's ah, he's just broke the tour a bit hasn't mm. he yes he has to slot in and then think... not that far away Nick was Tom Patterson yeah I was wondering whether Patterson's interested in this so he's just going I'm fine in the final or he's actually concerned about anything my feeling is he's probably going to keep watching brief and if he ends up first because they've fallen off great if not whatever oh Marcus King I thought he was going to have a look there they would be saving their tyres, wouldn't you? Just trolling around. Well, they might be. I mean, yeah, obviously they are going to yeah. get they are going to get yeah. a picture from Gaz, obviously, which is amazing. Yeah. Oh, again, into the boot for the penultimate time. It's going to be one lap to go board next time by, and Marcus King has momentum out of the boot, doesn't he? Almost tripping Ooh, over Matt Lewin. Ninety-two. The ninety-two. They're tripping over Matt Lewin, and that's bringing John Patterson back in. If these if these three are not careful, none of them might be in the year final. Last of the lead break as Matt Lewin hangs on to the lead through the kink and then Inkermans over the kerb down into Ashby. He defends across the curbing there down towards Parker, the left hander. Absolutely nose to tail, these two. Ooh. No doubt about it. Marcus King finding a tricky to keep his front bumper off that rear bumper of Lewin side by side into the boot. And a bumper drop would have Can he do the switch back? Can Marcus King do the switch back? They make contact. If he gets the bumper drop, he's out. Yeah, that's right. Well, he, uh, he uh, might not be. But let's see what the finishing positions are. Matt Lewin takes the win. Tenth of a second in it. Marcus King second. Then we've got Tom Patterson, Michael, Michael Goodburn, and then four and a half seconds behind Lewin. Is Mohammed bin Mahfouz, Sammy. We lost at the start. So we'll the provisional qualifiers. I'm going to say that because I'm not sure about that nose. A lot of nibbling um, going on. Yeah, there was nose a, nibbling. It wasn't deliberate. It wasn't deliberate. He was kind of tripping over the uh, Matt Lewin, but Matt Lewin drove a, a cracking race there to keep them back. He everything he knew to keep people behind him. Uh, so Matt Lewin, Marcus King, Tom Patterson. Michael Goodburn are the provisional qualifiers into the A final of the Senior Rotax field. Uh, we've got our B final coming up next for the Rotax 177s. We've got 19 carts in this one. So this is going to be really, really interesting. Uh, Alfie Lawrence on the pole, Billy Clark alongside, Jack Goodyear and jo Tom Thompson are on row two. We then got Stuart Dixon and Steve Stewart on row three. Row four is Seb Bolton and Adrian Smith. We've then got Nicholas Walker and Tom Eldridge. Matt Ogden and Will Milner share rule six. Rule seven is Cameron Marston and Brian McCready. We've got Mark Gilly and Paul Giles on rule eight. Simon Pugh and Colin Campbell on rule nine. And then rounding off 19 cards is Alastair Cunningham. Sweeping round Christmas corner as they trundle round for the start of this. So how many how many stars have we got? Eleven 19. stars. Nineteen, got 19 qualified. Only ten have come out. Yeah. So who have come out? Billy Clark, Jack Goodyear, Stuart Dixon, Seb Bulpin, Steve Stewart, Nicholas Walker, Adrian Smith, Will Milner, Tom Eldridge, Cameron Marson. It's not like a championship round where there's points to be had for where you finish in yeah, the it big final, come out, wouldn't you? No, I, mean, I think there I has don't been know, some you damage. Might, might have had a rubbish there's some damage as well, isn't there? That sort of thing. So you might say, well, rather than risking more damage, I'll. Oh, but they're just trying to save their tyres for the uh, Winter Championships and uh, the Autumn Cup. So it's Stuart Dixon, absolutely. Save your tyres for the Autumn Cup. Yeah. That's Warden Law. November. 10, 11, 12 November. But now it's the uh, B final, the O-plate, Mill NKC. Sweeping through the 
first couple of corners now they're coming up the main straight towards Christmas Corner and it's a nice break by Goodyear and what I like behind it Jack, Jack Thompson was swerving around you know basically fending off an invisible adversary because there's no one behind him it was, oh there's no one here that car showing 46 on the front of that is it the leader yeah, 46. I haven't got 46 on the screen. Is it 16? It's Billy Clark. Is it 16? Billy Clark's not on there. Billy Clark's leading. All oh, right, we've got one more. On the Tony Clark. Yeah, we've Does got it? 11. All right. Uh, so the screen graphic no, hasn't still caught up to the timing screens yet. Oh, there's the four. There's the 46 slowing down. Billy Clark. He led away at the start, and now he rolls to a halt. And now he'll never be on the timing screen. Yeah, he's, uh, that is a shame for so Billy 32 Clark. 32 of Thompson leads. I think a bad day just got worse for me, didn't it? It's yeah. obviously not been a great weekend, and now it's just all got a little bit worse. Oh, he's there now, at the back. So, one, two, three, four. The fourth place cart is where the action is, because that's the final qualifier, and the fourth place cart is what's, what's Stuart, Stuart Dixon, Dixon on the 25. Yeah, but fighting against Seb Bulpin as they went over the line. May have changed. We've got nine runners now, and two have stopped, Billy Clark and Nicholas Walker. So the attrition is high in this B final. <laughs> now you can see it. You can see them pulled off at the side of the road at one point there just on the main straight so there's yellow flags in the back straight at the moment no overtaking and look at this this is the battle for the final qualifier qualification position into the air final of the 177 Rotax field and with six and a half minutes remaining um, no way of calling this one and alongside has gone Zed oh. Bulpin oh and a three wide Will Milner on the 49. Will Milner down the inside of both of them, and he will take fourth spot. And he's got some both. Oh, he had his, I don't know what happened there. Was that, he got a punt? Not really sure what happened there. Massive sideways moment. Yeah, I don't think they've got enough power to do that, have they? <laughs> Not in a try. Yeah. But uh, Will Milner is gapping them with ease immediately in the orange card. Got through. Here he goes. Obviously, what he wants to do is catch up to the uh, groups in front of him, so he can be not the uh, the last person in the uh, bumper position, but someone who's got at least a bit of a cushion. There yes, he is. He's got, yeah, he's got a reasonable cushion there, hasn't he? He's, mm. he's pulled out. However, Seb Bulpin, who has proved to be quick, now moves on to his rear bumper. So Will Milner cannot relax at all. He's going to have to keep that pressure on himself to keep those lap times coming. We've still got five minutes of this B final left. So how come Will just lost his entire lead now? Who's that, sorry? Will Miller just lost his entire lead on one corner. Yeah, he did, yeah. And then Seb Bulpin's back with him again. Well, I think, I think Seb Bulpin certainly had the pace to catch Stuart Dixon. And in the process of overtaking, that's when Will Milner joined the party. So I think Bulpin's got pace. It's now, again, three minutes in. We're seeing optimum tyre pressures which were targeted when you sit when you set the tyre pressures you're targeting this point in the race and that's where we're at right now and Bulpin as after you've said that Nick is uh, is brought back no nope, back again right. he appears to be faster around, around the Christmas corner complex and down Inkerman's and now he's, he's right behind here right behind oof and uh, in fairness Miller made a right pig's breakfast of that braking uh, situation but he kept it in line just about kept rolling forward but they're both gaining on uh, Steve Stewart in third so it's not necessarily all this loss for both these drivers, not like one or none. And we come around through the boot, and once again, Milner's a little bit further ahead of Bulpin, and a little bit closer to Steve Stewart. But uh, I think that's all going to close back up again at different parts of the track. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, where we've got uh, different performance levels. As Milner now looks like he's going to challenge Steve Stewart mm. and really sort of uh, take the pressure off that been in that fourth place is where the pressure is it's the pressure position it's the last qualifying position for the year final come through Ashby Ooh, almost side by side do they slow each other up there's a change do. there is a change there Nick and there's a second, second change he's gone through and he's, and he's unchanged again and again what are you doing and what's happened is Steve Stewart's got away as they both passed and repassed yeah. each other yeah. absolutely Marvellous news for Steve Stewart, and really, what are you doing to the Milner and Bulpin team? I know Milner's just holding on to his bump up place. Bulpin's the one who's thinking, Come on, mate, we could both get in, we could both qualify, we could both be on that O final, we could both be a chance of winning because winning is all that matters. 
Uh, Jay now having an argument with the chair, which is quite I'm in the sun, and it's burning the back of my head. I'm indoors as well. I don't know. We could lower that car- thing a bit more. Oh, what's going on there? I don't know. What's waving, going on they're, there? They're waving to the past and through and stuff. I, don't, I know. I, do not, I have no idea what, what happened to Will Milner there. He just waved him through. He d- maybe he knew he'd lost momentum and that Bolton was going to come through. He kind of knew he made a mistake at uh, Ashby, I think it was. And that's allowed Bolton through. He knew he was going to lose out there. So Will Milner it's slaps it. his own head. It's a big position to get to give away, isn't it? Yeah, it absolutely is. And Final now he's came back at him again. Yes, so he's going to have another bash, which is quite in stuff. Yeah, but really, I don't oh, yeah, We're not racing. We don't know what's going on. Perhaps it wasn't coming together. Perhaps he thought he was going to get himself a, a penalty. Who knows? And so he thought he'd better let it go. I don't think Milner's, I don't think Milner's cart is braking particularly well, to be honest. Right. It does appear to be constantly sideways under brakes where most of the rest of the carts are sticking in line and interestingly Bolpin's gapping Milner with ease now we've got three laps going across the line so yeah there doesn't seem to be Wilner Wilner Will Milner Wilner Wilner I'm sure that Wilner Will Milner has dropped back off the rear bumper of said Bolpin and not able to really make any kind of attempt at getting back on terms he's about three tenths off last time by three tenths off the in fact if anything Milner is dropping back towards the into the clutches of Cameron Marston Marston running through in six Tom Elridge seven Stuart Dixon dropping oh he's gone out he's gone out ah he's got a problem I think it's a braking problem yeah he's got some issue there hasn't he I think Milner has a braking issue I mean it might be it really is an issue so let's move forward really now massively competitive I don't think I think Bolpin's got a second couple of seconds over fourth as into retirement goes the unlucky Will Milner well Will's all plate meeting is is over he'll be packing up the van or the truck or whatever and uh, hopefully he's enjoyed his time here at Wilton Mill it's now uh, with the third and fourth it's Sayward and Bolpin closest two carts on the trap they both are bumping up they're both qualifying through to the uh, main O plate final yeah Tom Thompson as uh, is still leading this one Jack Goodyear a couple of tenths behind Steve Stewart three and a half seconds behind them on the number 155 and then we've got Seb Pulpin about a second back in fact that's them there the 155 is Steve Stewart in third Seb Pulpin the cart second in that picture Cameron Marson just coming into the background there zero time on the clock means it will be the one lap to go board next time by so Bolpin doesn't appear to be that bothered about getting past uh, Stewart because he knows they're both qualifying and an accident would mean that neither of them will qualify big gap back to the new fifth place now and the first non-qualifier which is Cameron Marston in the 64 cart and you've got Adrian Smith Stuart Dixon and then Tom Eldridge, who are the last of the only eight carts actually running at the moment. Oh, did the, not, the, the no shows and the uh, dis- disappointments and the breakdown. Well, the 177s will be the class that rounds off the meeting, will be the final all plate that we'll be competing for um, later on this afternoon. With one more lap of racing in this B final, these two are the final two qualifiers. They'll qualify on the back of the grid of the 177s so their, their race weekend isn't over yet Tom Thompson Jack Goodyear Steve Stewart and Seb Bulpin will have to regroup have a look at their carts check things over make sure everything's where it should be and then go off and have another enjoyable and the finals remember Nick 12 minutes and one lap 12 so minutes and one lap yeah an extra four minutes of racing and for these guys six finals for the KZ is that right uh, say that again six finals for the KZ isn't it? Uh, is one two Yes, it's clear finals. And we have, uh, we will talk to the winner of the O play after every one of them with our new, uh, improved uh, interviewer, Gaz Burry. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, something we can do at Wilton Mill for the technicals and the ge- geography and of the place. Gaz is two paracetamols away from being absolutely. <laughs> uh, shall we press record? Yes, press record. I can I just say how wonderful I am for remembering? Yeah, that. it wasn't you, was it?
that concludes the B finals. That's what I can say to you now. Now then, this is <laughs> what it's all about, Nick. What, me pressing record? No. <laughs> Paul, could you do me a favour and just put that behind me? Paul, can you do me a favour and bring Put my coffee back? Behind me. <laughs> Paul, can you do me a favour and, and mow my lawn? <laughs> we have got the first ore plate up for grabs now, Nick. We're experienced ore platers. Yeah, this we is are. Our this is our third, third ore plate meeting. Yeah. Yeah. This, is where plate began. Is, are, this is where the relationship began. It began did. with NKC, but that was 100 UK at the time, wasn't it? And NKC was kind of guesting with 100 UK for their ore plate. Oh, it was the other way around, was it? Yeah. All oh, right, okay. Remarkably, the reason we, we got this is because the people who live here had no capacity. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they were too busy. Yeah. Ugh, well, stuff. that's going to cost them at the end. Right. Or Mini, not. Minimax. It's not about you, Nick. I know it's not about me. Minimax. Mini, mini, mini First Sun, up. Sonny Morgan Favourite. on the pole position. Adrian Dixon. He's up quick. Andrew Dixon, even. Adrian. He's his brother who's, who's ghosting for him. <laughs> Harris Roberts and Daniel Hartley are on rule two. Eddie Stewart and Lucy Lovell are on rule three. Max Carlton and Daniel Parsons are on rule four. And rounding off what should be a nine card grid is Riley Thatcher. However, I believe we've only got seven out there, Nick. Sonny yep. Morgan, Andrew Dixon, Daniel Hartley, Harris Roberts, Lucy Lovell, Eddie Stewart and Max Carlton. Yep, the attrition of the weekend has, uh, has paid on a few of these carts. And we are short of a couple of drivers here we come rolling into the start of the race and they're off and running and it's a clean start and looking into oblivion it does like Sonny Morgan's maybe up the inside I'm not no, sure if Andrew's got it Andrew they always pushed it. him very wide oh, out there they, they came through they're three wide Nick Daniel Hartley Sonny Morgan and Andrew Dixon three wide into Christmas corner they sort themselves out, or do they? Is that Eddie Stewart there in fourth, getting in the mix? Yeah, there's a we'll few. We'll see when it sorts it's itself out in the infield. And now looking for a gap there immediately is the 26 cart of... Um, it's Harris Roberts. It's Harris Roberts, yeah, absolutely. Harris Roberts has flew through from... Where was he? He started fourth, on the second row. Yeah, fourth. Yeah, fourth place. Right, so he's, he's got a bit of a gap, a couple of carts lengths. Dixon has Sonny Morgan down the inside at the Ooh! and contact already. And that's and their that ore plate gone. Is their ore plate over Sonny Morgan who came into this final as the favourite and a move there has not come off. It's a battle now between Harris Roberts and Eddie Stewart on the 45. So what happened? Just very aggressive young, young drivers. The two favourites, the 25 and the 27, come together and open up the O plate to the entire field because unless there's a red flag and they regroup, there's no way they'll catch that back no, up again. They've resumed. They've, they've pulled on. Well, a different, pulled back a on. different red flag causation. So I there they go. Right, so leading now, it's the... Uh, Harris Roberts. Harris Roberts in the 43 car. Blue with a bit of purple. Blue helmet. Now, he has a nice, comfortable lead, well, comfortable-ish lead over the, the new and greatly improved commentator... Eddie should. Now, Stuart, this is his chance. This is his chance. He needs to get his head down, forget anything, and just drive the race of his life to become the O-Plate champion. But behind him, Daniel Hartley is also thinking, hang on a second, the two favourites are out. This is fantastic. This is basically, this is Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez crashing on the first lap. And now, suddenly, somebody else can win a race. Yeah, and Daniel Hartley is agreeing with you, Nick, because the number 63 is all over the back of Eddie Stewart, who likewise all over the back of Harris Roberts. Taking a watching brief, as we call it, is Lucy Lovell. In fourth with Max Carlton, glued to her. But this three-car battle for the lead, remember, 12 minutes is the duration. 12 minutes and one lap. They concertina up and come together at the boot. Still nine and a half minutes of this to go. And I'm Anything here. can happen here, Nick. Anything. I, I've got a name for you. Sonny Morgan on the way back. Absolutely driver. He, he gained nine-tenths of a second that lap. He's still not as quick as Andrew Dixon because he's doing 46 9, 47 dead for Sonny Morgan. So slightly quicker as Andrew Dixon he's gaining a, ground. But he's just up the inside. So these two, so these three, they've got a nice time. Unfortunately, the fact that it's 12 minutes, not eight, could be what Sonny Morgan needs to get himself back in the show after the accident on that one. And up the inside now, is that a change of position? They switched back a bit of no. tyre action. They went, they went side by side through Parker. These two battling, Stuart and Hartley, going side by side through corners. You'll notice Harris Roberts is saying, thanks, boys. 
I'm he's gone. rubbing his hands. I'm he's gone. rubbing his hands because he can continue optimising every corner while these two squabble. And also, all the time they're squabbling, that's bringing Lucy Lovell into it, Max Carlton into it, and Sonny Morgan back in. Morgan gained half a second on the lead. The problem Morgan's got is he's got four carts in himself and the leader. Uh, that's going to be a big ask, Nick, even with the, uh, the longer duration of the year finals. It's a big ask for Sonny Morgan to have that off it is. and then have it and catch Harris Roberts. It's not about coming on the. It's not about finishing on the podium. This, it's about finishing in first and carrying the all plate forward. Down the inside has gone Hartley. Yeah, Hartley round it down the oh, inside. Lovell. Oh, oh, a big off. A big off there. That for Lovell. Was, yeah, and Stewart and as well. Stewart. Unfortunately, let's see that one again. And that was Stewart. But he went wide, didn't he? Yeah, he, he got, went pushed wide. Lovell took advantage, but Eddie oh, Stewart was sideways. Yeah, and he came he back was underneath sideways, it. Yeah. That's 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 a that's the definition of racing incident, I would say. Yeah, I think but so. But the thing about that is, Sonny Morgan gets two free passes. He does. Now he's on the back of uh, Max Carlton. Max Carlton behind Daniel Hartley. Dan Daniel Hartley behind Harris Roberts. It's Harris Roberts there, the purple card. The other pub, three and fours where we need Daniel to be Hartley. with the black cart and then the cart behind him, which is Sonny Morgan on his way back after that first lap kerfuffle. He now has to close down the 15 of Max Carlton. But there is a point you make about this. Andrew Dixon actually also isn't out of this. No, he's not. No, he's not. Andrew Dixon's following Morgan through and he's keep lapping slightly quicker, slightly quicker than Sonny Morgan. So as Morgan's catching everybody, Dixon is catching everybody, including Sonny Morgan. Ooh, so man, it's, lot. it's going to be it's going to be quite dramatic. He's moving on to the back of the number 15, Matt Scott, now, who's in third place. Now, Sonny Morgan, he's going to need to get past him very, very quickly. The seven minutes remaining in this all-played fi uh, all final. Seven minutes. And then we crown the Minimax all-played holder for 2023. Now, Sonny Morgan, who started on pole, came into this final very much as the favourite to take this race. But as we know, 12 minutes and one lap is a long race for karting. And anything can happen. Mm. And it did. We had a very, very early incident. That's put Sonny Morgan and Andrew Dixon back down the field. And now the drama is whether Sonny Morgan, Paul Sitter, can catch the rest of the field and indeed catch Harris Roberts. Yeah. Harris Roberts, by the way, Nick, 1.2 second lead. He's lapping quicker and quicker each time by. 46.8 for Harris Roberts. Sonny Morgan... 46.5 yeah, so only three tenths every lap and he needs to gain a bit more than that at the moment of course yeah. he's being his speed is being slightly limited psychologically by uh carton in front of him just a bit for uh, housekeeping both eddie stewart and lucy level unfortunately had to retire after they're coming together obviously with the damage to the, both their carts but they can enjoy uh the rest of the race in the sun but now it's time really for morgan to get going he needs to take Carlton in double quick time is he going to try to this way it went wrong last time but it's more circumspect not trying to get up the inside of the cart going into the boot. Now he needs to, can he dive in and take that inner line running to the pit bend? No, out on the rumble ship. Driving now into oblivion and they'll come up crook now. It must be a case where he's going to try and step out going into Christmas corner this lap. Well, this is where he gathers momentum through crooks and then carries that speed all the way down to Christmas corner. He hasn't quite caught the momentum to pull alongside on Max Galton, so he's got to step in behind and stays there. And mm. if anything, his progress has been stifled somewhat by Carlton, who's having his own race. And Max is as quick as anybody out there on the number 15. Max Doesn't trying to catch Hartley. Hartley trying to catch Roberts. And that gap to the leader has gone out to 1.7 seconds from Hartley. Just got the favourite behind you. Doesn't mean you've got to let the favourite through because nope. you're on the same lap and you are scrapping. But Morgan... And he's... Oh, oh that's not going to do anything. That is not... It, that's going to be a... That will definitely be a penalty. And he's lost the place at 25 now, interestingly. Yeah, he had, yeah, he's making the go. Making the go. Went up the inside. Yeah, just, and bang, yeah. and round he goes. Max uh, Carlton just turned into him, didn't realise he was there. It's always, poking your nose in is yeah. always, you know, likely to cause that. And Sonny Morgan didn't really have a choice, really. He was very, very desperate to make ground, and yeah. that hasn't paid off because Andrew Dixon, who's been the fastest cart on this track, is now moving forward and ahead of him. And it's Andrew Dixon's race to win now, well, if he can catch Hartley and Roberts. Dixon didn't have the ground speed of Morgan, and Roberts is four seconds ahead of him with four minutes to go. Um, there is Hartley in between. Morgan already was shaping up to see if he can get past uh, Hartley. Sorry, Dixon, but it's you know it's a long way to go. But give Morgan his due. He's absolutely sending it 100%, or even more if it was possible. But, you know, it's it's... 
there's been a couple too many incidents. It's just been a mucky race. It's been one of those situations where, you know, he's probably going to sit back and think, ah. But the problem he had was, you know, Max Carlton had, had the speed on the straight. Max Carlton had a couple yeah, of extra yeah, miles Mark, an hour, and that meant yeah. that he couldn't get him in the more obvious That's places. Right. So he had to kind of go, right, I'll try that one in. But, um, yeah, I think Carlton didn't expect him to be there and yeah. came back across at the top end of the boot, and that was it. Now, it was, uh, it was unfortunate. Dixon indicates to Sonny Morgan, let's work together and, uh, and catch win. Daniel Hartley. They've got four seconds to make up in three minutes. And I think that's just too big a, big a ask. Harris Roberts, yeah, who, remember, who remember had a stonking first lap mm. and got into that lead. He hasn't inherited the lead, Nick. That was his. No, no, he was leading, yeah. 27 at Sonny Morgan. Black He's flag. been black flagged for that one. And that means he has to pull in, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it was it black and white flag or black flag? Black flag. Oh, yeah, see, he's been, he's been, he's been yeah, disqualified. Yeah, he's been pulled in, hasn't he, for so that Sonny, move? I think it's two moves, and he's been disqualified. Um, black and white flag is, tra- is a warning for driver behaviour. Black flag is, that's it, you have to stop. So, um, Sonny Morgan may see that next time by two and a half minutes or so on the clock. So that decision has been made, black flag 27, that decision has been made for him. Yeah, you'll see that now, his hand goes up, he's thinking why. He probably thinks he's going to do it. Yeah, 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 I, well, I two, don't know, it's two incidents, isn't it? Two incidents of uh, contact, isn't it? So um, it's not our job to be judgmental on that. What we can tell you the second is Andrew, and third is right Andrew together. Dixon's right on Daniel Hartley. And the gap to the leader, 2.5 seconds, it's come down from four for Dixon two minutes remaining though and he's got to get past Hartley 27 Sonny Morgan needs to be careful here I'm not quite sure why he's doing this because he has acknowledged the black flag which means he should pull it at the end of this lap why is he why is he just going for it well we know he's not he's He's going to be careful here and he'll get a big big if he doesn't pull in there's going to be major issues he tries to argue the black flag you can't argue a black flag You have to come off the track. You have three laps to do it. That's the third lap. He's going to end up in trouble, and he doesn't want to incur the wrath of the NKC officials. And there we go. Down the the inside. Very well. well, well Yeah, yeah, brilliant move from Dixon. Sonny Morgan's getting involved here, and he really shouldn't. He's got a black flag warning. He's got a black flag judgment, I should say. Mm. He should really be backing off and pulling into the pits, should the number 27. Harris Roberts... Long way ahead. 2.7 seconds, in, minute 13 in, to go. In, into the boot now. So let's try and grab our all plate leader. Just coming through the final turn now, Paul. That's him there. Great stuff. Ash. Number 43. Number 43. Leading forward minute. to get a little bit of aero help. 2.8 seconds. His lead over Andrew Dixon in second. There he goes. Up towards Christmas corner. The final stages of this all plate. And has Morgan pulled in? I believe he has. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. I believe he has. So that's it. I'm glad he did that. He's uh, a big part of the Junction Six NKC. Yeah, people and get upset. Uh, I mean, he's probably yeah, very yeah. frustrated. Yeah, absolutely. Here we go, Harris Roberts. Then he's got a wobbly front fairing, hasn't he? Uh, blimey, I'm yeah. not sure that's causing him too much it's distress. Not going to drop us. He hasn't got a five-second penalty. It doesn't look like no, it. it no, looks no. okay. The yeah. Nose, I can't think how he would have been. He's been no. the, 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 the race the entire time. He's, he's got one of his stays as far as the NASA panel. That's about it. He's on his penultimate lap, Nick. He's heading towards the O plate. He just needs to keep it nice and tidy. He's still in the zone. He was still fa- putting and his he was head faster down. Than, he was faster than Dixon that last lap by two tenths. You know, you might think, well, why, why are you breaking so late? Wait, he's in the no, zone. He's it's all about timing. He's got to he's, concentrate. Yeah, he's keeping the focus up, isn't he? And he keeps that pace up because if he tries to slow down, he loses the rhythm. He looks behind and he, he can't really see anybody. You know, don't relax like Edinson did in Monaco. Is it 88? And don't wave at the crowd like uh, uh, Nigel Mansell did in 1990 in Canada. So, yeah, he, admittedly, both those were 20 years before he was born. But even so, you know, that's, that's the, you know, you've got to give it 100% concentration until you've crossed the line, got the checkered flag, and are about to get the champagne and the adulation of the fans. Yeah, one more lap for, for Harris Roberts. One more lap of NKC Oplit Mini Max racing for this man, or this boy, Harris Roberts. As he goes through the right-hander at Inkermans and down the hill towards Ashby. For the final time this weekend, it was a fantastic start for Roberts. Got off the line really well and found himself in the lead by the time we got onto the back straight and headed towards Christmas. 
and here he is towards the boot for the final time then it's going to be Harris Roberts that has his picture in Facebook as the all plate winner well done, Harris. of the NKC in 2023 and he takes the win in very fine style well done to him Andrew Dixon a fighting second Daniel Hartley in third Max Carlton the final finisher in fourth unfortunate occurrences and fortunate incidents for what, what I can only describe as favourite going into the final Sonny Morgan and then that incident that took out Eddie Stewart and Lucy Lovell again an unfortunate incident one of those racing incidents so that you know what Nick that was the first of our all played finals I mean talk about drama and incident that we only had seven carts yeah but you know but still you only, you only need two carts to make a race and the fourth hit oh, each other you wow. don't yeah. better I mean we knew we knew it was all going to be about the intensity of the yeah. of the final because it's all about the all plate so as the carts make their way into Park Fermit we have got Gasbury down there who will grab a word with Harris Roberts and get his side of the story bit of a lonely race really yeah. Once everybody started tripping over <laughs> one another yeah. and, 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 and fighting with one another, Harris Roberts had a whale of a time. But on seeing that, it was his to lose, effectively. And we know how easy that is, don't we, Nick? Uh, yes, I've lost many, many a thing. <laughs> many, a, many a race. Great stuff. Coming up next will be our senior TKM. And if you think the Minimax race was full of drama and incident, the rest of our finals are going to be equally so. There's no question in my mind that that's going to be the case we've got the carts just pulling into park firm in now Gasbury will be getting hold of harris roberts and we got a great opportunity to uh to chat to him I would yeah 12 minutes and one lap of absolute frantic frantic drama mm. So more finals coming. This is the first award of the day, the Mini Max O plate. I think there's some weighing going on as they make sure that Harris is uh, within, um, within regulations. Yeah, we just wait a few moments there while we get things sorted. What sort of Gaz is doing, is he, is, he, is, he, is he corralling as we speak? Yes, hopefully. He needs to point out, as I always do, that it's more important we're telly. <laughs> we're telly, but we haven't got anyone on there yet. And we will have Gaz any <laughs> second now. Right, really has to grab him, doesn't he? I think, I, I, think he's fro I think I can see Gaz frog marching a small child, actually, as we oh, speak. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's no offences disclosed. There we are. Let's make sure the microphone's on for Gaz. Okay, so um, uh, we get the thumbs up from... Uh, Ash, we will go to you. Okay, and now down to Gaz with the winner, Harris Roberts. Harris, what a race, mate. O-plate champion. Tell us how it went for you from your point of view. Uh, off the start, I had a bit of a gap, and I just kept maintaining that after lap after lap. Yeah. And um, just no words, really. Uh, it was a great job. Best place to be at the front, though. There was a bit of carnage going on behind. Yeah. You did well to get out there and stay out there. Yeah. Top job, man. Thank you. Harris Roberts, O-Plate champion, Minimax. Thank you to Gaz there and a very happy Harris. And that means we can now get on with the next race, Joe. Thanks, Ash. Great stuff. Mm. Oh, uh, you know what? A, a nice addition to our coverage of yeah. this O-Plate meeting. And we'll get a backdrop for next time. Well, if, the, if the, we the breeze block and garage backdrop. If we turn the camera around to take yeah, yeah. in the Park Fermi and all the action, which is what I suggested. Uh, it didn't work for, for certain le legal reasons. Legal reasons? Safety reasons. All right. Okay. Safety reasons? Yeah, there's stuff moving around. It's a long story, which I obviously could tell you, but. My life is Basically, just giving Ash more jobs, just the key point of all this. My life is too short yes. to uh, listen to that sort of uh, malarkey. What's our next final then? Uh, TKM. Okie dokie. Uh, guess who's on pole? Um, is it Charlie King? Absolutely. Mm. Three heat wins. You wouldn't have expected. Charlie King else. came and had a chat with us saying he's a, he just wanted to know that, that Harvey Rolf is his big, Rolf, sorry, is his massive 
um, enemy is the wrong word, uh, adversary in the British National Championship. So it's all you oh, know, brilliant. elbowy. Brilliant. We're getting a rehearsal, are we? Yeah. It's bigger than that. Uh, so Charlie King on the pole position. Alongside him is Tom Johnson. Harvey Roth behind him. Mitchell Ball alongside on row two. Joseph GX yep. on row three with Jack Ransom alongside. Then we've got Alexander Lehman and Will Cregeen on row four. Joseph Phillips and Olivia Jenkins are as on row five. Matthew Temple Purcell and Andrew Platt are on row six. And we are releasing the senior TKMs from the collecting area. 12 minutes and one lap. 11 carts. We've got 11 qualifiers, well, 12 qualifiers. And 11 carts have taken to the track. So Check that is correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's 12, actually. So is there? Right. So some somebody hasn't, hasn't, hasn't tripped yeah. the uh, timing screen. Right. Okay. So we have got 12. You've All got, of our you got 11 on your, right Yeah, you've got 12 on the... I've got 12 on the... I've got 12 on the... B, uh, yeah. yeah. I should look at that, shouldn't I? Not always, oddly. So we are just forming up then on the back, on the back, on the back straight and we into the boot I know, I know, you made me laugh. <laughs> I've been trying to explain this forever, that we rule, we rule the, we oh. rule the waves. Here we go. Charlie King, John, Tom Johnson, Mitchell Ball, Jack Ransom, Joseph Jakes, Will Cregeen. All the oh. names from TKM are in there. Here we go. We're about to get going. And a pole of blue. Yeah, Johnson, Johnson was, was bogging down all the way down the back of that straight. He didn't clear up at all, but Charlie King takes the lead. Uh, Mitchell Ball's got in the second. Has he? Is that oh. the red hat? No, Mitchell Ball's down to fifth now, so that's, um, that's the change. Oh, somebody's into the lead ahead of Charlie King. Yep. Who's that? Is it, is it, is it Roth? Oh, I hope so. I think it might got, be. They've got, they got personals going on. Harvey, it's the... No, Charlie King's back into the lead. Oh, there's Roth the around the outside of him. Oh, none, none yet now this is uh, this is this is this is beef carried and he's got oh. the inside so Roke has the inside of King this is beef carried over from the British National Championship these two lots of love lost I'm sure I'm sure they're very good friends really but it's a chance to uh, to open battle in a race where it's just about the race there's no points to worry about you can just go for it with Mitchell Ball in third this is brilliant Harvey Roth I, I you know what Charlie King has had a very very dominant weekend three heat wins kind of unseen unheard of very very rare indeed and here we go Harvey Roth leading into Christmas for the second time and who's that in third Mitchell Ball our sponsor Just, yeah absolutely the Junction 6 man is right on the tail of Charlie King now these three Carters are very very experienced with this TKM class you can't forget Jack Ransom Joseph Jacks Tom Johnson and Wilker again just behind them as well train of TKMs but Harvey Roth, they're just waiting for the tyres to come on, Nick. <laughs> they're not even where we need them. Oh, the, the, oh, it's oh. going to be going into the next lap when that's going to start happening and the carts are going to be where they want them. Yeah, it's, it's a case really now where King, he doesn't probably, he, he, he's, not, he's obviously used to racing against Harvey Roth, probably not so used to racing against Mitchell Ball. Ball's showing some good speed. He's missed pace during parts of the race, but now the top two are just eking apart. And here goes King, look at go for the lead. Up the inside of Roth. Roth cuts back. Oh, there's been a bit of coming together there. And that's that ball get up the inside of Roth, but the main winner out is King. And they're running together side by side by side by side. Up there, and he goes Roth again and takes King's. No, you're not saying. Where's Mitchell Ball going to come out of all this? Well, you know what, Nick? I pretty much are firmly. King's back in the lead. He is, but Mitchell Ball's about to took second place. All the way around the outside goes Roth. This is all about. <laughs> this is all about the day, isn't it? It's all oh. about this, this final. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carts. It was squabbling over the same one metre square piece of real estate it's got starting to get very intense and Harvey Roth needs to compose himself and not allow Mitchell Ball behind him to start delaying him by having to defend he needs to catch Charlie King Charlie King's been and now done the job and gotten to where he needs to be we've still got nine and a half minutes <laughs> Well, Johnson, We've still got nine and a Tom half Johnson minutes made, of this yeah Tom Johnson made two places in that, that lap and he's now right on the tail of Mitchell Ball in that 42 he's the black black and grey cart the fourth of those ones running round it's the green machine though Charlie King who's, been, who's mostly only had fresh air on his face uh, for the last few races still has that we've lost the cart I can see it being dragged in I think he had a bit of a, a moment actually at uh, Pit Bend I'll tell you who it is when I can see the number well, Bobby Mitchell, Alexander Lehman I think or it Mitchell might be Jack Ball, Ransom uh, we've got something going on it's the, the 27 it's the 27 Jack Ransom had a crash on uh, at, right. at, at Pit Bend he's now been rescued now 
King pulling away. Last time round it was 0.4 of a second, 0.338 of a second. Side by side in the individual ball for, oh, touchy, touchy. And then that's going to be a little bit aggressive. I'm not sure what the, how the steward's going to see that one. But what happened was, ball lost a bit of momentum and suddenly Tom Johnson's got a chance. Yeah, well, Mitchell Ball was all about momentum once again out of Crooks. Now, if that's going to happen, the next lap and the next lap and the next lap, Charlie King's just going to check out because he seems to have done that. The gap was three tenths of a second across the line last time by. It's a lot larger than that, and that was down to these two going side by side. Harvey Roth has got Mitchell Ball right with him. Mitchell Ball has got Tom Johnson right with him. And then, look, not that far behind is Joseph Jakes. So as they cross the line now, five laps completed. King, Roth, Ball, Johnson, Jakes, Cregeen, Phillips. That's down to seventh. Pretty much nose to tail. It's settled down a bit, hasn't it? Just under eight minutes remaining. Still, anything can happen. But whether anyone can catch Charlie King, I'm not so sure. He's then, had um, this pace all day long in the heat. Top five car by a second and a half. And despite that kind of scuffing together, he lost two tenths that time around Harvey Rolf. So, uh, so Rolf, I think he's getting closer again. So whether Rolf actually in clear air can slowly slide his way onto the back of Charlie King... Mitchell Ball perhaps might be wise to actually to, to think about the people touching their helmets in the head and, but let's work together let's close this gap between first and second now actually what's happening now is Roth is bridging the gap himself and slightly leaving Mitchell Ball behind yeah the lead actually the lead went down by 600 of a second that time yeah uh, we've got 46-420 uh, by King 46-355 so lap times now that Roth has broken free from Mitchell Ball he's able to settle in and chase off after Charlie King and last time by it was Harvey Roth who was the quickest cart on the track that time. Yeah, I mean, I mean you don't know where, where the King is in control mode. Obviously, this is one of the points where it really is much easier to chase because you've got a target and you can really push against that target. King is chasing against the, the imaginary amount of grip he may have or not have and, and where he wants to be. So he's running on instinct, whereas Roth is running on pure hunter, inst hunter mentality. Yeah, I've always found it's easier to chase than be chased story of my life yeah um, <laughs> unfortunately you were never chased um <laughs> six, six and a half minutes six and a half minutes then charlie king i'm gonna sit in control of this tkm yeah. final he kind of is however it's control absolutely on the limit he can't hold back there is no holding back now and you can see there harvey roth closing the gap the gap was half a second last time by I'd go so far as to say that's a lot closer than I half don't a think second. so. I think I think that actually is just the foreshortening of, ah, of right, the okay. slower parts. Because like what actually happened was uh, King managed to get a few hundreds last time round. I think that that's pretty much equidistant to where it was the previous lap. I think that you know it's 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 a it's an interesting gap. That half second is not going to give much any aero effect for no. Kit for Roth placing King well, across the line now. Is it half a second or is it a bit less? It's it half was, a second. It, it, it was, was saying within about a hundred. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. There's very little difference. A couple of hundreds here or there. He just needs to get a little bit closer to start picking up that tour, doesn't he? The, yeah. These things do produce a bit of tour. The slipstream effect does come in at the so circle speeds we're seeing on the way up to Christmas Corner. So that will come into effect. And both of these drivers now absolutely on the edge, aren't they? They've so having to drive so perfectly. The slightest oh, mistake. That's much better now, much yeah. closer. Ross, not even sure where that came from. Was, no, it, was, it, er, was it a little error by King? I, I didn't see any. I was just, yeah. I was just mar marvelling at the fact that these guys are, are just absolutely on the edge. And as I say, that King, that gap of half a second is not half a second, no, is it? Let's see what it is. Three tenths, I think, at it's most. Three tenths. Yeah. Point two eight eight. Now, it must have been either a micro error or suddenly uh, yeah. uh, Harvey found the greatest run ever through Parker and Chapman. So, you know, but you hit a curb, you lose a bit of drive, and that is 0.1 of a second, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, and that, effectively, the gain in that lap was just two, two tenths. It's through Ingerman's, it looks like, where he, he gains a little bit. Then Ashby, he stays there. This is where he kind of closes up. Look at the momentum he's got there. Didn't that now, time, now he didn't good. that time, no. Uh, he, Charlie he, King. he went wide, had to correct. Charlie King was tidier, wasn't he? And look at that, that shows, doesn't it? Into the boot. It'll be ten laps completed this time by. Still four minutes. So the final third of this final coming up next. Good lap for Charlie King this one. 46-348. Saying that, he lost 1,000 in the second, didn't he? Yeah, 46-348 for Charlie King. 46-347. Got, got the slipstream really obvious there. He got the drive and the slipstream. They're now nose to tell as close as they can be without getting a, a nose penalty. Can Roth get down the inside into Ashby? He's trying it. He's, trying. he's gone for it. And oh, he's got it. King, I think. 
thought about blocking, thought about it, and they thought, ah, no, there's a, the biggest chance there is just both going off. But now, it's in many ways advantage King because he can now chase, he can now follow. He's not even going to wait a couple of corners. He's already, the, oh, the, the, the choking of the angel, the radiator cover coming down. That's the comment of Roffy knew that he could hold this King <laughs> back down the short straight, and now here he goes. There's no radiator covers. I don't know what they were doing. Maybe a little bit of mixed I don't know. Yeah, yeah. A bit but, of but it's, don't, don't ruin the magic. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not. It's uh, Harvey Roth. Wow. Look at the gap. He's got a half a cart's length. Charlie King. Back in. Uh, you know what? In a, in a championship round, Harvey Roth wouldn't have been as quick to get past him, maybe. He would have maybe waited a couple of corners, but he knew he's got momentum. He's going to make the move. And Charlie King now, I get the feeling with three minutes of this final still remaining, I get the feeling that Charlie King is going to be a bit like NASCAR. Nobody leads, wants to lead across the line going into the final lap. Check over the right-hand shoulder. Yep, he's still there, mate. Um, I, suppose, I would think you'd be able to hear him when he's that close. Yeah, you would think so. I think he will. And then coming down to begin. Oh, they've got at least four, four or five laps to go. Oh, they've got miles, miles and to go. And they got that. Well, oh, a good 200 and a second gain there for Rolf over, Rolf over King. But now the slipstream works in King's favour. Is King going to try a hop out a bit too far back? And under the break in the cart, snakes that green cart. Or greenish cart with the driver has a green helmet snaked under braking into Christmas Corner now up to Ashby which has been more a strength of Roth so far and then this kind of Parker and uh, Chapman complex they, they both had problems that and had too much curb initially there going in from Roth but he's, yeah. had to, he's had to go slow now theoretically if you can get the drive uh, but he actually yep. got the drive but all he did was he's, drive in the back he, of him well, he's, oh! he's having to defend Nick drafted he's, him. he's having to defend Nick I'll get my eardrums back next <laughs> um, he's, he had to defend and so he was offline so when he went on the brakes, he's on a dirtier line, and he's also having to scrub off more speed. Less than two minutes remaining. This is where the pressure's going to be mounted. This is the drag. This is the drag. Rules are reversed. Charlie King in the slipstream. Harvey Roth on the inside, moves out to the middle of the track. Christmas corner, very, very fast. Not as slow as you think. Now look at the way that Harvey Roth has got to drive. He's going to leave the door wide open, and Charlie King is going to struggle to squeeze through it because Harvey Roth is not going to make it easy. Defensive line into Parker. Defensive line into Chapman. If Charlie King can use his head, which he is there, he can gauge that entry into the boot. But look at that. Harvey Roth having to go down the inside of the left-hander. He then covers the door into the right-hander. Loses momentum. And Charlie King, if he's not careful, is going to have enough speed to pull alongside but what the about final Mitchell minute Ball? what about Tom Johnson they've been brought back into this by the defensive tactics of Harvey Roth Harvey really, it's great the only problem is there's now four carts fighting the TKM final they're all over the place playing across Harvey again looking a bit whoa and coming around looking a bit wobbly under braking but managed to stop it they're look, in fairness to Charlie King he is looking for a clean overtake and this is going to be it go out wide no oh, switch this, back Nick this is going to this is going to end in tears <laughs> This is going to end no, in tears. I wouldn't be surprised if Tom Johnson takes this. Look, look at Ball. Mitchell Ball's Ball. Gonna second. Squeezing into second there. Uh, that's it's another fourth. Oh, Tom King's Johnson in, in the third. King's in fourth. King's now in fourth. Harvey Roth going towards. I don't think it's going to be one lap to go aboard this time, by. No, they get it's two gonna more. Be, it's going to be more. two more laps. Now, Harvey Roth has got Mitchell Ball and Tom Johnson behind him. And Charlie King's thinking, what's what going on wrong? here? What have I what's done? going <laughs> on? So, Harvey Roth leads. Penalty on the lap. They're on now. It's all going to kick off. I can just feel it in me water. It's all going to kick off now. Up towards Christmas. First, second, third and fourth. Turn in. Through the kink towards Inkermans. Using all the curb. Everyone will do that. Absolutely do that. Down to Ashby. Leaving the door open. Johnson Whoa! on the inside. This contact. This is going to help Harvey Roth if these two can come together. Look at the gap he's created oh, there. Yeah. Look at the gap that Mitchell Ball and Tom Johnson coming together as created as Tom Johnson's Johnson in second. down the inside of, of Mitchell Ball. And who's that alongside? Charlie King. Charlie King, Charlie King. Moving into third. So Charlie King now in third. But Tom Johnson is now in second. But look at the gap that Harvey Roth's got. Harvey Roth is going to go into this last lap with a gap of... Oh, please, please update. Give me the times. <laughs> please give me the times. Half a second. But if all, the, if all the times to be slow, <laughs> my timing screen was slow there, creating the tension. Half a second is the gap into Ingermans for the last time. The TKM, the senior TKM all is staring Harvey Roth in the face. He's got a few more corners to go. This is Parker, the left-hander. This is Chapman, another left-hander. And then the short straight towards the boot. We're getting towards the final few corners. We're getting towards the final few corners of the day for these TKMs. 
and into the boot for the final time he's only got to put his foot in and take one more corner and it's going to be Harvey Roth that takes the all plate for TKM <laughs> unbelievable action here Harvey Roth takes the all plate Tom Johnson second Charlie King the winner of all three heats has taken third place and he's wondering what happened there he must be yeah absolutely it, it, it all went wrong at the top at Christmas corner when he went from second to fourth after a, a, a heavy block for a, a legal heavy block by Roth and wow that was a race and a half some fantastic TKM racing and Harvey made his move then defended it defended it so stoutly he brought back the third and fourth drivers and then the third and fourth drivers won it for him by yeah, getting in front yeah. of um, by yeah. getting in front of Charlie King yeah that's exactly what happened just to give everybody a rundown and a mention on that final I'm sorry everybody behind that that four card battle for the lead uh, there was far too much action at the front Harvey Roth takes the all plate Tom Johnson second Charlie King third Mitchell Ball fourth Joseph Jakes fifth Will Cregeen sixth Joseph Phillips was seventh Matthew Temple Purcell was eighth ninth was uh, Andrew Platt we lost Olivia Jenkins on lap five Jack Ransom went out on lap two and Alexander Lehman we lost at the start so once again, we're going to head down to... At some point, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for faces and, and, and thumbs up. Yeah, we've got to give them be time a while, to... I think they have to get screwed near for, for some yeah, reason. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, that doesn't seem um, very fair. We've got KZ's out next. Oh, uh, Nick, I'm sorry, so it's I, even when higher do speed, my, When do I get Robin? my lie down? Uh, tonight. Okay, fine. When you get home, mate. Yeah. You are not going to get any lie down for a little while yet. Yeah. Uh, lovely backdrop, I've got to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely cinder wall. Uh, yeah, cinder wall and see. a roller garage. Well, they're inside. They're undercover at the, uh, yeah, to the be honest, To be honest, rather than doing interviews, it's like we're doing a drug deal. <laughs> yes, yes. Look in some alleyway. Some some turgid alleyway. So, uh, as Gaz scuddies around trying to, to capture our winner. So, we'll be going very shortly down to the Park Fermi area where Gaz Bury is going to be uh, dragging Harvey Roth across. Oh for an interview and an inside story into that what was a very very extremely see. exciting and dramatic final the senior tkm all played final in the nkc going to harvey roth uh tom johnson he'll be kind of delighted with second i think i mean you know charlie king's I been the man to beat charlie I king think, i mean not be it's all about winning third. but i think they've taken that at the start yeah i think so I think I think Charlie King is going to be the most disappointed yeah. man there. But I think also he's experienced enough. And and having spoken to Charlie a few times, he's quite a pragmatic young man. Yeah. And he knows he he, he knew going into that final that it was going to be mm. literally, I know a metaphorical fist fight, but almost a virtual fist fight. Well, there, yeah, they, 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 they certainly it was all wheels and elbows were out. Yeah, uh, beautiful weather here all day. No rain forecast. There was perhaps potential of it. Around lunchtime, yeah. but that sort of uh, blew by, thankfully. Oh, here we go. And at any second now, we will be have Harvey Roth with um, young Mr. <laughs> Gasbury. Here we go. Harvey, that was some exceptional driving there. Great defence. Talk us through it from the start. How did you get on? Well, it was good at the start. I was trying to stay in the lead because, well, first off, hats off to Charlie. He's been unstoppable all weekend. I thought I've just got to be in front of him. He overtook me and I was a bit behind. I just pushed as hard as I could, managed to get the move done and then started defending a bit early, but it's what I had to do to hold him off and it worked. You did look like you had a gap on him for a little bit. Were the tyres going off mid-session in there? Yeah, so I think we were just a bit too high on the pressure, started going off a bit towards the end and I was getting very tired as well. It's quite hot, but here's what it is. You are the TKM O-Plate champion. Congratulations, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys, and a very, very happy young man. You could tell he was chuffed a bit about that, couldn't you, Joe? Absolutely. I mean, who wouldn't be? It's, you know, we've been seeing all this time. It's all about on the day. Um, and, <laughs> I, I, you know, coming into this weekend, I knew it was going to be like this. Mm. I knew exactly what it was going to be. And, you know, we saw moves there yeah, yeah. that we wouldn't normally see on an ordinary championship day. Uh, because it's it's you know it, it's all about. I'm going to say it again, Nick. It's all about me. It's all about the win. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> the good for Kiersa. Well, the, the good thing is, I think Ash is getting a good workout. Here. He's up and down the stairs. It's when great. he needs to, the amount he eats. Uh, yeah, exactly. He needs to turn the camera on. He needs to swap the camera leads over. It's very. I'm, I'm loving watching him. But I just like to point out, this is a far more wholesome shoot than he was doing last week. 
Yes, <laughs> let's not get us taken off the air, please. No, perhaps not. No. Oh dear. Are you going to have a look at the grid then? Yeah. Can you tell us? Because uh, they're nearly here. On it's pole, standing. but not on pole, uh, is the unfortunate Elias Boucher. Unfortunately, Elias um, had an accident in the time attack and um, went to hospital as a precaution. It does seem mostly okay. Uh, second is Sam Ward. Bo Phillips is third. Uh, Bailey Regalsford is fourth. Isaac Smith is fifth. Uh, Zilvanis Kilmas is sixth. Reese Llewellyn is seventh. Daniel Sabula is eighth. Benjamin Ballou is ninth. Harvey Reby is tenth off being disqualified from uh, timed qualifying. And James Webb and Bradley Calder brings up the rear. And we get ready for the wheelies when they get released. Oh, lots of creeping. And that made a bad start for the 18. I thought I wouldn't. Re- I'm not yeah, sure Sam about Ward. that start. Yeah, yeah, Sam Ward got off into the lead. A uh, lot of wheel spin from Bo Phillips. That's allowed Sam Ward off and up towards Christmas Corner first. Down the box they go. I love seeing that down the box turn in. Great stuff from these KZ carts. Uh, gearbox carts here for the NKC. I really, I mean, talking to Chris and Ollie, they, you know, they're, they're trying to get KZs on the calendar. They'd maybe as some racking at three sisters. Wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, these things come into their own at a track like this, uh, a track like Three Sisters, where you've got those long straights. Um, they're a massive handful here at Wilton Mill. Some great battles going on just behind the two leaders there. First, so second, right together, though. Yeah. And it's all about the win, remember? That is all about the win. Big gap between second and third, and massive the gap, gap. is uh, two point. Three seconds after a lap. Yeah, massive gap there. So there have been some shuffling about there. I, think the, I don't think they actually kind of lined up in kind of general speed level. We saw a few people having problems with, with breakdowns, so they didn't get the points in qualifying. We know that, of course, at the 71 of Harvey Ruby lost his, um, his time from second time qualifying for not doing enough laps. You don't do enough laps. It's all banged because you aren't allowed to keep your tyres special. But right at the front now, so right at the third and fourth now, all over each other, battling. So it's the third and fourth where it's happening. First and second, got a little bit of a gap. There's a riding the uh, curbs heftily there we go and it is the one two three of isaac smith oh and we've got to shove up the backside there for the um, oh, side by side one nine two he got yeah. bailey got really rammed up the backside by uh, harvey yeah and he, he really did get a bit of a knock there and daniel chibula uh, was all over him as well so that's a, a change for position there billy regalsford finds himself down in fifth having uh, been in third place pretty much uh, all of that first lap we've already completed two laps and that battle for third is not over is it it's mm. got about four or five carts involved meanwhile at the, I'll just bring you up to date at the front Sam Ward leads by about seven tenths from Paul Phillips they're already coming out of the boot and towards the final turn whereas the number 123 Isaac Smith Daniel Jabula behind him and then Bailey Regalsford is not the next cart in line. It's the 71 of Harvey Reby. Mm. Billy Regalsford there on the 192, having had his nose chopped off the previous lap, finds himself down in sixth place and hanging on to the tail of that three-card field. And there's a move. Move down the inside of Christmas. Yeah, that's um, Reby recovering from losing all his points in time, second time qualifying. And don't forget, Reby cannot win the O plate because of that situation. So even if by some yeah, miracle, miracle you only get through and, and across the line first, really would not be the O-plate winner due to tyre regulations. That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's what we were taught. That's what we passed on. And that's what we're believing. Billy Regalsford there, ahead of Isaac Smith now. And chasing after Daniel Sabula. Harvey Reby comes through in third place. Well, it's Daniel Sabula, then Harvey Reby. Then Regalsford, then Smith, then Klimas, and then Reese Llewellyn. Reese Llewellyn at the back of this field is just enjoying driving these KZ. He's uh, more commonly seen by everybody at NKC in a 177 Rotax Max. Max. Hello to Rotax Oliver Max. Weirder, one of the RC fans who's taking in some karting today. And also, um, you'll like this one, it's uh, from uh, uh, Rachel Thompson. The Thompsons are loving the commentary. Ah, oh, hello, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, Jack Thompson. So it's always one good of, to get one of the motorsports drivers. But there is the battle for third and fourth. They've broken away, and it's the 12th of Sabula, and then it's also Harvey Reby, who's uh, trying to attack heavy. The lead at the front, Sam Ward's got 1.4 seconds, coming into Christmas down a gear, on the apex down another gear. And I think you go up one there. Um, knowing Jack Thompson as I do, he'd be watching these KZs saying, Mum, Dad, <laughs> um, 
It'd be on eBay it now. Like, it'd it'd be, like, be on eBay. It'd be on marketplace. Yeah. Be on I take it these are only for over 16s. I think you can't. Yes. Like, yeah. 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 He's nearly there. <laughs> He's not far away. I was, I was listening to your previous. We were chatting on the timing about about these about um, the fact they they go down the gearbox on the apex. The yeah, reason, they're right into the corner. But the reason they're still yeah, going down. But the reason being, of course, is as you go down, you get a braking effect. That's right. Yes. So because well, yeah. don't forget, they're not clutching down. They're coming down and, in a sequential box. And plus. They're in the right gear for the acceleration. Yeah, but zone also the point, the if you come down early, so what they want, I think, is have consistent braking. So they want the braking done by the brake disc and not by the box. So they're almost matching the revs as they come down to right, make it yes. smoother. Because obviously you can get, because the, the worry they have is the brake and the down change will lock the rear axle. Yes. So I think that's why they're braking, what we seem to be late changes. But you're absolutely right. As long as you get oh, there. Problem. That's for the 71 remakes mistake. As long as you get there for punching out, it's fine. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. you think you go five, four, three, two. But what you actually do is go. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> yes, you're, right. getting, you're, you're getting all the speed off on the brakes. Yeah. And with the brakes being on the front of these carts yeah, as that's well as the, the rear, that's that's, you get, it gives you a I more mean, stable brake. The thing process. is, whilst they look the same as a Rotax car or a TKM car, they are effectively a completely different racing car. Chassis wise, they're very similar. But it's a completely different racing car when you had front, oh, when you had front brakes and you had a gearbox. Yeah, so yeah. You're basically, this is. This is a completely different right well, here. It looks like a cart, and in many ways, the only thing that keeps a cart is the small wheels and the solid rear axle. But in every, every other way, it's, like, it's much more like it, a track it's, circuit it's car. It's like driving a Formula car, isn't mm. it? Yeah, with the way that the uh, with the way that the cart behaves. Absolutely. Sam Ward leading by two seconds. Uh, we are towards half distance now. Six, just over six minutes remaining. That's Daniel Chabula, who is currently in third place, and Chabula lapping very very much much quicker than second place Paul Phillips that's Paul Phillips in the orange card just in yep. the foreground and Chabula if anything 43 720 was Phillips's lap time there 42 890 yellow flag for Chabula we've catching him we've got a cart off at no damage just a cart off at turn two um, did you see who that was no I'm just waiting for him not to come round to the lap it might be Isaac Smith okay who's dropped down the order massively. So there's the number 12, Chibula. He's no, now... I think it's second place. Oh, really? Paul Phillips? Well, I think it's Paul Phillips No, no, off. no, there's it, Ian. Paul Phillips is through. Oh, Daniel, right. Daniel Daniel Chibula. Chibula. Right, That's sorry, no. Cause, cause That's who we're watching. I we're watching the battle I'm, for second I miscounted. I miscounted. All right, just go at the back of the room. Oh, well, I'll go and have a lie down. Ten. Yeah. So I think um, you're right. It may well be Isaac Smith. No, it's Harvey Reby. It's Harvey Reby who's gone. It is Harvey Reby, yeah. He's yeah. had a very busy day, in fairness. We've lost to Reese Llewellyn as well. No, we haven't. There he is. Reese has just gone through. Yeah. So this is second and third. Sorry, this I've, is the I've, battle I've for second. In my mind, it was third and fourth, which is never, in my mind, is never a good place to be, to be honest. Sam Ward has disappeared up the road. Three seconds, 3.1 seconds, the gap. This, though, the battle for second. And I know the podium doesn't really matter, but it does matter to these boys because we've got a podium battle going on here. The number 18, Phillips, looks over his right shoulder. He's not there. Chabula's not there. Because he was on your left, that's why. <laughs> and he's going to come through now. Here he comes on that charge down towards Christmas. And Daniel Chabula down the box at the apex, like uh, Nick just explained. And then pulls away, massively pulls away from... Who have we, who have we, who have we lost? We've lost Sam Ward. Sam Ward's gone. The leader's gone. We've lost Sam Ward. Oh, my goodness. Where's he gone? Because now Sam Chabula, Paul, I think, I think Sam Sam the has gone, so Sam Ward's gone into the pits and given up that all plate. Chabula, that move we've just seen was, was for, for the, the actual win. lead. Yeah, for the lead. That was the, that was a, must be the cheer from behind us. I That's thought it was right, they were so yeah. close. The cheer must have been the leader who had a problem. Oh my goodness, that is absolute tragedy for Sam Ward. He's been one of the class of the field in this KZ in this KZ battle that's gone on all weekend and now Chabula who was chasing that second place was in effect chasing <laughs> for the lead of this race and heading towards the ore plate amazing three and a half minutes remaining Daniel Chabula now finds himself in the lead 11 laps complete Bo Phillips second Bailey Regalsford on the podium in third Silvinus Klimas is in fourth place Isaac Smith fifth Reese Llewellyn sixth. Sam Ward has retired. Harvey Reby has retired. And Tabula, I wonder if Tabula is aware of the situation. I wonder if he's getting some I indication think, well, he can see ahead from of his him. crew. He can see ahead of him several seconds and there's no one there. 
So he would, have, he would have known where the leader was, two and a half seconds ahead, and now he's not. So he's sitting there going, I am leading this race. I am first. I know, but the A problem is he's also got to think about uh, accelerating, steering, braking, and changing gear as well at the same time. So you need to have quite a lot of mental capacity left for all this. So of course, the gear changing does get quite... Um, yeah, you get into a rhythm, don't you? With it. it sounds complicated at the start, but you very quickly get into a rhythm. You get it. where you're going it's two, it's very much four, a rhythm, five, yes. Four, three, two. But it's when you hit the kerb, Nick, yeah, yeah. and you smash yourself <laughs> over the kerb, and, you, and your brain jiggles in your helmet, that yeah. you find you're out of that rhythm, and like, oh, where was I? Especially when you're looking for gears. He's got this nice, nice little technique of just choking the air intake, just to richen the engine up. Um, just to give it a little bit more lube there as he goes into Christmas Corner. And he does that every single lap. And that's his rhythm. That's Jabula's rhythm every time up to that point. A fine example of what an O-plate meeting is. And an O-plate meeting is all about the win. We can talk about Sam Ward. We can talk about the, the very unfortunate um, Ellis... I think it's first name. Sorry, we we'll talk about him. Ellis Boucher. Boucher. Um, but... When it comes down to when the photographs are taken, when the champagne is uncorked and sprayed, and the O plate is worn, um, it'll be worn by Daniel Sabula because he will, he will theoretically be the guy who has passed the start finish line after 12 minutes and one lap in the lead, and he is pulling away from Bo Phillips with very much ease, three and a half seconds. Phillips has got about a second point four on second place, and then there's a massive gap to fourth. The guys will be to third, and then a massive gap to fourth. I mean, if Isaac is just learning, just six carts running. So we had quite a heavy um, attrition during the course of the meeting. He started with 12. Looks like only six are going to finish the final. Yeah, and Chibula there just as he smacks the curb. Not at this part of the track, but we watch him through Inkerman's next time by. We're almost at the final minute. We're inside the final minute in a few seconds. Um, so he comes up the straight here into Christmas Corner. This is where he has a look at the air intake. Oh, he doesn't this time. Oh, he's out of rhythm now. So this bit here, through Inkerman's, across the kerb. And just the car, just the front end, just as he goes hard on the throttle, front end comes right up. You can see the massive ride height change that that acceleration on the card gives it. Now through Chapman, through the right-hand kink, slams the throttle in, down the box, into the boot. Very, very busy lap, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Just get, you know hanging on to it with your left hand and then snatching gears as you come across the line. Didn't they make a version where you can hang on to it with your right hand and change gear with your left? I, I don't think so because the gearbox is on the, uh, on the right hand side and you've got a linkage going Are you down. directly going into it like yeah. bang bang yeah, rather yeah, than yeah. by anything else? It's right. not like uh, it's not electronic or anything. But it's, it's basically it's a motorcycle gearbox. Yeah pretty it's much. Motorcycle, it's a motorcycle yeah, sequential exactly, gearbox. Yeah, pretty um, much. With a I assume an auto blipper to make you can do clutches I changes. Have, I have seen paddle shift KZ type carts in America where the gear change is all done by electronically mm. a bit like a, a sports yeah. car you know a bit like a race car where it's all done electronically it's not, electronic it's actuators not too stuff. hard to do it just adds a bit of weight and my guess is it's probably not legal in, in, in European racing no I don't think it is I think it has to be a mechanical change I mean mm. you know we might we might see it, them appear yeah, in it, the UK well it's one of those things it, that it just adds cost and everyone has to pay for it it doesn't add anything to the spectacle of any of the racing it just means that every single cart now costs Seven hundred pounds more than it did. Yeah, absolutely. And it won't have reliability. So, I, I, that's for I sure. I think it'll probably be a lot more than seven hundred pounds. Well, I'm just adding a figure there. You know, yeah. if you want to charge more for this this imaginary event, that's fine. <laughs> last lap. Yeah, we're on the last lap. The last few corners then, and it's Daniel Chibula who will be taking the chequered flag as the all plate winner for the KZ class here at the NKC all plate meeting at Wilton Mill once more through the final turn at Pitts Bend and across the line and he punches the air in what is old fashioned style these days. He deserves to punch the air. And to just reflect on the kind of drama we saw there, Sam Ward who has had a great weekend of racing had to pull out, a pull out of the lead of this race and as he did so, behind him, Daniel Chabula catching Bo Phillips hand over fist when he overtook him pretty much Around about the same time as Sam Ward pulled off, it wasn't just a move for second, it was a move for the win and the all plate itself. So Chibula absolutely delighted with his weekend's racing here at Wilton Mill. Absolutely phenomenal result for him. Uh, the next one on the agenda, everybody, is Junior Rotax. And... If you have got any small children, then get them moved back from the barriers. Stand in back fact, from the barrier. 
all the small children are actually in the carts for this that one. So they, they had brothers and sisters. They put yes, get your small brothers and sisters away from the barriers. Because in fact, for the next three, for the next three air finals, we're going to have. If you think we've had drama and incident already, uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say this, Nick. You ain't seen nothing yet. Well, they'll go away to beat that TKM final, but I'm sure they will. There's a cart being rescued. We're just waiting, of course, of you for the uh, the Gasbury show to start. But obviously, the, I don't think actually Daniel's even reached the um, the collecting area to about now. He's still still changing That's down. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's still he's changing a, down gears. Five, four, he's, three, he's, two. He's had a uh, he's had a lovely slow down lap. He's taken in the accolade of the crowd here, uh, and uh, achieved the applause. The applause, <laughs> yes. Um, it's a kind of a, uh, there's the seventy one of Harvey Reby. It's having a bit of a kind of a uh, post mortem check on it. Congratulations in the pit lane. We're waiting to see when that's going to turn into a, um, uh, a thumbs up. Camera's on. Is Ash down with the camera? He has to walk. He's a lot of work, Ash. He's walking up and down, up and down. He has to walk. There's me on the slider. It's all very exciting, this. It's like I do like a proper TV. I'm like, I feel like that bloke from Supersonic and said, and Q. Cart goes up. You're not, you're not saying anything then. You're not helping me out while I just waffle. I just like listening to you. <laughs> listening to your lovely Phil. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm producing my name, here. My, I'm, name, I'm, my name's not Phil. I'm holding, I'm holding oh, my next, lovely Phil. I'm producing here. I'm holding the next race. That is true, yeah. But I'm that, waiting but, for your clapperboard. It's board. being held by the man on the, uh, who's well, really yes, back in 71. Right. It's Reeves' yeah. cart that's the issue. I, I'm in control of Sarah Darlow. No, you're not. That's, yes. It's, it's no, a belief you are, yeah. yeah. Tim's wanting to know how I've done it. Well, it's your, it's your boyish, boyish good looks, isn't it? You have to hold your hand up in front of her face, mate. That's all I'm doing now. Well, you know. Ah, from, here from we go. From we have found the people we is. need to do. Okay, so we are ready to roll, and it's down with Gasbury with our winner, Daniel Sibula. Daniel, a weekend at Wilson Mill in a gay zed. You must be knackered, now. I am very tired, to be completely honest with you. It was very difficult, very hot, very physical, one of the most physical tracks you can ever go on in KZ, very abrasive. How was the race? I mean, you seem to clear off by nearly a second left in the end there. Yeah, it was very difficult. We've been fighting with problems all weekend, and it's uh, we've only been able to finish uh, finish a race now. It's been super, super good, and it feels feels nice to be able to finish a race, and you know, no less in P1. What a way to go out! You coming back next year if KZ's join the NKC? Oh, 100 percent. I feel like anybody that's watching this should do too. Top man, great either. You are the O Plate champion for KZ's. Well done, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you to Gaz and congratulations Daniel Sabula, the winner of the KZs, our guests here at the O Plate. Lovely to see him. So hopefully we'll see him again for two or three rounds of the NKC in 2024. All right, are you ready? I'm ready, go for it. Here we go. Freddie Ingram on the pole position alongside Kasper Tomalewski, Harry Hannam and Joshua Withcom on row two. Nicholas Ellis and Marcel Popical are on row three, row four is Presley Walker and Billy Edgecombe. Rule 5 is Mitchell Mulvey and Jaden Hewitt. Rule 6, Daniel Whitfield, Finley Underwood, Freddie Moore and Louis Rees are on Rule 7. Then we've got Maxim Smith, Joel Bullen. Rule 9, Finley Patterson and Jay Leverton. Owen Keenan and Lewis Llewellyn are on Rule 10. Alfie Bushel and Vlad Tominchuk are on Rule 11. Billy Vogt and Jack Dimbleby are on Rule 12. Joshua Delacarta and Harry Hine are on row 13. We've then got Alex Fraser and Kaya Zygmanta, Frank Ward and Joshua Priest. And then we've got the four qualifiers Ooh, it's got a from the, from the, the B there. final. We've got uh, Ellis Warlock, Byron Scott Simmons and Freddie Theobald uh, and Harvey Williams, of course, in 29th. Here they come. A little bit of a uh, kerfuffle as they lined up. The 22 cart's got an issue of rolling. It's lost it can't see the 22 got in there but not really started he's at the back with a problem they're getting a big slowdown they haven't big slowdown they're going to get that one that looked a bit quick no and they're getting they're underway it. they're underway 12 minutes yeah. and one lap and i think that's Freddie ingram has taken the lead has he I'm not quite sure there was just all chaos there who's that at the front it's the 69 freddie ingram yeah who's that behind him the 19 of harry hannam now then these two have been battling all day long they've been split up at times in their heats, but uh, with 12 minutes and one lap remaining, we've got an incident. Oh, in four big Inkerman. incident off the. Off yeah, the I think they'll all continue. Would you believe it? Might look no, a big incident, stuck. but they'll they'll, uh, they'll get going again. Meanwhile, at the front, we've got Freddie Ingram and Casper Tomalewski, Harry Hannum, Joshua Withcomb, but it's Hannum down the inside and into the lead. The number 19, Ingram comes back at him, and Ingram looking to the inside. Oh, and good. who's that? Look at that. 
Kasper Tomalewski. This is what we're going to have for the next 11 minutes or so. With gaps being created because of the nature of the track here at Wilton Mill, Ooh. we've got a late turn in, a late apex here at Christmas Corner. And who's that? That's the number 19, Harry Hannum, coming back at Tomalewski. Somebody threw into third, can't tell you who. I think that was Nicholas Ellis, maybe. Might have been Joshua Withcombe. We'll see who it is when we get them back on the infield and towards us in Nice front of us. gap for Freddie Ingram, though. He's managed to get, make the most of that kind of uh, over, under, back. And whoops, somebody else in the middle there, which just uh, took Harry Hannum back out, temporarily out of second place. But Harry's back in that position again, right behind the 227 of Nicholas Ellis. So that must be. Kasper Tomaszewski in fourth but they now need to start thinking about getting their way back to the 69 of Ingram that gap now is a 0.6 of a second yeah if they if they start squabbling they will not catch Freddie Ingram Freddie Ingram will say goodbye he's already got almost six tenths of a second last time by and if Hanman Ellis and Tomaszewski uh, Tomaszewski I should say start squabbling over the second third and fourth Ingram's going to really benefit from that and you know what? They've stopped squabbling, haven't they? They're working together. But he's still there, benefiting. There's, there's a lot of these kids. Oh, have come no, they're from, not. Oh, he's no, not, they're not. No, they're not. They just nipped in, and that was yeah. straight away. Ellis said, No, Nicholas Ellis said, I'm taking second place. Hannah not happy about it. And that's going to cause more issues, especially if you start seeing the uh, the 2 200 numbers. Was that, was that actually. Second, got third, fourth, yeah. fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Just all the way to the press. That leads more than six tenths now, I think. It's nine tenths. Yeah. It's nine tenths, and that's because the swapping position behind him. Freddie Ingram has, is going to benefit. All he needs to do is keep the pressure on his own driving, not make any mistakes, and he will edge away if this lot behind him, and it's now the number 227 of Nicholas Ellis that's taken up the cudgel of chasing him down. Harry Hanemitz still is in third. Kasper Tomalewski still in fourth. And these three in second, third, and fourth beginning to break a gap to Joshua Withcombe and Billy Edgecombe just behind there. They are into the boot complex. Here comes Ingram around the final turn. A bit and tiny bit closer this time, I think. So it was nine tenths, seven tenths. Yeah, they're, they're, they're now I don't, I don't think they're quite working together. I just think that Nicholas Ayers is, 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 is just that tenth of a second fast enough to stay ahead of them. None of them really are engaging um, a tactics yet. Yeah, I think they're all thinking, well, if I got to clear out, I could catch him up. If I got him clear I could catch him up. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. Eight and a half minutes remaining. And there's a little bit of a squabble there between Hannum and Tomalewski. And that's going to allow Ellis to break free from them. You can see it happening. All it takes is a couple of tenths of a second delay because someone's pulled alongside. And now we've got clean air for both Ingram in the lead and Nicholas Ellis in second. So it's going to come down. The distinctive black nose cone and fairing on Nicholas Ellis's cart. Quite well, easy to up see. Two tenths they lost that yeah, time. Yeah, so Ingram. Up to a second now, Freddie Ingram. Laying down the law, but we now have a one and a two and a three, four battles about to change round. Casper Tomasetsi, I think, and it, he didn't get it in the end, did he? He, no. he, he stuck his nose out, but uh, Harry Hannon stuck with it. He did have a look, one didn't the, he? One of the uh, lap one spinners trudging disgruntledly back up towards the uh, Christmas corner. It was either Joshua Priest, Frank Ward, or Billy Voot who all did not complete lap one. So now, with seven and a half minutes remaining, Nicholas Ellis, all eyes on him, because we need to catch Freddie Ingram if we're going to make a battle of this. Freddie Ingram has been absolutely metronomic with his lapping. He's the fastest cart on the track, 50, 45, got one zero eight. He's the fastest cart on the track that time by as well, and he's not got any help from anyone. The gap has gone out to just over a second now, 48 thousandths of a second over one second. And he's gaining tenths here, fractions here and there, and extending that lead. Personal best lap times there from everybody from second place down to 15th. So everybody finding pace now as we get towards the half distance. We're about 50 seconds off that half distance marker. So we are going to cross the line and complete seven laps by this half distance mark. Not quite a way off now then the gap 1.154 Ingram has been in a race of his own there at the front he was uh, he finished really high in the UKC recently third place in the UKC championship so it's top level karting here for the NKC all plate 
and great to see drivers of the ilk of Freddie Ingram coming out to play after their main season is finished and whether we see Freddie Ingram taking part in the last two rounds of the Junction 6 NKC Championship uh, that would be nice to see as well got some lappery about to come up the, uh, they're catching up the nine of Harry Heen or Harry Hine who started badly fastest lap of the race and again from Freddie Ingram 45.020 gap's gone out to 1.4 seconds mm. so he's not he's into that rhythm Nick isn't he he's into that rhythm controlling that race at his pace which is blistering yeah and this is significantly more procession than we were expecting for a junior Rotax we had a bit of action on the first lap since then very sensible the guys have uh, spread out really it's almost like they've just settled into their pace and their pace is all a couple of hundreds faster as you go back and a couple of hundreds slower and they've managed to gap themselves no one really is under any immediate pressure in the top I think they, they ain't close one last time I was 7th and 8th but even that's as I'm watching it visually now nothing really is happening to about 10th to 11th everyone else is spread out nicely that's a back marker there on the Lando Norris cart the yellow and blue cart just using his his head very much that's the number 9 of Harry Hine ninth in the UK in the NKC championship last year and Hine having a problem one of the spinners on lap one wasn't he yeah, but, but, but he had, luckily he got going when others yeah. didn't but he's probably not feeling very lucky he's been lapped I wouldn't think no I think not the gap's gone out to well, it's come it's come back it's come back towards him 1.3 but we're into the final third any moment now crossing the line Let's see what the gap is. Oh, Nicholas Ellis turning it on. That's the fastest lap of the race for Nicholas Ellis. 44.938. Yeah, but he only gained a few thousands, didn't he? And Freddie Ingram went as quick as he's gone all race. 44.980. It's come down to 1.3. So Nicholas Ellis coming back towards the leader. However, too little, too late might be the turn. Then fourth and fifth is getting injured. He's dropped back to the third, fourth and fifth battle. They're now much closer. So there is a place on the podium, though it's all about the winning, obviously. You do get a little trophy to take home. Yeah, you will. And we have a podium presentation coming up later. By you? Uh, I think so. Yeah. The Joe Bradley Memorial Podium. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Katja Tomaszewski is in the red car. He is running in third. Then you've got Harry Hamnan in the white and the blue and he is in fourth and then Billy Edgecombe in the blue uh, both Billy Edgecombe actually is nipping up into fourth place right now Freddie Ingram was just lulling us into a sense of security there as the gap reduced to Nicholas Ellis in second and then Freddie Ingram just puts in a 44.702 and edges that gap out again to 1.6 so 69 Freddie Ingram on his way we'll, we'll pick we'll pick Freddie up towards the yeah. final minute or so yeah. but well, right now this is where the racing is isn't it yeah, it's uh, five and six so it's Edgecombe uh, sorry four, four and five it's Edgecombe and Hamden but Edgecombe got past Hamden that time so they are right together the darker dark blue and the light blue and dark blue and against the white the blue behind that red car that is Katja Tomaszewski in third Edgecombe just dragging those, those fourth and fifth carts towards the top three Here they come, out of Ashby. It doesn't seem to be any... It's a bit of a stalemate there, as we sometimes see, once they've got into that position. That's the number 200 of Kasper Tomalewski. Billy Edgecombe on the number 20 in second, just looking down the inside there. And Harry Hannum there, the third cart in that picture. It's third, fourth and fifth there. Harry Hannum coming back now with Billy Edgecombe. Edgecombe fully aware of that situation, as he can feel him, just nudging his bump ever so gently. Two minutes remaining on the clock. Freddie Ingram's leading by 1.6 seconds from Nicholas Ellis. And then there's this battle for third, fourth and fifth. Kasper Tomaleski, Billy Edgecombe, Harry Hannum. Coming out of Ingerman's now and down into Ashby Corner. A downhill sweep using all of the kerb and a little bit more. Tomaleski moving away from the carts in fourth and fifth. And is that oh, because oh. Edgecombe has Hannum to contend with and so he's adjusting his driving accordingly to keep him behind as he come out of the boot through pits bend very fast sweeping right under there across the line 14 laps completed laps out to 1.7 seconds now between first and second 
that really is Freddie yeah. Ingram's to lose. Yeah. He's dominated this final. Started from poor position. You could see he's dominated the deer then. Well, yeah. I mean, Edgecombe. Started from poor. The guys on the screen at the moment, Edgecombe, going very defensive to try and stop hand them. But, yeah, nothing about Freddie Ingram. 1.7 seconds ahead. Nicholas Ellis, again, about 1.7 seconds ahead of Casper Tomlescu. He's got a slightly kind of visual lead to see to go around the corner now. That's the red cart. That's Casper. Four or five, Edgecombe and Hannon. They're battling away. And Hannon now decides to go up the inside uh, into the entry to the boot. And uh, Edgecombe could do nothing about that. It was a smooth, clean pass. And he didn't have the chance of the switchback for Edgecombe. And they'll now swap around. They'll spend the last couple of minutes working out what to do next. So the question is... No, they're not going to get two more. This is the penultimate lap. Yeah, they're uh, still going to be squabbling all the way and the they flag. And they'll get Edgecombe gets yeah. past Hannon. Well, it's going to be last lap to go board for Freddie Ingram, so we might want to pick oh, him yeah, up. Oh, yeah, we'll pick up Freddie. So Freddie, who is in the uh, purple and purple blue 69, cars. about four carts ahead of this, Ash. He'll be coming down the short straight now, our leader. There he is, Ash, just coming towards you now into the boot. Cart number 69. There we are. That is a textbook performance uh, with one lap to go by Freddie Ingram. Uh, never headed during that race. A little bit of uh, um, pressure early on, but just effectively broke the will of everybody. Nick said it's a good, good result from him. He managed to break through the, for the pack behind him, put in some good times, but you kind of feel that at all points, Ingram's had a little bit in reserve. He's always had a couple of tents he could call upon when he needed it. He's driven a very, very clean race. He's done a very, very correct race as well here at Wilton Mill for the NKC O-Plate. And let's hope he can run the O-Plate by entering some of the events. Yeah, he's had a great 2023 so far. I'm not sure how he's doing in the Vera Tools British Championship. He's just had a third place finish in the UKC Championship and here he is at Wilton Mill about to take the ore plate through the final turn Freddie Ingram will take the flag two-handed salute to Stu Stretton there getting that winning photograph and I think you said it all there Nick you described uh, his drive there to take this junior Rotax final in very dominant style from the pole position and as we saw, he gets off into the lead, and then what we see... Oh, it's a red flag. We've got a red flag oh, now. A red flag at the chequered flag. I'm not really sure what that means. Oh, there's some cars. There are some cars knocking about. I'm not quite sure what's caused that problem. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're just trying to... I think they're trying to get them to slow down more than they were going to yes, oblivion. Yes, I think so. Yeah. The race is over. Slow down. And they're going too fast in oblivion with two carts off. One cart is... I'm not sure if someone's hurt, actually. Is someone hurt on that exit of Oblivion, on, on Crooks? I don't know. We'll see what, how the uh, officials sort yeah, that out. I meanwhile, think, meanwhile I think Nick. some in the cart. Okay, yeah, meanwhile, so. Nick, we've got Freddie Ingram making his way around to the Park Fermit. Yep, we'll where get those. Once again, we'll have Gasbury. And a marvellous shot of some breeze blocks. Have some breeze blocks, yep, absolutely. Um, two more finals to come. Senior Road Tax, it's the 162 kilogram category, is our penultimate final. Again, 12 minutes and one lap. And then we've got Road Tax 177 in the. That will round off our NKC all plate meeting here at Wilton Mill for 2023. Yep, two more races. There might be a bit of a delay. There's, there's, I think there's, a, there's going to be some, some. There's something about these all plate meetings, Nick, that I kind of love. Um, and I think it's all about the jeopardy, isn't it? I mean, I'm glad I'm not out there. I'm glad I'm standing here talking about it. I'm glad I'm not out there. Mm. Um, that's the thing. Um, I'm more than happy to soak up all the drama and intensity of what an all-plate meeting is about. Um, I'm not sure what we've got there in Park Fermit. No, I'm not sure. That's, that's a different driver. Um, we haven't yet got uh, Gaz Bury and his uh, amazing... Uh, um Yanking uh, crow harp crowbar to hook everyone in. Just looking look out that way again. Yeah, unfortunately, we've got a bit of paramedic um, attending uh, someone at, at the exit of Crook. So that's um, a bit, well. We've got the interview first, and there may well be a delay after that before we get started. Gaz is shuffling around right now within the uh, the environs of the uh, hear him park for me. Uh, so two more. Two more finals to go. We'll just keep an eye out, our eye out on the park firm here. But this is not the end of the 2023 season. Absolutely We've got plenty not. plenty of racing still to come. We've got the final two rounds of the Junction 6 NKC coming uh, in September and October. 
fullback and clear pigeon. Carting Life TV heads further north to Warden Law for the Autumn Cup. There are two day meeting on the weekend of the <laughs> 11th and 12th of November, and we'll be bringing you both of those days all coming to you live. Now, there's a lot of, um, of, of uh, trolley action down in the, uh, the park, Fermi, so we'll, uh, but we do have Gasbury, so what we'll do, are we, are we ready to roll, Ash? Are we okay? Are we trying to move people around a little bit? Can we get a thumbs up from Ash or not? I'm waiting for it. No, I think they're trying to get people out of the way. There's all sorts of stuff. People lot are fine, Nick. Just keep them in the background. People are fine. Yeah. They're fine if they're in the background. They're carrying carts. They're putting. I think, ah, right, I, I think yeah. the actual problem was that where we had wanted to have a shot, there was actually a a cart waiting to go. Okay, I think we're all right. Are we, are we ready? I'm waiting for. I'm, it's very exciting. Yes, yeah, got the thumbs up. Okay, and it's now. <laughs> it's very exciting. So with Freddie Ingram, uh, it is of course our very own Gaz Boule. Freddie, you've been on fire all weekend. Stratospheric speed you've carried all the week, all day. Tell us how you got through that one. Um, well, we've been one of the quickest all day, so it's just a matter of getting out there, getting a gap and just going for the win, really. It was getting quite close, I think, it was it in second, Nicholas? Ellis, Nic yeah, yeah, Ellis, Ellis, wasn't it? Yeah. You kept him at bay for quite a long time, though. He was, uh, did he look to challenge you at all? Uh, yeah, he was challenging me in the heats. Um, maybe if I got a bit of a worse start, then we might have had a, a good battle at the end. Good race, though. You are the junior road sax O-plate champion. Well done, mate. Cheers, thank you. A very happy winner there. Great stuff. Great stuff. Well done, Freddie Ingram. Absolute dominant in that junior road tax category. Now, good news, Rash. You've got a bit of delay. He hasn't got to run back. Yeah. Um, there's one. There's one, one carter has been uh, picked up in the uh, small of the paramedic vans, and a couple of carts are being rescued from their resting place around the track but I think the last of the trolleys is cleared just wanted to mention the rest of the calendar like we said Nick mm -hmm. um, for, for next year and then going into next year but uh, I wanted to mention also that the uh, the Autumn Cup at Warden Law mm -hmm. uh, on that weekend in November that we are running a class for 177 road tax on Maxis tyres so if you're don't NKC, throw away yeah if you're NKC season is concluded in October, as it should be at Clear Pigeon. Don't throw those tyres away. Come up to Warden Law for the two-day Autumn Cup. That's two race days, complete separate race days, going into and amalgamating the results from both days to award our Warden Law Car Club Autumn Cup. And it'll all be live on Karting Live TV, all two days. So get your entries in nice and early. Uh, you don't want to be disappointed and not make the cut. 2024 is almost upon us. It isn't is. It? It, yeah. It's round the corner. One day it it's really 2023. Is. The next day we're another year older. It really is kicking off the season for 2024. Clear pigeon in April. Uh, week, uh, last weekend of May, first of June is Fulbeck. Round three, Wilton Mill at the end of June, and then the middle of July we go to round four at Rowra, and then we are at Three Sisters in September. Forest Edge is a circuit that I am unfamiliar with, and I'm very excited. However, I've got to wait over a year before <laughs> I can curb this excitement, because <laughs> it's October of 2024, would you believe? And already I'm wishing me very life away. Very excited about a whole away. another year away, yeah. Wishing my life away. How much excitement can you take in one year? All the excitement. Uh, let's have a look at the Senior Raw Tax 162 grid, shall we? Yes. Uh, this is going to be an absolute... <laughs> <laughs> we are in race control, everybody, so we are right in the thick of protests and quibbles and queries and the like and it is a very busy place um we've got kieran gifford on the pole position with philip howarth alongside second row braden hill and matthew herbert third row alex mcgee and ollie varney we've got then got tommy lee davis and shane collinson great effort from shane there to see him qualify eighth for this a final matthew lambert and aiden rudge are on the fifth row. Ollie Goodyear, Alex Moody, row six. Evie Poulin and Jamie Rogers are on row seven. We've then got Toby Case and George Sanders on row eight. Row nine is Alex Wannabe and Archie Lyons with Brody Trahon and Ryan Mills on row 10. Jensen Watts and Archie Elliott are on row 11. Reese Pope and Hayden Phillips are on row 12. Jake Davis, Dan Andrews are on row 13 with Joseph McVeigh and Alex Jackson on row 14. Jake Richards and Scott Goolsby 
are the uh, final row 15, 30 carts. We are running 34 carts, so we've got the B final uh, qualifiers on the back of that 30 cart grid as well. So just waiting for some uh, maintenance to be completed out on track. We uh, have then got two more of our finals to two more all plates to award. And both of them are senior road tax classes. First out the 162, and that denotes the weight. The minimum weight of this category is 162 kilograms. And then the final event of the weekend, the road tax, senior road tax 177s. That's easy to work out. It's a minimum weight of 177 kilograms. So just looking at the collecting area, we've got everybody waiting. The tension is building, no doubt, down there. You can cut the f atmosphere with a knife. It's a fever is beginning to build, and we've got engines already firing up. As Sarah Darlow gives them the word to get underway. Hooray! And we fire those Rotax Max carts off the collecting area and out on their warm-up lap. This is where it starts getting very, very tense indeed, Nick. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. There's an awful lot of carts, though. Power oh, from there uh, is. Gifford from Hill. From... So Phil's got pole, has he? No, he hasn't. It's Kieran Gifford on oh, pole. Second, Kieran like, Gifford, just yeah. Over first. Marcus King, Tom Patterson, Michael Goodburn are the carts that have come out and qualified 31st, 32nd and 33rd. So Braden Hill's qualified third. We haven't mentioned him all day. Or all yesterday? Yeah, we have. Braden Hill was really? fe featured this morning, yeah. Oh, right, in the it time attack. It may have been attack. the time attack, yeah. Yes, that's yeah. why I was doing other things, like wandering around going, why isn't that working? Yeah, Braden Hill, I mean, cracking result for him. First year in seniors, yeah, he was very much amazing. at the front of things in juniors last year, moving up into seniors and finds himself on the second row of the grid with the likes of Kieran Gifford and Phil Howarth just ahead of him. Um, I think another uh, cracking run has been Shane Collinson. Uh, first taste of NKC driving. First taste of NKC regulations on the Maxis tyre. And there he is, qualifying in sixth place. So I hope to see Shane, uh, Shane Collinson and Andy Collinson back to uh, run with us in the NKC. Howarth is absolutely eye-boiling uh, <laughs> Gifford. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's because Gifford is the man controlling the pace. And look at that. He got left behind there. He's Howarth also, he's has also, been absolutely mugged. And he's also got the wrong, wrong race suit on it. It's D. Russell on it. Does it really? Yeah. I don't think it's a sponsor. I think it's another drive. Oh, two off on the grass on the, on the outside of uh, Crooks. Full start. Full start. Oh, full start there because I think we had Phil Howarth who just didn't get the burst off the line. We should, we've should. we got lots of carts coming together. So hopefully we have a have full they got grid. The, have they got the full start? Um, uh, we've got flags being waved now. We're still racing as far as you can see. Well, people aren't All we've got is yellow start. flags at Marshall's Pool. Yeah, they haven't got the full we start flag. We won't see flag. the full start flag out until we, get to the f until we get to the start straight. That's the problem. There is yellow flags flying. And now we need to slow these carts down. False flag flies, hands in the air, warning everybody. And that's going to be quite a job to reinstigate this grid into grid order. No, two of the carts Phil Howarth is saying, I don't know what happened there. Kieran Gifford slows everybody down. We're going to red flag it and, and then restart again. again. So, on. yeah, that's um, a little bit of confusion there. We've got carts off left, right and centre. So we're going to bring them back to the start-finish straight probably, or maybe even at the boot, where we'll, uh, where we'll gather them up on the back straight or something, Nick. I assume so, yeah, they'll park up. Um, and they'll try and reorder them correctly. I don't know whether they're, they're going to give them a little bit of, a, of a, um, a telling off as well at some point. I'm not sure what they can tell them off for. If you, if you, if you, it's it's probably safer to go off at racing speed and be the than be the only person who realises there's a false start. Yeah, if everybody around you is racing on, then you've got to, you've got to do that, or else you become become a bit of a hazard. Did they release too early? though, is the question. Isn't I'm it? not sure. I'm not sure. I think the reason why they're bringing them to a halt is to get them back into restart order. So there's our field of Rotax Max Seniors, 162 category. First two rows are okay. Just pulling them 
into some semblance of order. Yeah, a couple of car guys have got up out of the carts going, what's going on? They are now reorder or reordering them as they were. The joys, the joys of Rotax Maxes. Yeah, which exactly. Yeah, imagine if these were all style yeah. sort of 100 supers that we've seen. If you go and get the little, yeah, four wheel roller thing yeah, yeah. clip in the back and go. Oh. Or your mates. Yeah, well, get your mates. Or, well, you would have yeah. no mates. I, w yeah. I wouldn't be able to restart. That'd be, no. be out. Absolutely, you'd be gone, mate. What can I do? I have failed the restart. Gaz Bury. Uh, <laughs> I love you. Is that what you say? <laughs> No, um, <laughs> it's just checking in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, just going to see. Give him, give him, lots, of, give him lots of positive vibes. I'm we haven't able to hear any of them. Dual, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can see the um, them being reordered. Some milling about, drivers waiting to see what to do. There's an awful lot of traffic going on um, on the channels for the marshals and the starters. I suppose that's just, I think, I think because a couple of people fell off and whether they're actually going to put them back in their original position and whether they have to uh, pick up and go. Oh, Nick, would you mind not standing on my is that important, headset? Is it? Yeah, yeah, just it makes me normally, normally, not able to Normally I turn my own one just pull my head this. off, yeah. So this is taking longer than it should, isn't it? Is it well, is no, it's not, it's not an easy job, that. I mean, Sarah's doing a cracking job getting everybody... In the order, well, you've I got to be fair. Everybody, you know what? Everybody's worked really hard over two days, and the last thing you want is to get an unfair starting position. You know, if you should be starting in 23rd, not 29th. You've got a lot mm. of drivers out there, 33 <laughs> drivers out there. I know we're probably going to lose some because we, uh, we we had a few incidents there, didn't we? Yeah, there was a couple that were out in the grass at the exit of um, Crooks, but I, wonder, I think they probably are okay because they just didn't damaged. There's um, obviously there's always someone moaning at the front. There's always somebody moaning about something, or put, not moaning, <laughs> putting their, their their considered opinion forward. Well, yes, everybody's. You know, My considered it's, opinion it's, is it's I a, should be allowed to start on pole. Why? It's, because I know, consider myself the fastest. There's a lot of time and effort goes into putting a cart onto a track. There's a lot of time and effort putting any. Oh, there's a cart rejoining it, which had pulled into the pits. That's the 34 cart. Who's 34? 34 is Dan Andrews. Dan Andrews, yeah. So he's decided to rejoin the party. As uh, poor old Sarah is having to go right down the back of the grid and, and, and look at people who. As there's a car, the 39 car's abandoned. He just left. Whose is that then? Where's the driver for that one? I think that may be the driver having the oh, conversation at the yes. front. Yes. Who is 39? I have no idea. 39 is. I might find it on your screen. 39? Are you sure it's 39? Oh, uh, looks like 39, isn't it? Over there, Paul? A uh, cart with no driver looks like 39 to me. There is no 30. This could be, this could be, he might find out he's in the wrong race and asked to be excused. He might have done a full hands, he might be a local and hands higher and just joined. A local <laughs> hands higher. You've got to be of a certain uh, age or a complete geek to know what that means or it? followed us on do you want to tell uh, the story no because because it, it's our preventic story and you have to listen to us at barcelona for that's that. right yeah um hopefully i've, I've, I've missed kenneth i hope kenneth comes back and races with us some more kenneth Hyatt. yeah kenneth Hyatt. yeah he's done a bit of karting in his time I imagine he has yeah. everything amg well, he was an amg works driver so we have got a formed grid over there on the back straight towards the boot um a bit of a crowd building as well over there. Oh, there's the a paddock, paddock, there's, there's yeah. less and less people have got something to do now. Their days are finished. Yeah, they're all they're all gathering, gathering on, round on the outside of Ashby Corner. There's a bit of a, a quite a gathering of, of spectators at the fence. We might even be able to get a Mexican wave going there. They're not listening. We're not a PA. No, don't spoil the magic. We're not the PA. Why do you do that? How Why is do you do? That? Sorry, how is the magic about us being on the PA? What's magical about PAs? If you sat at home, they might even believe that we could get a Mexican wave going over there. But then you're giving them false hope. Hang on, which being oh, well, hang on. engines on. Yeah, we're being held. We're being held. Stop that. Spirit. We've got a bit more. Silly. Bit are they going to try and make it do? Are they going to try and start them in half a lap or a lap and a half? Bit more deliberation going on, I think. Um, so, 
mm. just to get things rolling again. At some point, yeah. It's, the O-play. it's the O-play A final for Senior Rotax. I think we might be checking on who came out of the pits to rejoin, because I'm not sure you can do that. If it's a complete restart, you can. Mm. Race never started, so you're fine with doing that. Right, okay. So because that, that occurred, yeah, the race didn't get started, did it? We didn't get a green flag, did we? Yeah, of course. Right, off we go. So no deliberations. We're getting okay, everybody way underway. Too fast. Very, very fast indeed. Mm -hmm. My first mm -hmm. ever Super One round, I couldn't catch them on the warming up. <laughs> I literally couldn't catch them. <laughs> that didn't bode well for the race, it was like, did it? What the? <laughs> what are you doing, boys? I thought this was the warm up lap where you, where you just look cool. <laughs> no, they were off. Whoosh! Ah! Brilliant. Catch them. What a bunch of bees. So Matthew then. Herbert is the 39, by the way. Okay. Kieran Gifford then gets another chance to get this thing underway. Philip Howarth will not want to get as mugged as he did that first start. Braden Hill and Matthew Herbert. Matthew Herbert was what? He was the guy who didn't start. So I don't think... Ah, I, right. I, I think he's still at the back. Right, well, Matthew Herbert... I don't think he started the first race either. So right, they, they, well, he, what they're saying, you can't, get, you can't reclaim your place for the second race because you didn't start the first uh, that's race. That's why there's a gap on the second row. Yeah. That's why there's a gap. Alex McGee, Ollie Varney, Tommy Lee Davis, Shane Collins in row four, Matthew Lambert, Aidan Rudge are on row five. Here they come then, they're in the boot. Phil Howarth is looking at Kieran Gifford because he has to keep pace with Kieran Gifford. That's what he's doing. Yeah, he's, watching he's watching his foot. He's watching his foot. Now we're going to go. That's a better start. And Kieran Gifford leads into oblivion. Phil Howarth second. The rest of the field making their way around. It's very, very crowded there in the mil midfield. And it's they all file out and fan out towards Christmas Corner. It's very much Kieran Gifford and Phil Howard though. Can't tell who's that orange helmet in third place. Might, we'll get a pink, look at the number. Top, orange helmet. Braden, Braden Hill, Hill it is, the youngster. And then it's the 30 of Olivani. I think he's got past McGee into fourth. So first year in seniors, and here he is running third behind Gifford and Howarth in the ore plate and these two working together you see how clever these three at the front are just working together let's see as they come through we'll have a run quick run down to the top 10 as they fire across the line string of carts Kieran Gifford Philip Howard Braden Hill Ollie Varney Matthew Lambert Alex McGee Tommy Lee Davis Alex Moody Ollie Good Jamie Rogers the lead, is your top 10 straight into the lead there goes Howard first opportunity at Christmas corner now, sweeping down through Inkermans. Now, that doesn't mean anything. Just because he got the drag and a bit of the, the aero effect. Now, can he get past, Gifford get bet past again, or will it be Hill moving forward next? Yeah, we'll see. Well, we, we'll see. Gifford knew that was coming at some point in the next 12 minutes. Yeah. When you come very early. That Phil Howarth. Don't forget, Phil Howarth wasn't going to, wasn't going to attend this uh, O plate because he had the hump after the last round of the NKC. Yeah, but, but he's back. He, well, he calms he, down very quickly. He was calmed by about Monday, I believe. As think. quickly as he loses his temper, he, he, he calms down. Braden Hill has lost that third place yep. to Alex McGee and as they come through. Oh, sorry, no, it's not. It's, it's Ollie Varney. Ollie Varney in the yellow and blue cart there, number 30. Alex McGee, it is down to six. It's Matthew Lambert up to fifth behind Braden Hill. So Gifford. Happy to follow Howarth round. Remember, only two laps of running, so the tyre's not quite there, especially with that bit of delay with the red flag. So tyre's just beginning to come on song now. Inside of go. 10 minutes, there's Gifford. You're having a look up the inside of Howarth. Didn't happen that time. Now look around the boot. I don't think you're going to over and under Phil Howarth around the boot at Wilton Mill. But it's a conundrum now for Gifford unless he can get the run up the hill to Christmas up where he can get past Howarth Howarth controlling the pace but it is a very very long queue of cars yeah. effectively effectively well, the carts are a couple of lengths behind so the first six eight are covered by 2.3 seconds well you've got the first six in the train nose to tail oh maybe even a seventh mm. car Tommy Lee Davis be one to join in as well so Howarth leading Gifford second Ollie Varney third it's anybody's to take this one I wouldn't like to pick a winner at this stage out of any of those six or seven carts because look what we saw earlier. Look what we saw in the Minimax final. There was only nine carts in that one. So Howarth leads out of the boot, maximises his exit speed. Gifford 
Gifford not too far away and likewise Varney not too far away from Gifford six carts nose to tail up towards Christmas this is Gifford's chance can he think about it? no he doesn't he's happy to sit there isn't he it's a high speed game of chess oh Nick. fantastic That's it's a, a high they, they speed momentum game of chess to carry him through the race but yeah it's, it's uh, nose to tail across the top six carts it's, um, it's hard to tell whether Gifford is going for the watching brief or that's him on the edge he can't get any faster I know it is hard to tell Hills dropped back from that third to fifth so Braden being uh, taught a lesson by the older boys at school at the moment but who knows he may, be, may come back in this much longer final they aren't yet at a normal heat length there's still eight and three quarter minutes or so to go 44.959 44.904 that was Gifford's time quicker than the leader Howarth still staying in position in the Christmas corner nobody wanting to make any kind of move it's very very easy to be hung out to dry quite simply if you make that move you can go from second to Ooh. seventh very quickly that was a bat marker pulling, pulling off, off Nick don't yeah, get excited yeah, he's pulling off yeah, yeah. So the one on I one is so yeah, to be actually, actually going through the wiggly bit of road and yeah, stopping he's just there pull, he's just pulling off and stopping so the one on one still being tailed by Gifford on the 28 the yellow and blue livery of Philip Howarth that gold helmet and then the red and white livery of Kieran Gifford just pulling away slightly from the number 30 there of Oli Varney gaps half as well three tenths of a second and there's no doubt about it Gifford's plan is working he's gone with Howarth and these two now working together and not really tripping one another up and challenging still seven minutes remaining so we're not even at half distance yet and it really is a game of nerves, of steel, high-speed game of chess. But are we beginning to see a little bit of a break from the first two away from yeah. third place man, Olivani? Because they're working, you see. They're working together. They're not trying challenging. Trying to give themselves a bit of breathing they room. They are flat out, like you said, yeah. don't they? Give themselves a bit of breathing room in their personal battle. And Varney dropped off a tiny bit, but then I think it may, may have got no, still those three tens. It's hard to tell whether that's a comfort with Varney is enjoying being a comfortable gap behind them during this kind of middle phase of the race. Big black nose of Matthew Lambert's fourth, and then you've got the orange and grey car, which oddly looks pink sometimes, of Braden Hill, the 35 and fifth. Well, you can see how hard Phil is uh, driving at the front of this field, ducking his head down behind the steering wheel just to reduce the airflow. He's still, you know, he's still pushing on. I mean, yes, they may be piercing themselves, but they're piercing themselves at a very, very high rate of pace. Kieran Gifford just looks composed in the wake of Phil Howarth I've got to say it oh. oh he's got momentum out of the boot there doesn't he and Thank at half distance it. half distance still half of this race remaining it's now beginning to get a little bit warmer isn't it yeah and Hill got Lambert in that last lap, that last lap as well so Braden Hill now that's why there's a gap and into the lead goes Gifford he's taken that one chance that it seems to present itself so often for the Carters here at Wilt Mill up the inside at Christmas Corner so it's all changed now we've now got to uh, Kieran Gifford ahead of Howarth, and we've got Braden Hill ahead of Lambert, but one, two, and three back to being nailed together again on his line with that watching brief. Right then, let's see if Howarth can trail Kieran Gifford round now. His turn to lead, and if anything, he's pulled out the pace, hasn't he? Mm. Gifford pulls a cart's length on Philip Howarth, who likewise has a bit of a cart's length on Ollie Varney. As they cross the line now, it'll be nine laps completed. It's Gifford, Howarth, Varney, Braden Hill, Lambert, McGee, Moody, Goodyear. Jensen Watts up to ninth now. Tommy Lee Davies at tenth, and then Evie Poole in just just outside the top ten and eleven spot there. I think uh, Howarth gave uh, Varney the let's work together to chase down uh, Gifford uh, signal uh, coming into Christmas Corner. I'm not sure whether uh, Varney's that interested in getting it, but um, certainly since getting the lead, Gifford's looked pretty comfortable in that position. He actually looked comfortable just following Phil round, didn't he? Phil Howarth mm. was being followed there by Kieran Gifford, and Kieran Gifford just looked like he had something else it to give, and it, it's proved to be the case. He's now chosen his time, he's, cho he's chosen his moment to go, and it was right on the half distance. Whether or not he's gone early, still four and a half minutes of this race left, and, you know, there's nothing stopping the drivers behind him Howarth, Varney, Hill, Lambert, McGee, Moody maybe catching him you know it's all about tyre management as well remember yeah so we are in that stage of the race where it's a bit of a not so much a stalemate just a bit of a waiting game 
we're not gonna we haven't seen anybody tripping over one another which is when all sorts of things can happen and if anything Gifford half a second lead very composed there isn't he got ahead I think he's decided that actually where he wants to be is in the lead regardless of whether that may make him a uh, a target but he's actually eased out by another couple of tenths so it looks like he's actually got a basic pace advantage over Howarth at the moment Howarth himself has got a nice gap over Varney Varney is about to come under the attention of Braden Hill in the orange and grey striped cart with the orange helmet just going through Incomers now with another cart preventing any overtaking there it wouldn't normally happen now Can Hill who dropped a fifth in some early skirmishes get himself back up onto the podium right behind Varney that's where the battle is third and fourth at the moment as Gifford eases away from Howarth with uh, just over three minutes to go yeah controlling the pace Gifford he made his break at half distance we're now three minutes away from that point and he looks very strong Phil Howarth looks equally as strong in second place Ollie Varney and Braden Hill are beginning to come together it's the last step of the podium at the ore plate which is you know I wouldn't say irrelevant because it does show some sort of uh, reward let's say yeah, to a, being part of that for trophy your, for your presentation work. yeah it is all about the all player though Nick it is all about the win and right now Kieran Gifford looks like he's on his way two and a half minutes away from a chequered flag you know, all over Varney coming into Chapman there but he didn't quite get the exit and lost out overall now looking to gain some momentum he fires the cart out through pit bend and down start finish and it's that quick shift jink to the left the first part of Oblivion, they're much longer, faster, wider exit of Crooks and up to Christmas Corner. And they, 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 I don't think that Var, I think Varney actually is gaining very slightly on Howarth, and Howarth is going nowhere near yeah. gaining on yeah. Gifford. Gifford is a second now. And I think it's much more likely we're going to see a change for second than we're going to see a change for first, and even more likely we're going to see a change for third. Oh, and Howarth's off. Howarth's made a mistake and gone off and drops to fourth. Well, Pressure got to Phil. He's gone off at the exit of Ashby. And he drops the fourth. This is now the second and third battle between Braden Hill wow. and uh, Olivani. Very out of character, that. The current NKC 177 Rotax champion. Very rare you see Phil Howarth make a mistake. But here we are. He has indeed. And that's allowed Olivani and Braden Hill up into second and third. Howarth recovers to fourth. Matthew Lambert fifth. Alex McGee sixth. Ollie Goodyear. Jensen Watts up to eighth. Alex Moody now ninth. Tommy Lee Davis still 10th and Evie Poulin just lying there just outside the top 10 and 11. Braden Hill's looking for that second place, isn't he? That orangey white livery on it. the cart into Parker down the inside of Oli Varney. And then went defensive, thinking he was going to get switched back from Varney through Chapman. But actually, he's got past an immediately kind of gap, but he didn't get quite the drive. And so they're right, nailed the nose to tail again, going through the boot. But Braden Hill yeah. holds his line and Varney now under uh, quite close attention from well, Matthew Lambert. Matthew, well, Phil Howarth's in there. Well, Howarth well. and Lambert, yeah, sorry, Howarth and Lambert. And yeah. Lambert, yeah. That's going to be a battle all the way at the flag. We're inside the final 30 seconds. Whether or not we get the last lap to go, oh, Howarth, Howarth, Howarth comes down the inside the of Varney and into that third step, onto that third step of the podium. He's going to be kicking himself inside that helmet for making that mistake at Ashby, that corner right there where he slid very wide, just carried too much momentum, slid himself over the kerbs. So we've got our leader, it'll Kieran be, Gifford. It'll be last lap this time round. I'm not sure. There is, yeah, yes. it's got to be. It's seconds, seven, start, five, four, three, two, one. There's it's going to be right on it. So Howarth is right behind Braden Hill, but we probably need to uh, celebrate our leader. So let's pick up the leader who's coming at the hill. There he is. Yeah, the red and white car. He, he's just looked over his shoulder there, Nick, and he's thinking, oh, that's easy. Oh, where is everyone? Yeah, great drive from Kieran Gifford. Really was the star of the show, pretty much. Started from the pole position, and he didn't panic, did he, when Phil Howarth took the lead? Phil Howarth had, a, had a, a bit of a turn controlling this race, and Kieran Gifford just stayed composed. He knew what he had in the toolbox. And into the boot for the final time and through the final turn here at Wilton Mill to be greeted by the chequered flag and the ore plate. We'll see Gifford out on the ore plate next time. He points at his mortar. I'm not sure what mortar Gifford's running. But it won. <laughs> it uh, is all about Kieran Gifford, though, on the slow down lap. I can't see what his engine, his radiator plate says. 
to tell you what sort of motor Great he's running. Great result Hill, though. Runners up yeah, what, the what, play. Yeah, um, what happened to Phil Howarth at the uh, end there? I think Varney got him. So he um, dropped fourth by... A, nope. No, 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 he's still nope, third. So he's it's, still it's, third. It's, it's disordered, sorry. It's disordered, there we go. Yeah, still for third. Brayton Hill, what a great drive from the youngster. Second at the all plate. I mean, that is no dis disgrace. First season in seniors. Outstanding drive from pretty much everybody there because that... That Nick was a very, very clean affair. Yeah. That was a very clean affair. Top 10, Kieran Gifford, Braden Hill, Philip Howard third, Ollie Varney fourth, Matthew Lambert fifth. Then we've got Alex McGee, Ollie Goodyear, Jensen Watts finishes eighth, Alex Moody, Tommy Lee Davis, Evie Poulin finally finishes in 11th. Archie Lyons was 12th. Then we've got Brody Trahorn, George Sanders, Shane Collinson 15th. Great, uh, great finish there for Shane. New to the NKC. Hopefully Shane will come back with uh, Andy. Alex Warnaby, Jamie Rogers, Toby Case, Scott Goolsby, rounding off the top 20 was Jake Davis. Yeah, great result. Good race. I mean, it didn't quite explode like we thought it would do. Good, no, good I know. Four or five I know, laps. I know. It, and it uh, got to see a Phil Howarth mistake, which is always a, a, a rarity. But, um, oh, there's a big conversation of drivers there. Why are they gathering all the drivers together? Um, well, they're all the 177 drivers. Can we? Oh, we can't see that from Ash's camera, can we? Because we haven't got Ash's camera. We're waiting yeah, for a super yeah, yeah. interview. Yeah, of course. But they're all the 177 drivers and their multicolored helmets standing up being briefed by old Chris style, Cox. All style driver briefing, that, isn't it? Well, you, what you can do is whilst you're doing your Is Nazi that all? Oh, they're, they're, they're having their wrist slap, uh, Will's just told me. <laughs> are, they, are they being given, read, read out the riot act? Right, lads, this is what we don't want. This is what we want to see. Because it's the in, it, it's so it's such an intense affair, isn't it? You know, it's it's bound to be. I mean, the the championship rounds are intense enough, but when it comes down to who finishes first, hello, Zach. You guys have come a long way, Zach Bolton and uh, Keith Mason, in well, the crowd spectating. Well, from up north, yes, from Hull, from Hull, <laughs> <laughs> actually from Hull. So we are just waiting to go down to Park Firm here where Gasbury will be with grabbing Kieran Gifford and putting him in front of his camera. And we'll get the insight of just what that was like then to take the win, started from the pole position, took the lead and was never headed again. little bit of drama there with Phil Howarth leading for a little bit. And then, of course, he took control back. And was never headed again. He uh, he pulled out quite a gap, didn't he? So I'm just going to put my hand up to Sarah to get that well, we haven't stop while yet we wait seen for where Gaz. Kieran is. Yeah. There's people walking past. Not realising that. Actually, they're not actually on camera. We haven't cut this shot up. But there's, there's a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of interesting outfits going past the moment. Yeah, there is. Um, we are about to get underway after we've had our uh, winner's interview in the Rotax 162 ca category yes. with our final race of the weekend. No. It's been a very, very busy three days for everybody at the NKC, two days of which we've brought you all live on the Karting Live TV live stream. Now, where are Gaz and his victim? No sign of Gads or Victor at the moment. There's plenty of sign of carts being lifted. Yeah, I'm not really sure. There's a lot of wandering about, I must admit. People love a bit of carting. Come on, Gaz. Wave at him, Ash. Get him, get him over. It's like waiting for someone to give birth, isn't it, to get this interview? <laughs> Yeah, it need to be a bit more forceful. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that in Park Firmes in karting. They don't seem to be aware that TV is the most important thing, thing in the world. If, uh, and, and at any race at meeting, any race meeting, TV, there's nothing more important. TV than TV rules. Too right. I need yeah. to uh, should be there just grabbing the people. That's what the sponsors want to see. They do get your get your fizzog on the telly. Come on. So what have we got next, Nick? Uh, Rotex one seven seven. No, I mean after this. Oh, uh, I we've got um, well. We've got, uh, if you're on RC Racing TV, there is uh, the European Championships of 1 8th Nitro Buggy coming up in about 10 days' time. Oh, no, this way, next weekend, there's the British Grand Prix for uh, RC Racing. Um, is that all from live? Hearts, all live all the time, Saturday and Sunday. Here we go. He hasn't got, he hasn't got a victim, has he? I'm I can't see sure. his victim. No. Uh, no. 
there's an awful lot of cart movement there. We, this, is, this is an interesting positioning for our camera. Yes, we've got uh, live RC for the next two weekends. Um, and then we go to, of course, the third weekend, we go to uh, Fullback for karting. And is this the winner? It is. Right, OK. Do we have thumbs up? We have thumbs up. So after a very, very long wait, this better be a kind of fantastic interview. It's Gaz Burry with our winner, Kieran Gifford. Kieran, as you just said to me a minute ago, you've been lit all weekend. What a drive. Tell us about it. Thanks very much. Yeah, it was good. We, um, I wanted to be patient at the beginning. I didn't want to go fully in on film in case it ended up in a big dog fight and uh, dropping back any more than I did. So I was patient. I think I picked the right time and, yeah, yeah come off with the win. So I'm very happy. Yeah, it's, um, did swap places, didn't you? Just holding your breath, waiting to see what happened and how it all unfolded ahead? Yeah, no, he, he did me and I thought, do you know what? I'm not going to go straight back. I thought I'll sit behind him manage the gap behind me, make sure no one's catching me too fast. When I saw the guys behind getting a bit closer, I thought now's my time. So I went for the move and yeah, paid off. So yeah. really happy. Top drive, Kieran. You are senior road tax O-plate champion. Well done, my Thanks man. Thanks very much, mate. Cheers. Well done. One other thing. Thank you for a really well organised event. Oh, that's all right. You guys are awesome. Oh, we do our best. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Gaz. How are you? We're off and running the next one. I'm not, I'm not quite sure we heard what that final comment by uh, Kieran was. I hope it was printable. Um, off we go. Final race of the day. Yep. So we've got uh, some RC for what? the next couple of weekends, and we've got karting. All right. Enough, and of, that, enough, I, of, that, enough no, of that. Enough of that. I've got a race on the track. I've got a race on the track. Ed Matthews on the pole position. Ed Matthews Is from Dan position. Holland Racing. He's on the pole. Yeah, absolutely outstanding run for Ed. Uh, Ryan Taylor Truman's along sli along slide alongside Scott Clee and Harrison Crook on the second row. Jimmy Zyra, uh, Ed Matthews' teammate, is on row three with Louis Large carrying the number two. Uh, Jimmy Tyler and Callum Porter on row four. Then we've got Ben Hitch, Josh Bickford, Scott Smith and Kyle Dunford, Joshua Gollin and Alex Rowley, Alef Alfie Williams, Daniel Burgess, Jack Taylor, Elliot Thomas, Nick Skelton, Oliver Smith, Jake Lewis, Ayrton Anderson, Andy Collinson, James Yap, Finley Cross, Alex Jones, Ollie Hancock, Joe Fifner. Peter Jeans and Alex Capardia, our good mate Alex Capardia in 30th position. And then we've got Tom T Tom Thompson, uh, Seb Pulpin and Steve Stewart on the back of the field. But that's Ed Matthews there in his Dan Holland racing overalls about to get things underway, Nick. Here we go. Peter turn one for the... If the airplane looks okay, I think that'll oh, unroll. Everyone goes across, and most of them go across. Oh, big off oh. there. That's Jimmy Zyra getting it all wrong and coming together there. 360 spin for him. I think it'll continue, but he's well out of contention now for the all plate. Ed Matthews has checked out. Let's, As that we one again. See. Let's have a look at that again. I'm not sure if we can see. We've got to look back down the mid midfield, haven't we? And there he oh, goes. No, he oh, he was in second. In second place, he got yeah. kicked round. Yeah, that um, was uh, just coming together there. The a bit of a misunderstanding. Red, red cart that tapped him, I think. There's your leader, the 79 of Edward Matthews. Now, Ed Matthews, who's a mechanic uh, for Dan Holland Racing, and do some count. He's been racing in, in Europe this season and works here at Wilton Mill. So guess what? He's won. Knows the place like <laughs> the back of his hand. So it's Ryan Taylor Truman, who I think was a man who, 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 who touched Zyra, and Zyra has dropped down to 31st place. Yeah, yeah he will be. But, I would be surprised if he's not got a bit of damage as well. But Matthews has given himself also a 1.4 second lead. But more importantly, Louis Large is, is, is a further 1.3. But Louis Large has come up from sixth to third. But it's a big bridge, you know, gap to bridge at this yeah, level. Yeah, 2.6 seconds. Especially with someone like Ed Matthews, who A, knows this place like the back of his hand and a very experienced race driver, uh, a car driver to boot. And will continue. That's uh, two laps. Just look how much of that track he's not hanging about is he there's no easing the pace into this race here with Ed Matthews gap's gone out to 1.5 seconds Taylor Truman is the gap that it's two then Louis Large a further second behind so Louis fastest cart on the track at the moment 46.098 he's the fastest cart out there Jimmy Tyler Ben Hitch Callum Porter sixth Josh Golan seventh Daniel Burgess Alfie Williams and then Jack Taylor rounds off the top ten so into the mid-afternoon sunshine here at Wilton Mill. Thankfully, no drops of rain so far, and actually no rain at all in the parade of Edward Matthews as he 
continues to consolidate his lead at the front of the grid. Where the battle is now is second and third. So let's drop back to our second and third drivers because that's where Louis Large now is beginning to uh, chase down, hunt down Ryan, Ryan Taylor Truman. The only fight this fight he has, he's still two and a half seconds back behind Matthews. But Large now on the two plate because he was second championship last year. Yeah. He'd get on the O plate, wouldn't run it because he's, he's in semi-retirement. But, you know, who knows when he might come out of that. <laughs> you never know. Might come out for the last two rounds if he does. Um, he's caught Ryan Taylor Truman and took half a second. He's took a second out in the last two laps. Uh, Ed Matthews, fastest lap of the race, 45.533. Uh, Louis Large, second quickest that last lap, 45.548, nothing in it. And there's no doubt about it that Louis Large, if Louis Large can get past Ryan Taylor Truman, we might have a race on for the lead. Meanwhile, while he gets stuck behind Taylor Truman, and I mean that the most respect there to Ryan Taylor Truman, who's having a great race himself, Louis Large might have a chance of actually catching Ed Matthews. They're both trading lap times, 45.366 and Louis Large, 45.7, yeah, there's Large no is, doubt he's being stifled. Yeah, I mean, if Large doesn't get past uh, Taylor Truman soon, it, it, it's, it's all over, because Matthews yeah. has got half a second on Taylor Truman in a lap. 2.7 seconds, the gap to and second. 2.93 seconds, you might as well call that, Nick. Yeah, so basically, it, if Large doesn't get past this next lap, it's going to be too much of a gap to make through. Now, of course, Taylor Truman has no reason to let large pass this is not like some sort of after you clawed north island sports day he can battle as much as he wants yeah, in yeah. The second place overall yeah. just, so as, just, as, just as selfish tv types we want to see a battle for the lead taylor truman and there he goes large defend. gets in and holds it but taylor truman has to take that late apex that's the optimum line through christmas and louis large knows that he knows this track well now that large has cleared taylor truman Will Jimmy Tyler have, be the next driver to have a quote while at Ryan Taylor Truman? Mm. So, Jimmy Tyler now moving on to the back of Ryan Taylor Truman. And Louis Large has been unleashed. But he was three seconds back. Yeah, three and seconds was the gap. What will he be this time? Ed Matthews continues to lead. Let's see what the gap is. It's a 45.2. Uh, two tenths lost. Yeah, 3.2. Is now it, that, is that's, it, this is his that, first lap clear. Yeah, I was going to say, Nick, that is that is exactly what I was going to say. It's his first clear lap now for Louis Large. We'll see what sort of pace he's got. The fastest lap of the race is the leader, Ed Matthews. 45.221 is the purple time there on the timing screen. It's just lifting the wheel through Parker there as Louis. LRG Motorsport Cart lifts a wheel as well through Chapman. Off down the short back straight into the boot into the right hand section accelerates out Ed Matthews crosses the line 45-3 45-4 the gap's gone out to 3.3 yeah so Matthews still and that's a that's a personal best for Louis Large so when he broke free personal best but, but just it's not, not got personal the best enough. No. Yeah, yeah. Ed Matthews is, is just showing a, a clean pair of heels to the entire pit. It helps obviously that Zyra got taken out going down the uh, the, 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 back, the uh, Christmas, Christmas corner straight effectively on lap one. And that was the one the major rivals straight gone. Large was three seconds behind before he could get into, uh, into second place. So he's. Well, Z Zyra's going to have a grid dear, because when that happens to you and you, and you pull back on. You think, right, let's have a go. Let's have a go at getting by everybody. Let's see where I can end up. Because that's the only way, that's the only attitude to take. I mean, yep. you know, it's an all-plate meeting. It's not about finishing second or third. It's about, about the win, as I've been saying all week. Hey, can't we have some fun? Yeah, and already Jamie Zyra up to 23rd from the, absolutely at the back. We lost Scott Clee. I think Scott Clee was one of the drivers involved there. Maybe, yeah. I, I noticed he's gone. Obviously, and Scott has done well earlier in the heat. Yeah, he's been one of the fastest drivers here all weekend, Scott Clee. Large on the screen, lost a few hundreds last time around to Matthews. We're now two thirds around this lap, down the back, down the short straight. Two behind him. Oh, having a little bit of a scrap hit as well, which is the third place battle of Ryan Taylor, Truman, and JD Tyler. They're no real shaping to make a move from Tyler at the moment. Large crosses the line. It's another two tenths, right, three so tenths. Forty-five three for Ed Matthews. Forty-five six for Louis Large. Forty-five six for Ryan Taylor Truman. Jamie Tyler. Forty-five six. Forty-five six for Ben Hitch. Forty-five six for Callum Porter. Forty-five eight for Josh Gollan. 
as we are a quarter of a minute away from half distance. Yeah, let's, let's, let's have a little look at third and fourth. I think it's a bit more of a, a, a likelihood of something happening than yeah. second and third or first and second. I mean, obviously, you know, I think Matthews is going to have to pull to the side with the major mechanical for that to change. But there we are, the uh, orange cart with the kind of white moustache of Ryan Taylor Truman. And behind him, it's the 45, oh, well wait, wait. wide 45 yeah. of Jamie Tyler. Almost had to show his ticket to get back in there, didn't he? <laughs> they stamped his hand. It was fine. Yeah. Now, fifth and sixth are also very close. Now. Just oh, the, oh, there's, there's a move. There's a swap there. Yeah, five yes. and six has been changed, actually. Just, let's uh, go back to five and six. Let's drift yeah, through. Um, there it is, yeah. Callum Porter. Callum Porter just moving ahead of Ben Hitch. Now in the number 20 there, Callum Porter, another one of Dan Holland's mechanics out on a Lando cart. And Callum, who is now in the top five and doing very well indeed. We, I think we spoke to Callum, didn't we, in the paddock show? Here he comes, Ben Hitch, no slouch, carrying the number three. Third place in the 2022 NKC Championship. And we'll want to hang on to the tail of Callum Porter. Okay. Looking quite spread out between these two guys. Now he's passed. Porter appears to be relatively comfortable with that game. Lots of equidistant gaps around. Yeah, spacing out, isn't it? Somewhat. There's a lead of uh, almost four seconds now for Ed Matthews. Large is a nice little gap of a uh, nice cushion of a second over Taylor Thompson. Uh, Taylor Truman, sorry. And then Tyler is still sticking about three tenths behind. The leader goes past our comedy booth. And then there's Louis, there's third, there's fourth. There's no real close battle at all about any of these drivers. And I watch the rest of the field going round and it's all pretty much spaced out. You don't really get a big gaggle of cars until you get to about 10th, 11th and 12th. Very competitive field, but it's been absolutely dominated by Ed Matthews at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Ed's been racing in DD2, which is a two-geared car in Europe. Um, I can see the confusion in your face there. Yeah, 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 have you not? Yeah, no, he's Reece, got two gears. Reese Hunter did the world finals in DD2, didn't he, uh, last year? So he's got two gears. He rotates with two gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically. I think, I think it's a Rolex. Yeah, it is a Rolex. Yeah. It's part of the Rolex world finals. So, so Ed's been racing across in, in Europe. I think he said he was in Genk last race so it's not like he hasn't been doing any karting um and certainly showing everybody the way around wilton mill back with second uh, sorry back with third and fourth now which is where it's happening at 65 and 45 as jamie tyler has finally woken up and decided to start having a go at ryan taylor truman he said I'll, I'll, I'll follow you for a bit there's a minute and 42 seconds to go large relaxed in his second place but third and fourth could swap last point placed on the podium could be up for grabs but they are being very respectful. That little talking to they got given to by Chris is really yes, calming these yeah, boys yeah. down, isn't it? Yeah, we've had good clean racing all the way down the order. Um, Alex Kapadia, uh, brand new to the, um, not just brand new to the NKC, but um, hasn't raced a cart for about a decade. Um, he's in 22nd. He started at the back. Um, we've lost the drivers that we've lost at the moment. Elliot Thomas, Oliver Smith, James Yap and Scott Clee. Um, Andy Collinson, another newcomer to NKC. Andy up to 14. Um, Josh Pickford, Kyle Dunford, who we've talked about a lot. Scott Smith in 8th, Pickford in ninth, Dunford in 10th. As that battle for 3rd still, still kind of, the only kind one of that's rages. happening. The only one that's happening. But I think at some point, Jamie Tyler's got to make a move. And he's just been effectively um, a viewing of the backside of Taylor Truman for the last, what, seven minutes? Um, Ed Matthews has gone up towards Christmas Corner. Um, I think there's a chance he's going to make it round before the last lap board. He's got, uh, yeah, it's 40, he had 46.8 seconds. Did he, he really? That's right on it, doesn't it? Yeah, he doesn't. That was he on 46s. So he's oh, there. there we go. Finally, Tyler just comes up the inside of Ashby. A little apology because it's quite aggressive, but he's finally made the move. And uh, Tyler, no, it's well now it's going to be one lap. Leo, no, he's lost it again. Why do we? Why do we let him back again? And he's lost it. Oh no, he's lost both places. That's really weird. Tyler gave back two places there, and back into fifth goes Callum Porter. Or up into fifth, Callum Porter. Fourth goes Callum Porter. 
Let's find Ed Matthews, our leader. Let's find our leader. Who's leading by four and a half seconds as we've just been given the last lap board. And there's Louis Large. So the cart ahead of Louis is the one that we're looking for. That's him there. Brilliant from Harry up at Christmas Corner. Christmas has come early to Harry, hasn't it? Our cameraman up there. Yep. And Ed Matthews and like Christmas. has absolutely been the class of this field pretty much today. He's been a very hard man to beat. He's had some pretty good competition to contend with. He's through the boot for the final time. And the Dan Holland driver will take number one in two-handed fashion checkered flag and the NKC O plate goes to Ed Matthews Louis Large picks up second Ryan Taylor Truman holds on to third after that kind of swap around the penultimate lap Callum Paul up to fourth Jamie Tyler's fifth it's Ben Hitch who's sixth Josh Gale in seventh and it's Scott Smith and Josh Pickford in eighth and ninth Carl Dunford's in tenth Daniel Burgess is eleventh and that is as many people who have crossed the line and got a green ticket at the moment. Nice sporting gesture there from Louis Large, who comes in a fine second. I mean, Louis, by his own admission, is not exactly race fit. He's been at every round of the NKC this year. However, he hasn't really been in the driver's seat, has he? He's been doing some practice at his home track at Warden Law, um, but he's done an absolutely outstanding job there to be second step of the podium. Mm. Ryan, Ryan Taylor Truman... Yeah. who had a great first few laps will take the final third and final step of the podium I think a great drive from Callum Porter up to fourth yeah, through I think the field. also a great drive by Jamie Zara yeah, yeah, I'm rewarded off being punt well coming off on the first corner Zara's got up to 16th so Zara up to 16th what a, what a drive that, that would have been he was down in 31st we were perhaps that one. robbed from a, for a battle I of the two so. Dan Holland I boys think so. I think I think that, that, that was most likely where Brian Taylor Truman and Zara tripped over each other. I'm not going to portion blame. I can't, you know, it's a very fast on the first lap. But the loser was Zyra. Luckily, when he spun off, he wasn't collected by anybody and didn't collect anyone else, which was the, the major plus point. But that did absolutely, I think, take away the, what could have been a spectacle of a mechanics race. Yeah, I think Ed Matthews was probably aware that Jimmy Zyra was, was in that race. And he was, uh, that's why he, he burst off the line. And you could see head down type of, head down type of attitude from Ed there. Um, we are we are still going to head down to the Park Fermi for a chat with Ed Matthews, who and will be with Gaz Bouray. <laughs> and we wait for them to follow up. Um, just to remind everybody that uh, 2023 is still very much Absolutely. up and running. And we are back with full live coverage of the fifth and penultimate round of the 2023 Junction 6 NKC. At Fullbeck. Uh, Fullbeck, 9th and 10th of September. Put that one in your diary. And then the final round of the 2023 championship, Clear Pigeon, uh, 21st and 22nd of October for them. Uh, Karting Live TV has more karting to come, though, after the NKC has wound up. We've got uh, the Wardenlaw Car Club uh, Autumn Cup coming up in November. to two-day meeting. Uh, the big news for that, that's uh, this week, is the fact that we're, they're running a 177 class on Max's tyres. So uh, 177 drivers, keep your Maxxis tyres, don't throw them away. Um, they can get, still get some, a little bit of use out of them or for a double header meeting up in November, up in the northeast of England in God's country. Everyone welcome. It's a bit north of Hull, isn't it? Very much north of Hull. <laughs> still never going to let you forget that one. I think I'm, I'm happy with it. Literally, I'm, I'm, I, I, I feel as a man born in Kent, it's near enough. Welcome to Warden Law, just outside of Hull. <laughs> no, is what just Nick said. north of Hull. Just north, north of, of Hull. Hull. Just north of Hull. Well, by basically, I started with the just man from Gillingham who lives at Milton Keynes. I, the reason behind that, and I'm, is I went with just north, and then realised Hull was the only actually, place that you knew in the north. No, that actually it was just south of Newcastle. So I could because Newcastle is more famous. Sorry, Newcastle is bigger, new, more famous than Sunderland. So I thought I would say Newcastle. Just south of Newcastle. That would have been worse than saying we were just I north I realised that. Well, I went just north, and I was stuck then. So I had to think of a northern town. And, the, and we're on the coast. We've talked about the North Sea and the coast. Oh, Hull's on the North Sea and the coast, isn't it? That'll be it. <laughs> is, that your, is that the way your brain works? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, work, obviously, is a very, very uh, generous description. My brain here is Gaz Beret with our winner, Edward Matthews. Uh, thumbs up. So for the final interview, the final chance to see Mr. Beret doing an interview. <laughs> when he's doing it with uh, Edward Matthews. Over to Gaz. I'm with our final winner of the day, Ed Matthews. Ed, 
I mean, that always looked quite easy with the gap you had at the end there. Tell us about how it's gone so far. Yeah, so we've had a really good weekend so far. Like, I've been really fast from the off, like, throughout all the testing. Started pole for the final there, got out of the first corner, had a little look behind me, saw, like, a couple of them were having a little coming together. Thought, happy days. Um, had a check, like, got my head down for a few laps, had a check after that, had a nice big gap. You sat there nice and comfortably, doing the same time every single lap. No thoughts to seeing behind you and thinking, that's Louis Large. Any thoughts on that? Uh, not really. Like, I've raced Louis before, um, and he's a really good driver, like, and if he could have caught me, it would have been a really good race. Um, but I looked behind, saw I had a big enough gap, and knew that if I could just keep doing the time that I could do, then we could maintain that gap out front. Yeah, it was a cracking drive. You've earned that one properly. Ed Matthews, champion. Well done, my man. Thank you. Um, here we go, and that was uh, Gaz with our winner from the. We haven't finished yet. <laughs> Sorry. Basically, a fan's I've turned got, up. I've a got fan's got turned. No, 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 no. It's not a fan. I know he's the winner of KZ, but he's, he was fanning you. Oh yeah, I do this. No, he, yeah, he I'm, wasn't. I'm, uh... He wasn't. He's actually looking to take our job. Fair he's enough. here to find out how we do this because yeah. he does his own content. Oh right, it's all yes. coming on now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. So he's wanted to do, so. Do you want to chat to him? Yeah, go on then. This is our winner from the KZ. A bit sweaty. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, no Introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, I am Daniel Sabula. You know, I make uh, karting content on TikTok, YouTube, etc. I don't understand TikTok. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, hang on, Daniel. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> You're the winner <laughs> of KZ you. today. You're the your plate holder. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fantastic coming from two DNFs. Um, Actually, the axle snapped. It, the um, what's it called? The stub axle didn't fall off. It snapped. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting smugly in his chair. No, occasionally get there. No, in fairness, you know, I get some things right, but it's like ninety-seven percent wrong. But the whole point really is just to inspire a conversation. So, KZ, um, how tired are you after a, a long race with all the stuff you're doing and the G-force? I mean, you're a young man, obviously, but I'm sitting there going. Yeah, you know, I, I was driving a hire cart round here on Friday night, and, that, and even the wet, that was enough for me. And you're going, right, I've got to do forward, I've got to do stop, I've got to do this, I've got to do gear changes. How, how, how mentally taxing is it? It's definitely a completely other, like, a whole other level <laughs> comparing to juniors and anything else. KZ is definitely one of the most physical, taxing classes you can do in any, in any company. So, yeah. So, just because I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, I do a lot of motorcycling, so obviously you know, the whole kind of concept of tracks and gearbox, I'm quite interested in. So I take it you've got, what is it, six forward speeds, is it? Yes. And is, is it like one back and five up, like in a gearbox? Yes, bo so a box? Uh, first gear is all the way at the front, then yep. in between first and second you've got neutral. Yeah, that's, that's it's, yep. it's a, it's and a then, bike gearbox. Yeah. And then to go up, you pull it towards you, and then to shift down, you so push it away. How many gears are you are you actually getting up to sixth and down to first each lap? Or is it yes. just first? It's first not it's first isn't just for launch. You are using every lap. Uh, I think I use second. I don't have the yeah, dash because yeah, yeah. it's very difficult to set up, and it's a whole other technical uh, challenge to mm -hmm. be able to set it up properly. But I do reach sixth, then I go all the way through sixth up to Christmas, which is how you want to have the cart set up usually to have it as the the quickest acceleration possible mm -hmm. whilst also having the uh, highest top speed and being able to so reach how, that top so speed. So how much of the power band are you using? What, about 1,000 revs or 2,000 revs? Uh, it's between around 12,000 and 16,000. So 16,000 is like the max. Right, so you've got a 4,000 power band. Yeah. And you're... Are you trying to keep it literally about 15 then on the sweet spot for power or is it a little bit wider than that? You want to try to keep it as much in that gear as possible before you reach the, the rev right. limiter and this, like how fast you can go in that gear. So just before you reach the max speed in that gear, you want to shift up and then, you know, go through as if it's one very elongated gear. I mean, also, we're noticing on the downshifts, we, we, we obviously we, could, we, could, we couldn't get the sound to hear them going down. We could see visually. It appears that you will... Actually, the downshifts happen as late as possible into the corner. Yeah. Is that because you, you, you don't want to lock the rear axles with the, with the downshifts? You want to have the braking done by the gearbox? or By, yeah, the, by so the brakes, sorry, not the gearbox? In Europe, usually when you have lots of grip, you want to downshift using the gearbox. But because we don't have too much grip comparing to Europe and you know all those places, we have to use the brakes as well because we don't want to over-rev the engine. We don't right. want to yeah. you know kill the gearbox. So we brake and then we shift one, two, and then three just before we turn in or as we're turning in to slow down the car 
cart, mm. using the front tyres as well nice. uh, to slow down the cart and then you know accelerate out the corner. And obviously, you, you you started in junior karting. Um, how different is the experience? Not not listening to the gear, but how different is the experience of having brakes on the front tyres and front wheels? Actually, having proper, well, almost car brakes. I know the solid <laughs> reaction, but what, how different is that? How does, how does that affect the style and the concept of actually driving a, a kart style vehicle? It's. It's very different because when I first drove a KZ gearbox cart, I was on a very small circuit driving quite slowly. The first time I hit the brakes, the front of the cart vibrated and you could feel the steering kind of shimmy around before you turned in. I was like, OK, maybe I should move the brake bias a little bit more rearwards. <laughs> um, but it's very different because you also need usually in um, single axle braking carts, you use the front tires to slow down. Whilst in these, if you do that, you're instantly going to spin or you're going to end up on the grass somewhere. Now, you said you mentioned in, you, you're racing in Europe. I mean, it, it, obviously, Wilton, I, I assume you would say, is a little bit too small for KZs to really yeah. So, So in the UK, which, which circuits do suit KZs? I would say PFI, but they don't really run those. Uh, Fullbeck is a good one. Shennington. Uh, Kim Bolton is very good. To be honest, you can run it pretty much anywhere if you have, mm. if you have enough skill and talent, I guess. Yeah, but, but it's nice to get... Nice long runs and, and, and read the whole thing up rather than having to constantly change, I take it. Yeah, we, to be completely honest, we've driven it at Rye House, one of the smallest right, okay, tracks. Fair enough, I've been there, yeah. And <laughs> coming out of the second hairpin, I think, uh, yeah, so first hairpin, we do a wheelie in first <laughs> gear all the way up until third, break, and then do another wheelie all the way down the straight. Wow. Oh, we need to get cameras on that one. Um, <laughs> So, what, so, so give us an idea of your progress. So, so do you race in Europe regularly? Is that where the main championships are? Uh, so currently we're trying to gather funds to be able to race in Europe. I okay. have done multiple test days and, you know, uh, like test weekends, but we haven't actually been able to gather the funds since it's, you know, way more expensive and mm. um, way less attainable than, mm. you know, racing here locally. I mean, so, so, so obviously, yeah, it, it is a more difficult, it's a more complicated, more expensive car to, to drive. It's more, obviously, more challenging. But also, you say more challenging to raise the funds. But why, why have you decided to go down this path rather than continue the karting path with your, your senior Rotax or your TKM or whatever it may be? I've been dreaming about driving a KZ mm. since I was about 10 years old, yeah. uh, 2020, roughly. I saw a KZ going around Campios um, in Spain. It, was, it sounded so amazing. It looked so fast. I wanted to drive one, and only... You know, only the start of this year have I been able to actually attain that goal and drive it. And to be honest, I think now's the perfect time. That's great. Uh, give us the um, the, uh, the, uh, the various uh, socials you're on so that people who can uh, check you out. Uh, what are they? Yeah. Uh, DC Racing Official on TikTok, YouTube. I make sim racing content as well as karting content. You will see some content sim from... Sim racing content. Are you an iRacer? Yes. Professional. So wait, you're a professional iRacer. Yes. Okay, uh, one final question before I cut you over What's your I rating? Uh, 6,000. Yeah, I'm not oh, talking to you anymore. Right, fine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Dad. Sorry, yeah. You, 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 I'm sorry, Dad. The problem is you, we're, we're, we're class. We're like 1,700. We're, we know what we're doing. <laughs> but what you have to remember is you take, you take the number and you multiply it by your age. So, in fact, I'm way higher than you. Ah, <laughs> you can't do me like that. I'll give it a go. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, I know you're not on the NKC, nor you, but please, if you ever are, come in and talk to us because we're very, very happy to have you on the, on the show because you, you are a great interview. Just hang about and we'll and Nick will explain the technicals of what we're doing here. Yeah, thank you. Because now we have to go off air. <laughs> uh, that was brilliant. That was I love that. that was That's really great. I, I, thank I, you so I much. Loved, I love to have people like Dan in Absolutely. to give us that insight. And a winner. Which we like. It's all about winning today. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Congratulations as well, Daniel Chibula. Um, um, right. yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for cool. listening. Uh, we're back in three weeks with karting. If you are wanting to enjoy more of my voice, the next two weeks we've got RC around the world. So, uh, Great fun. Thank you to Harry. Thank you to uh, Ash. Thank you to Paul. Thank you to the NKC organisers. Thank you to Sarah for holding those races. And uh, we will see you again in three weeks for karting. See you then. Bye-bye.